Hey everybody, I'm Brugley, and welcome to the longest Backrooms video on YouTube. This video is five hours of Backrooms levels, explanations, and explorations. And I now hold the record for the longest Backrooms video on YouTube. If this video gets 20,000 likes, I'll release a 10-hour version. Alright, so for the next five hours, sit back and relax, and get ready to explore the infinite abyss that is the Backrooms. Enjoy. Backrooms level 94, aka level motion, is classified as a survival difficulty of 3 and is overall pretty unsafe in general. It takes the appearance of a couple of different things ranging from a big town to a stone castle to green rolling hills and all of the level is covered in a retro grainy type effect. Kind of like an old movie or a video game. And the entire level is almost like Dreamcore in a way. I know some of y'all like that. The part of the level where the main town is, is pretty safe, especially during the daytime, since there aren't any entities here, but at nighttime, it can get pretty dicey. In the very center of this town, in the main area, there's actually a fountain that's flowing with almond water, which is kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. Wanderers have described the feeling of this town as kind of a 1930s stop motion background, which is pretty campy and cool, to say the least. On the outskirts of the town, there are small houses with furniture and other normal house stuff. There's also retro cars and vans from the 1930s time period, and there's even huge milk vans full of almond milk for the lactose intolerant crowd among us. Oh, you said among us, funny funny. Scattered around the town's roads, there are these things that look like siren poles, but they're actually speakers, and they play really old campy cartoon music sometimes. Specifically, the sirens only play the music during these safe times, which is daytime, on the level. And then the music will play until nighttime, when it gets really unsafe and unstable, and lots of entities start to come out. But I'm going to explain those entities during the Entity Explanation section of the video. The grassy hills of the level are actually infinite, and they just keep repeating themselves over and over again. But sometimes there will be like a random car parked on the side of the road, or you might run into a water tower that's just there. And sometimes on the top of the hills themselves are just random pieces of furniture, like chairs or tables, just sitting there. Which is pretty unsettling, I gotta be honest with you. But it's not as unsettling as the transparent hills that are there. Hills that you can literally see through that have castles sitting on top of them. That's terrifying. I mean, that'd be pretty trippy. Like, just imagine walking up to an invisible hill that you can see through and seeing a whole castle just on top. I'm not even sure how, like, my brain would process that, but whatever. You can actually walk up the Invisa Hill, get it? Invisible Hill, and get to the castle. But the castle area specifically is known for draining sanity, so be sure to carry almond water with you so you don't go off the deep end. Inside of the castle, you'll notice that there is a huge funhouse area. In fact, the entire castle itself is a funhouse. Playhouse. Whatever you want to call it. It's full of playsets, slides, ballrooms, ball pits, and, you know, the other typical funhouse stuff. If you wander through this castle enough, you'll actually run into a huge doorway that opens into the throne room, where, of course, the entity called the Animated King lives. Now, you'll be tricked into a false sense of security by the Animated King because he seems nice and stuff at first, but he'll actually try to control you instead of helping you. So watch out for that. The Animated King will put you through a test before he turns you into an animation entity, which I'll get into what an animation is in a second. But if you pass this test, you might be sent out of the level, and if you fail, well, you're probably not going to be leaving anytime soon. Now let's get into some creatures, shall we? So there are actually a lot of entities and creatures here, and they're very dangerous, especially in nighttime. As per usual, you got your regular entities like Smilers, Skin Stealers, Hounds, and Male Death Moths, and even Death Rats, which are slightly less common, but still pretty common. But the level exclusive entity, like I said, is called an animation. These things look like stop motion characters, but they're very hostile because they attack anything that isn't animated, which is pretty creepy, not gonna lie. And they attack victims based off of what they look like themselves. So like if an animation entity is a claymation character, then it will try to drown its victim in clay, what? 
or if the animation entity is like wood or something like that, then it will try to hit its victim with blunt force, and so on and so forth. You get the point. They aren't very smart though, so you can pretty much avoid them with ease. Just make sure you don't get caught by them or, you know, you'll drown in clay or be beat over the head by a bat. The other level exclusive entity is called the Robomen, which are just retro robot toys from the early 1900s that live inside the castle, and they kind of act like the guards of the castle, and they're really hostile and will instantly attack you if they see you. So just avoid the large walking robots. To enter this weird place, you have to successfully escape the end level and then go to the hub level right after. When you're there, a rectangle hole will just manifest itself in the ground inside of the hub and it'll slowly start to close over time. And if you want to exit, you can either complete the Animated King's trial and pass it by conquering your fears in animated form, or you can get teleported into level 7, 9, or 53 by randomly going into one of the houses on the hills in the level. So to summarize this pretty interesting level, pretty cool level as well, it's pretty much just a dream core world filled with weird animated glitchy type things that kind of makes you feel peaceful and at home until you get to the literal invisible hill with a castle on it where you'll be forced to watch your biggest fears unfold in animation. If you pass, then you can leave, and if you don't, then you're condemned to stay here forever as an animation entity. Pretty neat! So this backrooms level as a whole is classified as a class variable difficulty and is unstable and has varying safeties and varying levels of danger depending on where you're at. And I say that because the level is split up into two different sub-levels so far, and both of them are pretty much fully unexplored. All we have is a few pictures from a wanderer or two that have been here. So first up, we have sub-level 1, and it's so new that we haven't even named it, we're just calling it sub-level 1. But it's classified as a class habitable zone and is very safe. But it is the only safe one out of the two, so don't get used to it. It looks to be a huge grass meadow that goes out for several hundred feet. The meadow itself is green and bright, and it typically looks like a spring day. There is a day and night cycle, so you do have to worry about getting cold sometimes, but that's pretty much all that's here that's dangerous. And there are only a couple of anomalous and strange things that have even happened here. The first one is that random supplies and objects fall from the sky and land in the forest. Now this forest is what's surrounding the meadow I talked about, and it seems like these objects just fall from nowhere, but some of them can be pretty useful. Supplies like tools and almond water and even wood planks to build stuff with, you just never know what's gonna fall. And that's all weird of course, but there is one more weird thing. You actually cannot no-clip out of this sub-level. No matter how hard you try, you can't leave except one single exit, which I'll get into in a second, but the no clipping effect just doesn't work. And that's kind of like the green mist level that I went over a couple weeks ago. That level also doesn't let you no clip either. So let me know in the comments why you think that you can't no clip out of these levels. What does it mean? Is the backrooms breaking? Is it learning and getting more powerful so it doesn't let people leave? Who knows? So further out in the meadow, there is a concrete shack that has an open door on it. And the shack is actually the entrance to the next sublevel. Inside of it, there's a small manhole cover in the floor with one of those manhole great things on top that you have to open to go down. Now, you should not be going here because the next sublevel is easily one of the dangerous places in the back rooms and terribly more dangerous than this meadow area. But if for some reason you want to go, I'm going to explain it now. But around this shack, people have reported that they get weird senses of paranoia and overwhelming fear without even going in it. And when they're inside of it, they're kind of just overtaken with fear and paranoia. Unless you're insane, you shouldn't go in the shack. But if you do, you'll be sent to the next sublevel, which is classified as a class zone and is extremely dangerous. And currently, no one has left. Alive, at least. Now, this sub-level 2 area is an endless labyrinth of stinky, damp, dark, concrete tunnels that are dimly lit by old-looking lights. Now, the tunnels are pretty much unmapped completely because they're so windy and curvy, and they almost seem to change every once in a while. 
The halls are dotted with entities in some of the spots, and lots of them are actually unknown or undocumented entities. But of course, there are some normal ones, like skin stealers and death moths and facelings and clumps and hounds, you know, the typical kind. But if you run into any of those that I just listed, then you need to turn around and walk the other way slowly. Not like it's gonna help much, but you know, I'm just trying to be nice here. There's also a level exclusive entity here called the Puddles. And these puddles are made out of a thick black substance that will try to attack and detain people who walk by. The liquid is sticky and it seems to be sentient in a way. And it seems to be some kind of super creature that literally lives just to eat people. It's kind of like what the symbiotes look like from Venom, that kind of material. But yeah, it literally just attacks anything it sees, even other entities. But of course, there are other hazards in these concrete halls like partygoers and smilers, but typically these are only found deep into the halls in the glitchy warping areas, which eventually the halls themselves will just start to decay and get glitchy and warp and almost like an error message when you get too far into them. Now it's actually thought that if you do walk far enough into them, there'll eventually be no entities or puddles or any dangers actually. And this comes from a user named I am Stoppable, who posted this image to Meg Authorities on August 8th, 2022. That user claims that the picture they took is a safe spot that people are currently living in. Now, the user has said that since they've got there, the smell in this area has gotten worse and more sour, and that the grass seems to be decaying, and even the concrete walls around them are broken and decaying, and are starting to show bricks instead of concrete, which might mean that the bricks on the other side of the concrete is how you get to the next sub-level but we don't know for sure. As of right now, there's just two that we know of, the metal and the concrete tunnels. No one knows why the tunnels are decaying and showing bricks instead of concrete, but some people think the level is on the verge of exploding or completely decaying on top of itself. So who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments. So yeah, as of right now, all we know is two sub-levels. One is a nice safe meadow area, and the next is a terrifying concrete maze of hallways full of entities and decay and sentient black sludge that wants to eat you. But yeah, that was Backrooms Level 1069. Hope you enjoyed it. Backrooms Level 9999 is classified as a class pending, which means that its safety is undetermined and there is also an unknown entity count. Pretty much, no one is really sure if this level is safe or not. Now the level itself looks like an abandoned amusement park that's covered in a thick fog, almost always. The park is on some sort of island, and around this island is an ocean. And the ocean is very, very deep, like extremely deep. And the water is actually salt water, like real life oceans. Right off the bat, it is not recommended to go into the water because nothing is known about it. No one knows if there's any entities in there, or if they're just unalive if you go into it. Who knows? Now the amusement park itself is pretty normal compared to real life ones. There are a ton of rides like roller coasters and merry-go-rounds and all the typical stuff that you've seen in real life. There's also a lot of Ferris wheels. Now all of what I just told you is pretty normal, right? You know, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate to how our life is as well. Except on this level, the roller coasters are very weird. They have very strange and anomalous effects that can either be extremely good or extremely bad for you. And I'm gonna explain what that means now. Each coaster is an exit from this level, but it's not as easy as just hopping on one and being sent out. Instead, the leading theory is that the level itself will choose if you can leave based off of your karma. That's right, your karma. Pretty much the level somehow figures out how good or bad of a person you are based off of your entire life. And it goes off of however good or bad it thinks you are in order to choose which level it sends you to. So when you get to a roller coaster, the level will just choose how good or bad you are as a person, and then based on how it chooses, it'll either send you to a nice level or a dangerous level. And on top of this, whatever it chooses, the ride will then turn to be either dangerous, foggy, or clear. If the roller coaster turns dark and gloomy, like you're seeing now, then the level apparently thinks that you're not a good person based off of your life's deeds. The sky will turn dark and then red, and then the ocean around the level will go from water 
to liquid pain. Once this is all happening, you'll be sent to a scary or terrifying level in some way, like level exclamation mark, or the void, or something like that. If the roller coaster does not change, and it stays at its normal fogginess, then the level thinks you're a neutral person, and that you're not that bad, but you're also not that good. People on the neutral roller coasters are probably sent to one of the first five levels, but it's unknown because we can't tell. Now, if the level's fog goes away and a bunch of lights come on, then the level has decided that you have good karma and are a good person. When the level's in this state, it looks like a normal carnival from real life, and the fog that's normally on this level is gone. It's also thought that you'll be sent to a pretty safe level, like level 6999, or level 11, if it chooses that you're a good person. Of course, these are all just guesses based on how we think the level reacts to people. It could be something else entirely, though. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> this is the backrooms. We have no idea. But if none of that makes sense, I'm going to explain it in the simplest way possible. You can get on a random roller coaster on this level, and then that roller coaster, or the level itself, will choose if you are a good person or not. And whatever roller coaster you're on will then transform into either a dark and gloomy one, a normal foggy one, or it will clear up, and it'll be lit up and nice. And based off of what the level chooses, you'll be sent to either a dangerous, mildly dangerous, or safe level. The only entity here on this level is facelings, and if you don't know what they are, they're just semi-sentient humanoid beings with a blank face. And on this level, they've been seen walking around the rides and riding them, except there's never been any seen on the roller coasters. Only people have been there. Weird. There are no colonies or outposts here, and to enter the level, you have to be sent here randomly from the previous level, level 9998. Now, it's really rare to be sent here, but you could just be walking along the previous level and just fall through the floor and wake up here, so that's cool. To exit, you have to do what I said and ride a roller coaster, and then it will decide which level it sends you to, based off of if it thinks you're good or bad. And no one knows how this level can judge a person's life, because that would mean that it would have to have had access to that person before the back rooms or somehow the level has downloaded data about each person that comes here or something like that we don't know there's been no higher power found that's controlling the level as far as we can tell and it seems to be that this area as a whole is alive and the entire level is an entity and it acts as sort of a moral compass the better person you are in its eyes the better level you get sent to and the worse person you are the worse level you get sent to So Backroom's level you win is classified as a class habitable difficulty and is safe and devoid of any entities. Harmful entities, that is. And that is pretty much the opposite of level you cheated that I went over a few weeks back. Which blew up, by the way, so thank you for that. This level is actually pretty weird because of how it looks and behaves and some other things, but overall, it's safe. The entire level takes place in a building that has 11 stories. The building is apparently out in the middle of nowhere, in a field, because you can look out the windows and just see a big empty field. When you actually get to the level, you'll start in an office lounge type place. Now this is the 11th floor, or the highest floor of the building. When you finally realize where you are, you'll immediately lose all your stress, and you'll feel relieved instantly. It's kind of like your body knows that you won the game of the back rooms. The rest of this 11th story is pretty normal for an office building. It's pretty liminal and pretty empty looking, but it gets a little weirder the further you go down to the stories below you. And in these levels that are below you, there's almond water randomly placed on tables and that kind of thing, and there's also facelings wandering around, but each level is different. For instance, the 10th floor is some kind of supermarket that's similar to a Walmart or a Safeway Vons or that kind of thing from real life. And there are facelings actually shopping around for things and working the cash registers here. And on the shelves, there is literal merchandise to buy. Like there's fresh food and fruits and vegetables and even seafood you can buy. And of course, none of that makes any sense because why would there be a fully functioning supermarket in the back rooms? But who cares? You just won. Now, the ninth floor is full of weird looking restaurants also run by facelings. And these places are just named basic things like food, you know? They're also very liminal looking and they're mostly empty unless you run into another wanderer there or the facelings that work in the store. 
Now the eighth floor has a ton of bedroom type places in it. The bedrooms are small and plain looking, kind of like just ones you'd see in a house, like a spare bedroom. And there's also a balcony at the end of this floor that juts out from the building. If you jump off this balcony for some reason, then you'll just no clip back up into the bedroom floor or the eighth floor that you were on. Or it's thought that sometimes you can no clip into your bed in reality. Like you can just jump off the balcony and you'll end up back home. That's not confirmed or anything, but it's strongly thought that that's how it works since the balcony is only on the floor with beds. So it would make sense if you jumped off the bed floor and ended up in reality in your own bed, wouldn't it? Now the seventh floor is kind of like an old computer lab. The computers here are pretty normal. There's old and new ones, and it looks like a big school computer lab, kind of. The computers can be turned on and off, but you can't break them. Even if you smash the screen, it'll just repair itself. There's also internet here that you can connect to, apparently. The sixth floor is a really dark room with chairs where people just go to relax and chill after, you know, being in the back rooms for days or years. The floor is completely empty. There are a few random pillars holding the ceiling up, but there are just random seats around as well. The fifth floor is kind of like a dining area where there's tables and it kind of looks like a cafeteria here. And there can sometimes be entities as well. There's big long tables with seating and stuff like that. And you can occasionally run into another wanderer or two here just chilling and eating food. The fourth floor is kind of like a nightclub or a dance club. Nothing crazy, just random music and colorful lights and that kind of deal. And the music played here is very strange and unknown. The third floor is kind of like a movie theater that plays real life movies that you've probably seen before. And even movies that haven't been created yet. Like somehow this place can play unreleased movies, which might mean that this level takes place in the future. What do you think? The second floor is kind of like a regular shop with supplies and that sort of thing. A little bit of food, not as much food as the 10th story supermarket, but it's just a tiny shop. Nothing too special. And the first floor, which is probably the most special floor, is at the very bottom of this building. It kind of looks like a hotel lobby in a way, and it's a place to relax and to chill and meet other wanderers as well. It's kind of the hangout zone if there are other people here at the time you're there. And apparently, people come here to tell stories and commemorate and just talk about the things they've experienced in their journey throughout the back rooms. It just looks like a huge liminal hotel lobby with nothing else really, just kind of empty, but there are seats there. And there is an important doorway in the middle of this hotel lobby that leads outside of the building, which I'll get into in the exits portion. But now it's time for the entrance sections where you'll finally figure out how to get to this level and win the back rooms. Now, most of these entrances involve winning some kind of game in the back rooms. Like if you win the beasts game on level 4293, you have an opportunity to be sent here. Or if you win an arcade game on level 3999, the true ending level, you'll be sent here as well. It's also theorized that you can beat the Game Master at a level and have a small chance to be sent as well. So technically, you could get pretty lucky. Just by winning a game or an arcade machine, you could be sent here. To exit, you can go through the doors that I just mentioned on the first floor lobby and have a good chance of being sent to the front rooms. Or, at least it's thought. If you don't want to do that, you can jump off the balcony on the bedroom's floor to be sent to your own bedroom. Possibly, if it works like that. We don't know. And if it doesn't work, you'll just be no clipped back up to where you jumped. So yeah, this level is a random 11-story building with different enigmatic stories in it. Each story is different, and you can only get to this level by winning the back rooms. And then once you get here, well, you might be able to leave. We think. Could just be another fake exit. Who knows? So this level is classified as a class variable difficulty, which means that its safety and stableness changes depending on where you go inside the level. Now according to the fandom, this level is actually a sub-level of the original Level Run For Your Life, which I've done a video on, if you are interested in that. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a terribly scary level in and of itself, where you spawn in and you have to run instantly away from a huge horde of entities. And at first glance, the first part of this sub-level looks like the normal level. It's a long hallway that's basked in a red lighting, and this entire part is pretty similar to the main level in that there's an entity horde chasing you and your sanity is dropping. But where it changes is that every so often there are doors on the left or right side of the hallway that can open up to different levels, 
but the levels that they open up to are typically dangerous levels, not save levels, so they're dangerous. And some of them even lead back to the main part, which is level exclamation mark. So unless you want to go back to the main level and do this entire running thing again, it's not recommended to try any of these exits. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, what does this sublevel do that sets it apart from the main level? Well, the main thing is there are extra steps and extra dangerous things that can happen to you here. There are random liquid pain puddles that you can step in, and there are some carpeted sections of the hallways that have poisonous carpet fluid inside of them. And if you lose your shoes or you walk through these areas with your bare feet or socks on, uh, that might be it for you. Because if your feet touch liquid pain or this carpet fluid, then the pain will be worse than unaliving itself. <laughs> so... That just adds on to the difficulty on top of the Entity Horde chasing you. There is one pretty cool thing about this level though, and is that if you run for a really, really long time, like 10 plus miles on this level, then you might find a staircase that goes up, and if you go up that staircase, you might get to the Promised Land, which is a thought to be exit of the back rooms itself, but it's not confirmed if it is. Some people are really thinking that it is, and I've done a video explaining all of that, so go check that out if you haven't. But if you find this staircase, I would recommend 10 out of 10 go into that staircase just to find the exit. I, it's worth it to me to try it. As you know, the main level exclamation mark isn't too long, only a few miles, but this sub-level is way longer and more confusing to run through. The good news is, is that there's these anomalous blue hallways scattered randomly randomly throughout the level that can be randomly accessed to people. Now these don't appear to everybody and it's really unknown why they even exist, but they're pretty safe and they're a good spot to take a break from running for a second. And like I said, these hallways are blue and that's how you'll know that you ran into a safe spot. So a basic outline you can use is that a blue hall has a chance to appear every four and a half miles of running. And these blue hallways are also exits of the level because there's staircases in those that go down. And if you walk to the bottom of those staircases, then you'll be sent to a random level. There are also entities here that are unlike any entities in the back rooms. So that massive entity horde behind you that's going to be chasing you is full of the regular entities like death moths and smilers and hounds and that kind of stuff. But there are also extra entities in this sublevel. And what they do is that their only goal is to cause your sanity to drop. Like that is their entire reason for existing is to make your sanity less. So they're in that giant horde of entities, and you can't really get a good look at them because they're just blended in with the entire thing, but you can definitely feel the effects of losing your mind. And if you somehow get sent to this level after the previous run for your life level, then you'll be extra susceptible and more likely to go insane from these entities. But if you couple that liquid pain puddle stuff and the poisonous carpet juice along with this entity horde full of creatures that make your sanity go down, uh, that makes this level even more terrifying than the main level. It's also longer, so you have to run for further. To enter this sublevel, well, there's a 50% chance that you can get stuck here from being in level 2, or you can get here by choosing an unlocked door in the hallway of level exclamation mark, which would absolutely suck because imagine you're already running for your life and you find a door that can open finally, only for it to lead you to a longer red hallway in this level where you also have to run for your life. That'd be terrible. And you can exit the level from one of those blue hallways I talked about, or you can chance opening one of the doors to run past, but as I said earlier, you never know where that's going to lead you. It might be dangerous or it might lead you back to level exclamation mark. You can also run to the quote unquote end of the level to find that staircase that goes upwards to be taken to the promised land. But that would require running for miles and miles and honestly, I, I don't think I could do that. So I would just try a door or try to find a blue hallway. I thought this level was pretty cool and it, I thought it blended pretty well with the famous level exclamation mark. It's just like it, but it's more dangerous and it's longer. And I like how there are a couple of exits that actually lead back to the main level because you don't really find that oftentimes with sublevels that are written in the back room, so I like how that stays that way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. So if you remember way back in the day, there was a level called the Crimson Forest. Now, I actually featured this level in the first Safest Backrooms level video on the channel, which you can still see, but since then, it has seemingly disappeared. 
and this new level 9.1 might be what's left of it. This level entry starts out with a little audio log that says, quote, did a quick write-up of that new crater thingy where those funky fields used to be at. So yeah, those funky fields might just be referring to the crimson fields, which were near the crimson forest, perhaps. Backrooms level 9.1 is classified as a class pending, and it doesn't have a determined safety, and there hasn't been any entities found either. Not much is known about it. The level itself is a sub-level of the normal level 9 which I've made a full video on if you're interested in checking that out. But the area looks like a huge impact crater, like the ones that a meteor would make. The crater itself is around 20 kilometers wide, or around 12 miles, and it seems to be completely barren, like there's no grass, no trees, water, or any vegetation of any kind. There's quite literally nothing that points to life here, which almost makes it seem like some sort of extinction event might have happened. Maybe a catastrophe of some sort. Maybe? There's no day or night cycle either, which means the sun is constantly above you in the sky. It doesn't say what the temperature is, but I'd say if the sun's always above you, then it's gonna be pretty warm. Now, the reason this level is called level 9.1, just like the Crimson Forest used to be called that, is because the way the wanderer that noclipped here got here is literally almost the same way that the Crimson Forest used to be accessed. So the main theory as of right now is is that this crater is the last remnants of the old Crimson Forest, but it's just that, a theory. There's no concrete evidence that this is where the Crimson Field and Forest used to be, just a bunch of speculation. And it could be just a massive coincidence that it's accessed the same way as the old Crimson Forest was. Who knows? To enter this huge barren crater, you have to walk away from the main streets in level 9, like as far out as you can, and then you'll be sent here. The grass of level 9 will start to slowly transform into rocky sand and dirt, and then it'll eventually go from darkness that level 9 is in to the light which level 9.1 this level is in. To exit the level, you have to walk down to the crater and in the very middle of it, you'll find a couple small holes that you can jump into. And then you gotta just jump into them and you'll be sent back to level nine. So that's pretty neat. Now at the bottom of the level entry, there is another small audio log that replies to the first one that I read at the beginning. This one says, quote, now about the theory section, I don't really see where you're coming from with the Crimson Forest hypothesis. There's no real solid ground for it to stand on. First of all, correlation does not equal causation. The crater could have been caused by a number of different things. Secondly, the crater was discovered several days before we lost contact with CF or Crimson Field. So there's no way it can be what's left of the forest. I understand that it's difficult to process, and I know grieving takes on many forms, but coming up with these kinds of desperate explanations isn't healthy. I know that may sound harsh, but these are the words you need to hear right now. She's gone, Mac. My general advice is this. Wait for more information about the crater to come back, and then you can write a draft for it, providing that you keep it to the facts. Thank you. End quote. So yeah, as you can see, this Meg officer is a Debbie Downer and says that there is no way that this crater is what's left of the Crimson Forest. But what does he know? The Meg officer also says that this area was found just a few days before all contact was lost from the Crimson Forest, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. Now, Meg says this isn't what destroyed the famous Crimson Forest, but that still leaves a huge question unanswered to me. What happened to the Crimson Field and Forest and the hundreds of people living in it? They couldn't have just vanished. And I really find it interesting that the exact same way you get to this crater level is the same way you used to get to the Crimson Forest level. That cannot be a coincidence. What do you think? And interestingly enough, this Crimson Forest disappearance is not the only level that's been destroyed or has disappeared. People on Backrooms level 22 had disappeared, and there were thousands at one point in time. As well as the entirety of Backrooms level 78 being destroyed by a meteor. So if you do want to make the connection that the Crimson Forest possibly blew up or was incinerated by a meteor, you can look to level 78, which happened the exact same way. The only difference is that 78 did take place in space, where meteors are, but nevertheless, it was destroyed by a massive meteor-type thing. So the Backrooms is no stranger to destroying itself. 
The only question is, who's destroying everything? And if you're new to the back rooms and that kind of thing, and you want to learn more about the Crimson Forest and the Crimson Field, what it used to be, there's a video on my channel about it. I'll link in the description. There's also a really cool found footage video from Frag 2 about the Crimson Forest. So I'll leave that below as well. I reacted to it on Toogly a little bit ago, but go watch that video. It will show you why the Crimson Forest used to be so awesome, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Backrooms level negative three, or of light and darkness, is a very, very dangerous place. And dangerous is an understatement. It's classified as a class mirage difficulty for having psychological tor- reality warping geometry and deceptive influences and i'll explain what all that means in a second but pretty much it means that nothing is as it seems the level is located deep into the back room somewhere and it physically might be the smallest level ever found cut up into a bunch of parts in fact it's made up of a bunch of small cubicle rooms pretty much just small squares each of these cubic rooms has four walls, except the walls are not just material, they're mirrors. So all four walls in each room you're in will be mirrors. And the mirrors are facing inwards towards each other, which is creating an infinite reflection on all sides. Now it's not the mirrors themselves that make the level creepy, it's actually what you see in the mirror. When you're in the first cube, you'll see your own reflection. Pretty normal. And you'll see that for the first few rooms, at least. Now, the good news is, you aren't stuck in one room forever. But that's also bad news, because it just gets worse. Now, to exit the rooms, you'll need to look for a part of the mirror that doesn't look completely solid. It kind of looks like it's waving water. And then you can just walk directly through it. And if you do walk through the mirror, you'll be sent to an exact copy of that same room. Except each time you do this, go from one room through the mirror, to the next room, you'll notice that the mirror will become more cracked and more imperfect, and you'll also notice something creepy looking back at you in the reflection. And it's not your own reflection at this point. Because as you get deeper into this labyrinth of cubic rooms, you'll start to see a more mangled abomination of yourself. Like a decayed zombie or skeleton looking back at you instead of your normal reflection. Each time the image will get more and more distorted and gross and ugh. Kind of like you're looking into a funhouse mirror from a carnival, except it's way creepier and creepier. It also doesn't really make any sense that you can see your reflection, because there's no light in the cube rooms. Instead, the light comes from the reflection itself. And since there's just infinite reflections, you can hardly tell where anything is. It's hard to find any depth perception. In fact, your brain will be so overwhelmed that you'll get terrible migraines and headaches. And on top of those migraines, you'll get confused and terrified and scared, which will eventually make you have panic attacks and, you know, You'll go nuts. So yeah, that's not fun. You'll eventually get so far deep into these small cubic rooms and these mirrors to the point where the reflections of you aren't even reflections. They act like their own entity and kind of move on their own. They almost kind of shadow what you do, except they don't move exactly when you move, and they look gross and disgusting, and they seem to just move around behind the mirror as they will. Of course, at first, you'll think that this is because you're going crazy, you're losing your mind, and you won't think anything of it. But as you keep going deeper and deeper, you'll start to accept that they're not your reflection, and that they're trying to hurt you. And at that point, these reflections will start to talk to you and verbally talk you. They'll sling insults at you, they'll give you false information, they'll scream at the top of their lungs, and keep in mind, this whole time you'll be trapped in different rooms with each wall being a mirror, so it's not like you can go anywhere. And sometimes these entities in the mirror will even convince the wanderer to walk to places in the floor that aren't solid and can be fallen through. So they'll literally walk you to a hole that you can fall through and hurt yourself. And if you do that, guess what? You'll land in another mirror room with more reflections. If you don't find the exit to the level, then you could be stuck in this infinite loop of small mirrored room with monsters looking back at you from the mirrors. So you're probably going to want to listen to the exit section. Now this is a quote from a wanderer that came here that they jotted down in a journal. The voice beckoned me to free it, repeatedly and desperately telling me, please, you're making a mistake. Don't just sit there. Let me out of this prison. Don't end up like me. When I opened my eyes, I saw my reflection persistently slamming her blood fist into the wall to my left. The glass was cracking more with each successive punch, and I stumbled back in fear, unprepared to confront 
whatever could step through that wall once it broke. However, I must have backed up too much such that I went through the wall. Into the same room, in fact. Though my rogue reflection was gone. My nightmare did not end there, unfortunately. All around me, I saw some mirror walls gradually fracturing. Even when my reflections on those walls displayed my same panicked expressions and conformed to match every move I made. What an adrenaline rush. I traversed this maze of mirrors for what seemed to be several minutes, running towards mirrors that lack visible cracks and just closing my eyes before I made impact. Was I escaping my own self, or was it something else? So yeah, as you can see, this person is crazy. They're running away from their own reflection, and this will happen the deeper you get to this level. To enter, you have to walk through a mirror that's not made out of glass on level 365, and to exit, it's pretty hard. You have to find something to break the mirror that you're staring at, and hope that behind the mirror is a tiled bathroom or tiled room behind it. And if you see that tiled room, it'll be some kind of bathroom in a random backrooms level. And if you plan on walking through it, you better hurry because the mirrors here and fix themselves so you have to be careful when breaking them because you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to be trapped just make sure you jump through it after you break it sometimes the mirrors can lead to nothing just a blank void and if you go through that huh, no one knows where you go so that's fun So, Backrooms level 998 is now classified as a class variable difficulty because its safety, security, and entity count can change randomly depending on where you're at in the level. Before this, the level was actually classified as a class 5, so it's a pretty new change. The level itself is a blank flat plane that expands out in all directions, and it's split up into three distinct zones or areas, which I'll be going over in a minute. Now, the main and biggest plane of the level looks like it's made out of clouds, but that's just an illusion because the whole thing is table flat. It's not puffy clouds, it's flat. But an image of clouds has been stamped into the floor somehow, and the texture of this floor is kind of like a wool in a way. It's rough and bumpy, but it is table flat, and there's literally no change in elevation. Now, this level is unlike most other levels when it comes to the entrances, because every entrance to this place brings everyone to the same spot which is at the bottom floor of a big concrete stairwell. Now there are eight flights of stairs in total, and it's at the very top of the stairs where you can see the big cloud floor thing. And at the top of the stairs, there's a blank empty room that has that doorway to look out. And in this room, there's something pretty sad, I gotta say. Along the floor of the room, there are a bunch of pebbles that have been lined up and kind of thrown into the corner. These pebbles and stones are kind of like mementos or tokens of people who have willingly traveled here and they left them as a kind of a reminder to those who were coming. You know, that they've been here and are gone now. It's kind of like people who leave those locks chained into fences. It's the same thing. Kind of sad, man. So when you go out of the doorway of this room and you look into that huge plane of cloud wool floor deal, you can actually look back at the room you just came out of and you'll see that it's just a small plain box like a minecraft house there's literally nothing on it it's just a plain small square room the roof of this box room is actually a skylight and you can see the skylight all the way from the bottom staircase level which is pretty cool now you can walk on this flat cloud plane thing for a long time specifically around 30 kilometers or 18 miles to be exact and it's after that distance when the level will start to change the perfectly white cloudy floor that you're standing on will start to morph into a dark and gray floor and the blue sky above you will start to shift into a gloomy gray sky this is the second zone of the level the gray zone at this point a breeze will start to blow that makes the area freezing cold like really cold and the further you go into it the darker and colder and more dangerous it'll get and it's not just dark skies and breezes that you're gonna have to worry about there's entities here too people there are other things which i'll get into in a second but the entities that are here are mainly smilers and skin stealers and dollars and that type of thing but there are also unknown and undocumented 
augmented humanoid entities that have spawned here too. People have no idea what they are, but they've seen them in the distance. The entities seem to not be interested in you, and they kind of just walk around without chasing you. It's like they don't even see where you're at. But it would still be scary to see all of them, and they're aggressive if you kind of instigate a fight. Like, if you run up to one and push it, it's gonna fight back. But if you ignore them and just give them their space, you should be okay. Now, as I just said, going deep enough into this gray section will eventually lead you into what most people think is the last area of the level. It's just called the Black Haze. At this point, the floor and the sky are both black. Bad weather will start to appear, storms will start to rage, and the wind will be blowing super aggressively. Like, it'll be blowing so hard it can knock you off of your feet and it'll rain for long periods of time. There's been thunder and lightning strikes seen here as well, and overall, it's just this really turbulent and volatile area. It's also believed that in the stormy section, there are way more entities than in the gray section, so you're gonna need to avoid those too. Now, if you're crazy or determined or just dumb and decide to keep walking through this black section, you'll eventually get to the quote-unquote edge of the level, which is just a wall of black clouds. No one knows how far out this wall is because it's kind of just hearsay and myth and legend that it exists. But at this point, the storms are said to get worse and the winds are said to be like a tornado. And no one knows what's past this black cloudy point. There's been no pictures past it or anything and the last picture that we have is one of the black cloud wall. And as I said, no one knows what's back there. But there are some theories on what is back there and I'll get into those now. There was a rumor that started a long time ago in the back rooms that level 998 is some sort of dangerous trial that you can complete to get to a safe haven level, or even to escape the back rooms as a whole. But since no one's past that black cloud wall, no one even knows if there's anything back there. It's said that most people who have come to this level have been adventurers or people who have just lost all ambition and are seeking a final resting spot. So they come here knowing that they might not get out. It's pretty sad, man, I gotta say. But I don't care how bad it gets to me in the back rooms, I'm not gonna try to go in the black zone. It seems terrifying. The other main theory is that there's just nothing behind the black cloud wall. But that's no fun, now is it? It's pretty easy to enter this level because there are an estimated 200 entrances. That's right. 200. But the entrance is a simple double white metal door that will appear on random levels. You just gotta open the door, walk through, and you'll be sent to the bottom of the staircase here on level 998. Now the exit portion isn't as certain because there's no for sure way to leave. Like I said, some people think that past the black zone, there's a safe haven that's really relaxing and you could be there forever, kind of like a heaven, but no one knows if that's real or not. People could be crazy, but most people that come here know what they're getting into and they know that there's no escape, so they kind of just accept that they're going to be stuck here or that they won't make it past the storms. Let me know in the comments what your theories are about this level. I mean, what do you think's past the black wall of clouds? Why do you think the level exists? Who do you think made it? My personal theory is that something important is behind the clouds. And one day, we might know if that's true or not. So back from level 995, or as it's commonly known, reality aligned houses, is classified as a class 4 difficulty because it's unsafe and unsecure, and it's also very volatile and glitchy. And you're gonna hear why in a second. The level itself looks like a never-ending straight road with houses on both sides of it. Now, trying to go off this road and get behind the houses is nearly impossible because of how strange the level's geometry is. So with real-life regular geometry, it works the way where you can just walk one direction and not stop until you obviously like hit a wall. But for this level, the geometry of the reality here is so glitchy and messed up that you can't even walk even though it looks like you can. It just won't let you walk back. In front of these houses, there's a bunch of cars. Most of them don't work because they're either missing parts like engines or motors or sometimes steering wheels, but some of them do work. Inside of the cars, there might be some random objects or tools that you can use. These artifacts and tools seem to all be random and strange and have no real meaning, but they're also found inside of the houses too. Now you can only get into some of the houses on this level, and if you do go inside of them, they look very liminal and almost like a real life house. And some people have claimed that they've even seen 
friends and family members' houses here. And speaking of the houses, I'm gonna talk a little bit about them now, because they're very interesting to say the least. For the most part, they all resemble each other pretty closely, however sometimes there is an instance where a different looking house will be in the row, and when you interact with those houses that look different, that's when the weird things will start to happen. The entry calls these weird things spatial distortions, which pretty much means that the environment will start to warp and change itself into something else. Typically it'll change itself to a very liminal and nostalgic looking place, and you will really get the feeling like you've seen it or been there before. Almost like the entire level morphs into a dream of some kind. And during these dream sequences, many people have reported seeing houses moving and glitching and just floating and other random things being warped like that. Also during these spatial distortions, the light on the level can be changed randomly from bright to dark to dim without warning. Overall, this level is so volatile and just very morphy and glitchy that you probably should avoid interacting with it. Even the entities on the level itself are affected by these distortions because they look weirder and they behave more out of the ordinary for their species and everything is just different about them. The entities that are mainly found here are the normal backrooms entities like wretches, death moths, hounds, that kind of thing. But they're all glitchy and they all warp in and out of existence, just like the rest of the level seems to. Now there are a bunch of theories on why this level warps in and out of what you can see and what you can perceive, and one of them is called the glitched reality theory. And this next quote that I'm about to read comes from an anonymous mag researcher, and I think they explain it pretty well. Quote, so we got the test results today, and the outcome was quite shocking to be fully honest. The answers that we got were something that I wasn't personally expecting, so what we found was that the special accommodations on level 995 have something bewildering to them. When they questioned why they decided to interact with these, knowing the potential consequences of the spatial distortions, what we got was that these houses looked exactly like replicas from their homes in the front rooms. The reason we found this significant is that there are numerous amounts of similar claims. If this is true, then that could explain a certain correlation between level 995 and reality. For some reason, buildings from the front rooms also coexist here in the back rooms. This could be a reasonable explanation to why these glitches occur when trying to interact with one. A sort of fusion between two realities. The question is if the back rooms and the front rooms are related in some way. End quote. So yeah, if you didn't understand that, it was pretty lengthy. Pretty much, they think that the glitchiness of the houses here and of the whole level in general is because the back rooms and reality meet here on this exact level in some way. And this is like an in-between zone between both those realities. And that's why some of the houses look like they're from real life and they seem to be here in the back rooms, but they're also in real life. It's also why these spatial distortions happen, because it's not a steady plane of existence, it's constantly warping in and out of each other. I think that's a pretty good theory, and I think it would explain why people have seen their own houses or their friends' houses here in this level, even though they're obviously not in reality, they're in the back rooms. It's also thought that the longer you stay in this level and continue walking down the road and that kind of thing, and the longer you interact with it, the more warpy and glitchy and volatile and more it breaks down, the more the worse it gets overall. It'll eventually get to where it's just so glitching and warping between day and night and real life and back rooms that it'll be hard to exist there properly and you'll kind of just start phasing in and out of existence, which I don't think anyone wants to do that, so you probably need to know how to exit. There are no bases or outposts on this level because, to be honest, it would be too dangerous to stay here for long periods of time. But to enter the level, you can break into a house that's locked on level 9, which is only some of them. Most of them are unlocked, so you have to find one and you know, kick the door down. And to exit, you can find a blue house that kind of looks out of place, walk inside of it, and then it'll be sent back to level 63, which is probably better than being here. <laughs> Thank you. 
So level 990 has a classification of class variable because it has mysterious properties that we don't quite understand. There's also a ton of changes in the environment that could be dangerous if you're not knowing what you're doing, so listen up for this video if you want to know how you can survive. Now the level itself is split into two parts, the above ground city area and the underground sewer system. And I'll explain both of them individually in a second, but first I'm going to briefly go over some notes about the entire level. The surface of this level is very calm. There's a light breeze blowing and a thick mist that covers most of the air around you. The mist and the breeze are hot though, so the entire level feels like a humid jungle. Like you're literally in the middle of a rainforest. Except there are city buildings there too. Above this mist, there's a light blue sky during the daytime and a dark purple sky at nighttime. So when it's dark, it's actually purple, which would be really cool if you think about it. This level, just like a ton of other ones, has a lot of non-Euclidean properties that mess up traversing and mapping it. So good luck trying to find where you're going. You might as well just go with the flow. Now these properties are actually more common when you're in a tight hallway or an alleyway or a sewer here. So if you're out in the open, you should be okay. Another weird thing here is that wanderers cannot meet up or see each other. Like if there's two people on the level at the same time, they'll never know because they can't see each other and they cannot interact which makes this level have a really strange isolation effect. Kind of like the level zero one. The buildings on this surface area are pretty similar to the ones from real life with just a couple differences. Like some of the signs are written in unknown letters or some of them are blank and some of the architecture is a little too advanced for humans. But other than that, they're pretty normal. But also most of the building types, as you can see, are covered in vines and in leaves and are incredibly overgrown. There's also two main types of weather that can happen here. One is a calm and sunny type of vibe, you know, chill stuff. And the other is a torrential rain, like literally a monsoon rain. And these two weathers can flip instantly just with a snap of a finger. One second, it'll be nice. And the next second, it'll start pouring the rain and the streets will be flooded. The last strange thing about the whole level is that the objects here that are inside of the buildings can randomly disappear and appear at all times. And this will happen with vending machines or water fountains or shelves or that kind of thing. Thing. Some of those items are not useful because they're old or whatever, but some of them are food and water. So if you get lucky, you could see a turkey or something teleport into a building right in front of you. So now I'll get into the two specific zones in more detail, the surface and the sewers. So the surface is the area I just touched on, and it's actually where you'll spawn if you get sent at this level. It's the easiest one to walk around in, and it's the easiest to explore, except for the non-Euclidean factors that could get you lost. The best way to describe the surface is that it's like an abandoned urban sprawl that's been overgrown and taken back by nature. The buildings have plants growing on the outside and growing on the inside, and even deeper inside of the buildings, there are gross, disgusting rooms full of decaying plants and mold, which is just nasty. And as I said earlier, this level is prone to random monsoon rain showers, so that means that the surface will be drenched with puddles and runoffs and waterfalls and everything like that too. And these rains can also flood the buildings or entire streets if you're not careful. Entities are pretty rare for this top part, but there are two main ones that have been witnessed so far. One is a strange shadowy figure that lurks in really, really overgrown areas of the city and in the alleyways. And the other is a strange type of water creature that's been seen in the flooding rains and waves of monsoons. Not much is known about either of them, but I'll tell you all we do know in the entity section. Now for the sewer section of the level. This is obviously a way more dangerous place and it's much more dangerous in the surface because it's very prone to flash floods. So you could just be walking in the tunnel of the sewer and then randomly you could hear a rumble and turn around and a huge thing of water will be coming right at you. There's also more non-Euclidean properties and more entities here so just don't come here. Also there is no natural light in these sewers which is of course a hazard but the biggest hazard is those flash floods and you wouldn't want to be trapped inside of a sewer when it's flash flooding. Just like the top of the level, there is overgrown vegetation in the sewers as well, even though there's no light here. And you could trip and get tangled in it if you're not careful either. These sewers are accessed from alleyways or under bridges on the surface area, 
but to be honest, I'm not really sure why you'd want to come here. Now it's time for the entities, and as I said earlier, there is a weird shadow one that's been discovered on the surface level. They're pretty much just all black humanoid type shapes, and they've just been seen silently walking in the night. No one knows anything about it. They haven't attacked. They're just there. There's also those weird water creatures that I hinted at that appear during violent rainstorms and flooding. They have no description, but they're just part of the water it seems there's also a very specific entity that lives in the sewers called a sewer leech which are snake-like water leeches that can grow up to eight inches long they attach themselves to wanderers clothes or flesh kind of like just a normal leech and they latch on with their teeth and this can actually give you an infection if you don't wash the wound quickly and these sewer leeches crawl up to the surface if it rains heavily and the sewers get flooded so you'll have to watch out for them there too the level itself was discovered on march 15th 2022 to from an anonymous wanderer who called it a quote silent paradise but also there are weird shadows and a leech that wants to eat you so i'm not really sure what that person was thinking but whatever to enter the level you have to travel far into an abandoned old building on level 11 and you'll get sent here and to exit you can stay in the sewer for a long time or you can go into a weird building that's not overgrown to be sent back to level 11. nice So Ashes to Ashes, or level negative 319, is classified as a class 5 difficulty, and is very, very unsafe and unsecure, and it's really dangerous because of non-entity hazards. So you don't really have to worry about creatures or stuff like that attacking you, uh, it's the level itself that's gonna attack you. The level takes place inside of a really old and broken down house that's all covered in a thick layer of dust, ash, and other kinds of trash and waste. There are three bedrooms in this house, one and a half bathrooms, and there's also a basement, an attic, a living room, and a dining room, as well as a kitchen and office, but you can't even get to the basement or attic, so that's kind of lame. The temperature inside of this disgusting house is always pretty cold. It stays around 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 8.3 degrees Celsius. And on top of it being cold, it also feels really damp and it smells dank and just awful, kind of like mold, as you can imagine. Now, no one knows what the outside of the house looks like because every exit is sealed with some kind of impenetrable material. And from what you'll see in a second, you don't really have time to try to exit the house like by going at the door, so no one really cares or knows what's outside. When this level was found, there was a big note carved into the table in the kitchen that pretty much says who was there and why they think they won't make it out of the level alive. One of the wanderers was 13, one was 16, one was 25, and one was 31, and that 13 and 16 year old were siblings. But that note includes some really creepy details and honestly just some terrifying stuff about why this level is dangerous. I'm just going to read you the last paragraph. And it says, I do not want to be forgotten, so find a way out. This place ages you by one year every five minutes. I timed it. I've been trying to find a way out for six hours now. I watched my sister unalive about 30 minutes ago, and she since has crumbled into ash and dust. I'm not too far behind, but I'm exhausted. I understand now why my grandfather was tired all the time. I'm going to unalive here. I made my peace with that. I'm too tired to go any further. I guess I wrote this to beg you to find a way out. When you get out of here, tell the others not to come to level negative 319. If they happen to find themselves here, tell them to find an exit as soon as possible. Uh, so, yeah. Just like that note said, this level makes you age one year older every five minutes that passes when you're there. So if you stay in the level for six hours, uh, you'd be getting older really, really quickly. And this anomaly is why there's ashes all over the ground, because when you are alive, you literally disintegrate and fall into ash and add to that ash pile. So that is that that's so creepy I'm like wow that is disturbing there's also been some researchers that got stuck in this level after that first note was left and they left some information on the walls written in blue crayons Apparently, most people aren't alive at around age 85, according to this note, but one of these explorer's colleagues was actually earlier than that, and they aren't alive at age 60 from diabetes, which means that this level can make you have illnesses that you'd get normally while aging in real life, but you get it way faster here because it ages you so much quicker. The researcher who wrote those findings on the wall apparently developed some kind of illness themselves, and it was some kind of heart disease because of the rapid aging. And well... 
you can guess what happened to both of them. The weird thing is that this aging isn't just for humans because it affects entities that are here too. One wanderer went to the bathroom on this level and found an old hound in the bathroom, ran away from it, and then the hound started chasing and then just disintegrated because it was so old and he just watched it turn right to dust. So yeah. Now the first person to ever make it out of this level alive and to escape and stuff was named Wanderer BB and apparently he was 14 years old when he got sent here and when he left he was 38 years old because he was trapped in the level for 2 hours which made him become 24 years older than he was when he got here. He still has no idea how he got to this level, but the good news is he does know how he escaped. The way he got out was he went to the upstairs bathroom and found the mirror there, and the mirror was covered in dust and ash obviously, so he wiped the mirror down, cleaned the ash off, and then got no clipped instantly to level 0. He was 24 years older, but he was alive, which is better than what everybody else could say. There's no way to tell how many wanderers have actually gotten to this level and never escaped because the entry is still unknown, like no one knows how you get here, but it is imperative and very important that the second you get sent here, you run upstairs to that mirror and you hope that it works to send you out because if it doesn't, you can age 24 years in two hours, so yeah. Backrooms Level Pi is classified as a Class 2E difficulty and is pretty unsafe with non-entity hazards. So you're not gonna have to worry about a wretch chasing you, you're gonna have to worry about the level hurting you. That's all you need to know. Level Pi is actually a sub-level that is thought to exist between levels 3 and level 4. The level's physical appearance is pretty unique to all the other levels that I've gone over. It looks like this bright, bold expanse of of hills. The grass, the sky, the clouds, all of it is set to the highest saturation possible, which just means that all of the colors are literally as bold as they can physically be. The hills here are so round in some spots that it's impossible to climb up them, so they're kind of just like spheres sticking out of the ground. And also some of the hills are coming out of the ground at such unnatural ways or they're slanted in really strange angles that it doesn't even like make any comprehensible sense to your brain. You literally cannot even fathom it. It all just adds to how trippy the level is. The hills and slopes almost act like ocean waves, but instead of water, it's grass. There are also freshly paved asphalt roads that wind around the hills as well, and these roads curve and fall follow them, all the slopes and turns and everything, even the ones that don't make any sense, there's still roads going up them. But some of the roads seem to randomly end or curve and then just stop, which is pretty strange. So pretty much the hills and the roads are so curvy and windy and wavy that it would be hard for your brain to even understand what you're looking at. Not to mention how bright and saturated everything is. The most common thing on this level, besides those hills and roads, are the multicolored gas stations. And these are placed on really strange locations. In fact, it doesn't even seem possible to have buildings where these are. But hey, that's the backrooms for you. They're put on direct hillsides, on top of hills, on the sides of hills, in the valleys, literally anywhere. Even if it doesn't even seem possible for a building to exist, they're gonna be there. The one constant with these gas stations is that they'll always be near a road to some degree. Now inside of the gas stations, there is legitimately no sign of any human life. But each of them is perfectly bright and clean and spotless. There are things on the shelves too, but they never move and you can't move them. It's almost like they're stuck in time. The actual brands of the gas stations that are here on the level do not exist in real life. Like it's a completely new random brand that no one has ever seen before. Which almost makes it creepier in my opinion. The names and logos are just out of the world, like they've never been seen before. However, even after all that, I think that the weirdest thing on this level is that sometimes a random fog will appear and start to roll over the hills. This fog kind of hovers and slithers its way around the hills, and when it gets near you, you can see that the saturation of the level gets lower 
kind of like it lessens the color's vibrancy. And the area near this fog gets really pixely when it passes by. Almost like the level has a low resolution when the fog is there, or something like that. Pretty spooky. This misty fog is the biggest environmental danger of the level because it's toxic to breathe in. Like, bad toxic. You can avoid the mist by trying to get inside a gas station, but if you don't, well, you know what happens. There are no outposts here, but there was rumored to be a few, however no one knows if there actually was, or if the outpost just vanished somehow, or who knows what happened to them. There are also no entities, and to enter this level, you can find a door in level 51 that opens to show you this place. Now this door is random, so you're gonna have to open a ton of different ones to find it, but hey, be my guest. And to exit, there isn't one set in stone yet. Most people just randomly get sent away, kind of like the level chooses who stays and goes. So if you do get here, uh, you're stuck. Have fun! First up for the video is level Scopophobia, or level whatever this symbol is, by Nick from the Discord. It's classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and is completely devoid of entities that we know of, but it is extremely dangerous. So the word scopophobia is actually the fear of being stared at or stalked which leads to anxiety and feelings of being uncomfortable. And since that's the level's name, you can only imagine how creepy this is about to be. The level itself looks like an infinite number of small, tight, and cramped wooden rooms with skinny, steep staircases connecting them. And these staircases require you to bend over and hunch down to even walk through them because they're so short. Even if you're already short, you're probably going to have to crouch. The rooms themselves can be anything, like kitchens, bathrooms, living rooms, and even bedrooms. And everything is made out of wood kind of like the interior of a cabin. Every room only has one thing in common, besides being made out of wood, and it's that they all have grayscale paintings of nature on the walls. Living rooms typically have glass doors or windows or both on one wall, but they're actually blacked out. You can't see through them, you can't break them, and you can't open them. They're just in place of where real windows and real doors would be. Some rooms have TVs that are on, but the only thing playing is just straight up static. And a soft static buzz echoes throughout most of the rooms. There's also soft jazz playing throughout the entire level, never getting louder or quieter, so it's unknown where its source is from, but it does add a little creep factor to it. What is known though is that two people cannot meet on this level, even if they're both here at the same time. The only way to communicate with another person is through walkie-talkies, but even then, the audio is distorted and hard to hear. This is kind of like how people in the real world can talk to people in the Upside Down from Stranger Things through radios. Neat stuff. Now it's time to get into the really creepy part of this level. After you get here, you'll start to feel an eerie liminal space vibe that you get with most backrooms levels, but this will wear off in about 5 minutes. Then after this, that soft jazz will suddenly stop, and you'll start to feel like you're being watched. And after about 15 minutes of feeling this, you'll start to hear knocking on the doors and on the windows and walls. And since you can't see outside, you'll probably be freaking out, because I know I'd be freaking out if I heard that stuff. After 45 minutes, those gray paintings from the walls will actually turn into pictures of you from this level. Like, someone took pictures of you and put them on the wall. That's what it seems like. And you'll start hearing shuffling footsteps echoing through the staircases and rooms behind you. Then eventually, those footsteps will get closer and closer, but when you turn around, you can't see anything until you look in the mirrors on the level. If you do this, in the back corner of the room that you're in, you'll see something standing and staring at you. Can't actually make out what it is, just a shadow of a humanoid with eyes, but that's all you can see, and that is terrifying. But that is not the worst part, because after this, you'll start to feel breathing on the back of your neck, right behind your ears. But whatever you do, do not turn around because you won't be seen again if you do. If you're still alive at this point, then you should be able to escape now. And you definitely need to. Except, no one knows how to escape. But most people said that they happened to escape when they were near a TV. 
So just go to one of those areas. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can find an old wooden chair with an eye carved into it, and then sit into the chair, and you'll be sitting here. But yeah, that level literally gives me the creeps. Like, just imagine being taunted and harassed by whatever this thing is, and hearing knocking and running sounds, and you can't see anything. I would be terrified. The last level for this video is level negative 974, or Puppy's Domain, from Andro, who is a mod on the Discord server. This level is meant to be the polar opposite to the Kitty's House level, and I think it works in that way perfectly. The level is classified as a class 2 difficulty, and is unsafe with a minimal entity count and there's just one entity. It physically looks like a bunch of hallways that are pretty similar to level zero in the fact that they're winding and curving and stuff like that, except these halls are gray drywall and dark gray carpet, and the lights in the ceiling are not all the same shape. Some of them are distorted and waving, and some of them give off less light than the other ones. And this level also has absolutely no sounds or smells to it, which makes it kind of seem like an isolation chamber in a way. Your voice doesn't make any sounds either. There's also no food or water or tools here, and the only thing here besides the hallways and the lights is one single entity called Puppy. This thing is 9 feet tall, or 2.8 meters tall, and it's a humanoid shaped void shadow silhouette with thick arms and legs with no fingers or toes. It has no facial features either, but it can somehow sense where people are without any eyes or ears, so I don't know. Puppy doesn't actually walk. Instead, it teleports where it wants to go, but it only teleports when you're not looking at it. So if you take your eyes off of him, then it'll slowly teleport closer to you. The entity also doesn't physically attack you either. Instead, it gives you this paralyzing effect just by staring. And if it does stare at you for long enough, then you could become unable to move, and then Puppy will just teleport away and leave you to rot from starvation. So, that's fun. To enter this level, you can noclip inside the bathroom on Kitty's house's level, or if you somehow make Kitty mad, then Kitty will send you here. And to exit, you can find one of these items on the floor, and then fall asleep next to it, and you should wake back up in Kitty's house. So the Hallowed Gate is classified as a class undetermined, and most of its properties and characteristics are unknown, and most information as well is pretty rare to come by. The level is sort of an elusive level that's thought to exist somewhere in the void, and the void is just an endless abyss of nothingness that you can get trapped in by trying to noclip between levels in the back rooms. So you could try to noclip from level 0 to level 1, but you might get stuck in this void area, and originally it was thought that nothing was in the void, but this level is most likely there. The level physically is made up of one huge behemoth gate that looks like it's made out of pure gold and marble. And these materials can't be broken or cracked or anything like that, and they seemingly take no damage from anybody that tries to break through. And the gate is always in a closed position, but it can be opened by a couple of ways. The whole level is not just this one gate, there's many other gates and hallways and rooms and corridors and that kind of stuff, but it does start with this one huge gate. One way that you can open this huge gate is you can find an ornamental key artifact that's laying around somewhere and use it to enter, and another way is that the gate will just open itself to you. I mean, <laughs> that'd be easy. Although sometimes the gate will eject wanderers if they don't have the proper key, uh, so you might want to try to get a key, but who knows, it has a mind of its own. And the fact that it might have a mind of its own leaves some people to believe that it's some kind of artificial intelligence, or there's some kind of higher power controlling this gate and the other gates. Since this level does take place inside of the void, most of the floors and walls are just blank nothingness, but you can still somehow walk on the floor, as if you were walking on the real thing. However, in some areas there are floors, but right here with this big gate, you're just walking on the air, man. So past the gate and inside of the level, there are these huge open hallways and rooms that have this Baroque style of architecture to them. And almost everything inside, just like the gate, is made out of gold and marble. And the level's halls and rooms are very cold and they stay around negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 22 degrees Celsius. And the marble makes it feel even colder. These level rooms are split into specific zones or sub-layers, which I'll talk about in a minute. But each of the different rooms are separated 
surrounded by large gold and marble doors, however they're not as big as the original door. And each time one of these doors opens and closes back, it changes how it looks, which can make walking through this entire level really difficult because you can't really tell where you've been and where you haven't been. Now, as I said earlier, this level is really rare to get to, and only a very few amount of people have ever set foot here and have lived to tell the story. Most people are thought to get lost in the labyrinth of doors and halls, and some people are even consumed by an effect called the blackout cycle. Now, the blackout cycle is almost like a natural disaster in a way that happens on this level. And when it happens, the entire level goes dark, and you can hear loud thumping noises echoing through the hallways, and even sometimes electrical buzzes. On top of the loud noises and the ground shaking, there are these creepy ghost-like figures that speedily move closer to you. It's thought that this blackout cycle is some kind of security system for the level, and it tries to scare people off. I mean, it would, it would work for me if there was ghosts running at me in a hallway, I'm gonna be real. But apparently these ghosts can really mess up people's heads, and oftentimes people suffer amnesia attacks or PTSD from interacting with them, so. But when the blackout effect is not happening, it's almost like this level mesmerizes people in a way, because of how big and grandiose it is. I mean, it's literally just these massive, huge, golden hallways, and, and marble hallways, and everything is just massive, and it's hard to take in the sheer size of it. I imagine that it would be kind of like walking into the Versailles Palace in real life for the first time. But who knows? Now I'm going to talk about the different sublayers or rooms of the level, and they're pretty neat, I gotta say. Sublayer A is made up of the Great Passage, which is the first massive hallway that seemingly does go on forever in one direction. Think of a huge castle corridor. And then there are different rooms that splinter off from this Great Passage. Sublayer B is made up of another area called the Halls of Abundance. Now this hallway and room is held up by thin threads in the void. And in the middle of this room, there is this massive dining table with food and plates and silverware on it. And the food is not old. I mean, it's literally edible, so you can eat it if you want to. Sublayer C is called the Curator's Halls, and this is a hallway full of statues of Backroom's entities. The statues are life-size, and there are creatures that we know and love, like wretches and stuff that are in statue form, but there are also creatures that we don't know and have never been seen before as well. Each statue has a golden plaque on the bottom, and there are words written in an unknown language on it. Sublayer D is a huge courtyard with ornamental plants in the middle. Sublayer E is a grassy area with with weird plants everywhere as well. Sublayer F is a massive armory where there are all kinds of combat related stuff, night stuff, and anything you can think of that is related to war. And then sublevels G, H, I, and J are all specific rooms that tie into these hallways I just talked about. And each of them have different properties and are uniquely dangerous. To enter this level, you can enter from the void by any of its sources. But obviously, that's not smart because the void is dangerous in and of itself, and no one actually knows how to get to the hallowed gate level from the void it's just a randomly appearing gateway in the endless abyss of darkness and since normal people really can't find this level it's kind of hard to say if there's even an exit to it Backroom's level Megalophobia is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with some entities running around. Now the word Megalophobia actually means the fear of huge objects, so if you have that, tread with caution. The level itself resembles a town, specifically a really old looking town. And the houses here date back to the early 1800s, but some of them look a little bit newer. Now, even though these buildings obviously look old, they're not broken and they're not worn down or anything. They're in incredible shape. But the weirdness is just getting started because inside some of the houses, the walls have Level Zero's wallpaper on them and Level Zero's carpet. Very strange. The town also has no paved roads or anything like that, instead it's just dirt paths or rock paths. Now even though this town is straight out of the 1800s, there's also electrical poles and wires running through them. And there's even cell phone towers here. So yeah, why does a town that looks so old have modern day technology? The houses here also have tons and tons of non-Euclidean properties that make no sense whatsoever. Like some of them are just massive on the inside, but 
tiny looking on the outside. Some of the houses are flooded completely from the floor to the ceiling, and some of the doors in the houses open up to nothing on the other side except the wall. And a really common thing is that the ceilings have an insane amount of light bulbs in them. Just a ton of weird stuff like that is happening inside these houses, even though the outside looks like it's from the 1800s. But it still gets even more mysterious, because the entire town of this level is actually inside of a superstructure. So literally everything you see is inside of this ungodly massive building. The building kind of looks like a factory, but instead of just a normal factory, it's a huge factory with massive windows on each side. And these windows cannot be seen out of because there's just bright lights coming through them. They also kind of smell like coal and ash if you get too close, which is another interesting thing. Now, it's not known how big this mega structure is, but it is so big that it's got its own weather and clouds inside of it. Because sometimes the level has rain and thunderstorms, which makes it even weirder because it's raining and thunderstorming inside of a building. It isn't recommended to go anywhere near the walls of this level because of the windows there. And these windows are not just harmless things. Some of them are window entities, which will suck you in and eat you, and you'll never be seen again if you go near it. So, yeah. Something that isn't talked a lot about in this level are the echoes, echoes that, happen that happen in it. it. Like, just talking slightly louder than your normal voice will cause these huge echoes to bounce off the walls, the ceiling, and the roof. So if there's ever a thunderstorm or rain that pops up, you better run inside of a building to avoid going crazy or deaf from all the sounds and echoes. And also on top of that, sometimes you can hear really strange noises like screaming or crying way off in the distance. Just a faint echo of it. It's not known if these noises are real or if you're just going crazy from losing your sanity, but either way, it would be pretty terrifying to hear a bunch of screaming. These screams might also be coming from the next part of the level, which is called the holes. These holes lead to underground tunnels beneath the town and beneath that mega building. These holes are randomly placed and randomly generated along the level, so no one really knows where they're at, but you'll know one when you find one, because it's just a big hole. And if you do jump into one of these holes, you will fall into a tunnel. And these tunnels are part of a huge system of long, claustrophobic labyrinths of tunnels that have a few inches of lukewarm water in the middle. The water isn't flowing, it's just completely still, and it looks like it's supposed to be a sewer kind of down here. Except, instead of being dirty and nasty like a normal sewer, these tunnels are 100% clean. There's no dirt, no grime, nothing. Just clean blue water and clean water white surfaces. And the tunnels themselves are made out of this marble type of rock that actually dampens any sound that happens near them. So if you're splashing around or screaming, it won't be that loud, it won't be that echoey, because the stone absorbs it. The tunnels are also lit up by these really weird orb light things on the walls, which is pretty nice, but it also means that there's a bunch of entities here as well. Speaking of entities, the only entities that will be above ground in that town area are window entities, hounds, and facelings. And these are pretty common in most backrooms levels, so they're common here. And those are the only ones that have been seen so far. There could be more. But down in the depths of these tunnels, there are a ton more, like clumps, the hydrolytus plague, insanities, hairworms, which are brain-altering parasites that live in the water and, if ingested, can make you very sick. There's also skin stealers, and these are the ones that have just been seen so far in the tunnels, but as I said, the tunnels are this infinite labyrinth of weird tunnels that no one's ever explored, so there could be more, since no one has any idea how deep they go. There are no bases or outposts here, and to enter the level, you can be sent here by randomly no-clipping from level 38, or you can find a ski lift in any level and ride it to be sent to the town here. But I don't think I'd be coming here, to be honest. I don't really like big things, so I kind of have megalophobia in a way, and the fact that there's a town inside of a giant factory is terrifying to me. So to summarize the level, level Megalophobia is a decently large town made out of old looking buildings and roads. However, even though this town is old, there are modern technologies like cell phone towers and telephone wires everywhere. And all of the level takes place inside of a mega structure with huge roofs and walls and windows. This mega building is so big that clouds and weather can form above the town. And underneath all of this crazy stuff is more crazy stuff. A maze of tunnels filled with clean blue water that goes deeper and gets more claustrophobic as you go. Cool stuff.
So the broken backrooms level is classified as a class death zone and it has multiple environmental hazards that make it dangerous to even be in. The level really can't be considered a level because it's so fragmented and shattered and glitchy that it expands outside of what we would normally consider a level. It's just a massive wasteland of corrupted images, planes, data, and other things that our tiny human brains can't even begin to comprehend. Even though it's hard to describe, I'm gonna try it anyway. So the broken looks like a kaleidoscope, kind of, and it's extremely unstable everywhere you look. The architecture and the shapes here don't make any sense to our brains, and they don't follow the normal shapes and patterns that we know of. The terrain itself of the level is made out of broken, swirling matter, and you can actually walk on this terrain, even though it's glitchy and warping, but who knows how that's even possible. The level is very colorful and very vibrant, and the further you walk into it, the worse it'll get for you. Just looking at the spaces around you will make you start to go insane just from seeing what you're looking at. Just seeing everything crumble and warping won't help your sanity either. Now, some people call the broken a splintered plane of existence. Kind of like a reality that went too far and became so corrupt that you can't even tell what it is anymore. It became so digitized that it's not even real. The strange colors and shapes and movements and reality bending things are not the only dangers here though, because there's actually a noise that's constantly blasting full volume on this level. The noises are coming from literally everywhere, but it's like this amplified, disturbing, bass boosted sound that you could probably think of what it sounds like. I mean, just look at the picture of this level and listen to what you would imagine a noise would sound like there, and that's what it would be. There are also objects in this level that float through the ground and the sky, and they come back up and go everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. The wiki dot describes the level as a place that you can't even fathom or begin to understand because of how corrupted and how laggy it is. Ironically, there are actually structures here in the level as well but the only problem is that they can change shape and are devoid of any actual material. They're just warped atoms, I guess. So you might see a pyramid or something, but then you can go right up to it and walk directly through it or glitch beside it and you won't even see it again. It'll just disappear. On the horizon of the level, you can see an effect that is kind of like that one from Minecraft when you're loading in new chunks of the world. So if you keep walking, you'll see the world build on itself which must mean that this level has the ability to load new and infinite parts of itself, which is crazy. The newer the location, the more chaotic and broken it'll be. And for that reason, it's said that you shouldn't wander into this level at all, unless you're insane. Some people think that this level has some kind of relationship with the backrooms as a whole, a sort of symbiotic relationship. Like the back rooms might feed off of this place's unstable and hostile energies, and it might use those energies to create entities or other levels that we know about. Who knows? Now, some of the places found in the Broken kind of resemble other locations and levels and landscapes from other backrooms levels and from real life, except these are non-linear, gross, conglomeration, glitchy things of that real thing. So there could be what looks like a city, but it's just warping and glitching and floating around. But again, that's all just a theory. A backrooms theory. See what I did there? Others who don't believe in that theory that I just talked about believe that this place is just a bizarre, random, meaningless plane of reality that doesn't have a purpose or a meaning. So they pretty much think it doesn't mean anything. Personally, I like the first theory that the backrooms draws this dark, magical energy from this level to make other levels itself. But let me know your theories in the comments. Pretty interested to see what y'all have to say. If you, for some reason, want to come here, you want to avoid one thing specifically, and that thing is touching or making contact with any of the glitching fragmented structures. Because if you do that, your existence will literally start to crack and rupture, and then you'll start fading away. Like, you could touch one of those pyramids or one of those statues there, and just start decoding and not exist anymore at all, in any way. It's happened before, and it's terrifying to think about what that might look like. Entities that we normally talk about here on the channel, like hounds and that kind of thing, they're not seen here as themselves, and it's thought that they wouldn't be able to survive anyway, but there actually have been glitchy 
prism and shape looking things in the sky that kind of resemble entities. Maybe those prisms are like cocoons that entities are made in for the back rooms? Who knows? Now it's said that entities have been seen no clipping here by accident, just like people do, but those entities have seemingly transcended and melted together with the Broken's environment and have become these glitchy, warping, broken things that aren't bound by the laws of physics that you can see glitching around everywhere. And they'll just float and warp for the rest of existence. As of right now, no one knows the entrance or the exits to this horrifying level, which honestly makes it more terrifying because you have no idea how to avoid being sent here, and you also have no idea how to leave if you were sent here. Nice! But yeah, let me know your theories about this level in the comments. Is this level some sort of power location that the backrooms pulls power from to make entities and levels, or is it just another random, glitchy, corrupted level? Who knows? So Backrooms level 7777, aka Bloodlust Masquerade, starts with a warning for anyone who might get shocked or goofed up with stuff like mental trauma or light descriptions of gory stuff. If that kind of stuff messes with you, then you probably shouldn't continue. But as always, I do censor everything pretty much, so you're not going to really hear anything. You're just going to hear code words for deep things. So. The level itself looks like a smallish house from the late 1990s. There's bookshelves on the wall, and the floors have a brownish carpet color. But the carpet itself is covered in a red liquid that typically comes out of people sometimes, if you know what I'm saying. The walls themselves are also painted red, if you know what I'm saying. But this red stuff is all over everything. There's actually been DNA tests done on this liquid, and it's been linked to the same people who have actually been on this level before. Even if they didn't get hurt, it still can match to them, which is really interesting. There are three main rooms in this house on the first floor, and those are the living room, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. All of them have this weird effect called the level 7777 effect, and I'll get into what that means in a second. So buckle up. There's actually a second floor to this house as well with two smallish bedrooms. Now this floor is the only one with windows since the first floor is completely dark. But when you look outside of the windows, it's just a glitchy distorted void. There's nothing out there. The windows also won't even open, so you just gotta look through the glass. And they don't even give light, really. Just instead a kind of a faint glow. So it's recommended to bring a flashlight if you're going to be coming to this level, but trust me, you're probably going to want to avoid the level. When you shine your flashlight in some rooms, you can see that in the different areas, some of them have a black and white effect, meaning that everything you see will be black and white only. Like I said though, this only happens in some specific rooms, so no one knows why, but it's really weird. So now I'm going to explain that thing I mentioned earlier called the level 777 effect. Tighten down your seatbelts. This gets insane. So now I'm going to talk about the level 7777 effect, which appears to everybody as a active cognito hazard. This could really mess you up if you don't keep your sanity with you and your bearings straight. So get ready. The second you get to this level, you'll smell rotting and decaying flesh of some sort. Now this smell is kind of wafting through the entire level and it doesn't really lead to one thing at first. Until you start to follow the smell, you'll be led to one of the rooms that I talked about earlier. And if you walk into that room, suddenly you'll feel like you're standing in a pool of quote unquote red paint. Wink wink, if you know what I'm saying. Or you'll feel like you're standing on a floor made out of flesh, if you know what I mean. Now if you feel this stuff on your feet, whatever you do, don't look down because of what happens if you do. If you look down at whatever you're standing on, the darkness that's in this level will start to fade away and you'll be able to see in full brightness what you're standing on. And what you'll see is every friend or family member or person you know in real life will be under you. Wink wink. If this happens, then you'll start to go insane, obviously, because you're seeing people you love and care about just there, under you, unalived. Once this insanity starts, there's literally no going back, you'll just keep getting worse. 
You'll feel hopeless and guilty and sorrowful and sad. But the best thing you can do if you get stuck in this 7777 effect is to try to just chill in the corner of the room until the grief is passed. When this grief state is over, most people will still go insane from what they just experienced, which makes sense because obviously what you just saw when you looked down. The good news is, is that if you don't show many emotions or if you're pretty emotionally strong or if you're a sociopath, then the level 777 effect won't really mess you up. You'll kind of just go on like normal. But if you're really emotional and things like this mess you up in the head, then it's going to be tough. So. so that was the dangerous cognito hazard effect for this level. And that's what makes this level extremely dangerous, and you probably should avoid it at all costs. So when this level was discovered originally, it was just a class zero, because everybody thought that it was a chill house that was just really dark. Soon after that though, people started discovering the level effect, and some of the survivors of the effect are completely insane, off the deep end, but they remember every morbid detail about what they saw, and they're just extremely traumatized. There aren't any documented entities here, but there is believed to be a couple of undocumented ones, but it also might be that the entire level itself is an entity because of what it can do. So, yeah. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can go into a house on level 9 that will link up to this level, or you can enter from the hub sometimes if you see red paint, wink wink, on the floor. There's only two exits to the level. The first one is you make it through that cognito hazard by being emotionally stable or not having emotions. And if you make it through just fine, you'll be sent to another level. And the other exit is by unaliving. So <laughs> you better start getting those emotions in check if you want to leave. So this level is called Backrooms Level Ohio, with a zero on the front and on the end. I'll explain that in a second. And it's classified as a Class 5 survival difficulty, with it being unsafe, very unsecure, and infested with an entity. That's right, I said entity, not entities. So the level itself is massive. It's thought to be around the size of our Earth, and it even kind of looks like it. It's got houses and buildings and roads and bridges and things that look man-made, except it's all abandoned and cracking and broken down, and everything here looks like a massive post-apocalyptic war. Like a battle or an end-time event just happened right before you got there. The ground is blackened and smoking in spots, and there are huge cracks in the ground that go down for miles. The roads that aren't completely destroyed have road signs and street names that are in English, but with weird misspellings and errors. Like if a street was named Baker's Street, it might be spelled Baker's Street instead of just Baker Street. Or the word interstate might be spelled inter, like on your keyboard, interstate and so on. As I said, everything seems like it's completely abandoned, but it also seems like something big just happened. Like the ground is still smoking and is still burning in so many spots. And on top of that ground burning, the sky above the ground has an orange smoky glow to it, almost like it's on fire. There is no noticeable day or night cycle, and the sky and the ground level is always a dark, deep orange, like a wildfire happening, and you can also see ashes and embers floating in the air, and hear the ambient sounds of destruction and explosions and heavy machinery from the sky. Now, on the ground, among the buildings and stuff like that, there are also what looks like military outposts, except they're destroyed and abandoned and crumbling down. It won't take you long to realize what destroyed the society you're standing in, because you'll eventually look up and you'll see them. The tripod entities. Now these are massive three-legged metal entities that have seemingly taken over whatever planet this backroom level takes place on. They seem to be using the planet to harvest its resources, like minerals and wood and that kind of stuff. They move around really slowly, but they do take huge steps on the way, and they seem to be sentient and like they have a brain because they purposely avoid big bodies of water or big canyons or something, so it seems like they're either being controlled or they're controlling themselves. Interestingly enough, there are actually a few tripods that have been taken down by whatever military used to be here because there's been some bodies found laying on their sides with huge holes in their metal casings. 
The only issue is that there's been no planes and no military weaponry or any military vehicle at all found. So either they've all been used or the tripods literally just destroyed what was left. Who knows? The entire level is a post-apocalyptic ghost town that feels like you're the only person in all of humanity left. It gives you the feeling that you no clipped into someone else's World War 3 and you got there right as it ended and you're the last person to be alive. Now as I said, this level is thought to be as big as Earth, but where people normally get no clipped is near a city and surrounding the city in the countryside. There are some small resources in the houses that are outside of the city, like food and what seems to be some kind of drinkable liquid. It's almost like this level produces its own kind of soft drink, or this planet, wherever this is, makes its own different kind of soft drink. It's some kind of flavored water milk substance called Solzats, and it's been found in the broken refrigerators that are here. It's safe to drink, and it's described to have a sweet and salty taste with no carbonation, kind of like Gatorade mixed with milk. Now the food that's been found mainly consists of canned food, except it's not normal canned food like chicken noodle soup or something like that, it's like a turkey dinner in a can or summer dinner in a can. So between the Solzats drinks and the canned food, that leads many people to believe that this level is actually an alternate existence of the earth that we live on. But who knows? And as far as we know, less than three people have ever been sent to this level, and each one of them landed in completely different spots. One started in the city, one was near what seemed to be a beach or bay area, and one was in the deep wilderness somewhere. And because of those three different wanderers, we've been able to get a pretty accurate description of what the place looks like. And it is terrifying. The air itself doesn't seem to be toxic, and nothing is actively trying to hurt you when you're here, but it's still extremely dangerous for a ton of reasons. Obviously, the main reason is the tripod entities that are walking around collecting resources. You don't want to get stepped on, and sometimes they'll shoot one of their legs into the ground, and you don't want to be under that, obviously. But the other reason is the fires that are spreading around the level. These fires can become huge walls of fire and cover the entire parts of the level for days on end. So watch out for that. Also, since the buildings seem to have been destroyed or shot with something, lots of the ones left standing are about to collapse. So that could be a danger too. You don't want to have a building collapse on top of you. Now, as I said, this level is nicknamed Ohio after the only state sign that's been seen standing. And just like the street signs and stuff, it's spelled wrong compared to our Earth. Now, our Earth obviously has two O's, but this Ohio is spelled with zeros instead of O's. And that's why it was named Ohio. It's a pretty fun nickname for an absolutely gut-wrenchingly terrifying place. Now, to enter this level, you have to have no-clipped through a tile floor somewhere, or find a collapsed house and no-clip into the rubble. In fact, the first wanderer that ever came here was just looking through the remains of a collapsed house when he tripped and he no-clipped through the ground and he woke up in the burning city here. To exit, you have to find a body of water outside of the city and outside of the suburbs, like a pond or a river or lake, and jump in it and no-clip through the bottom to get out. And this exit was actually found when that same wanderer that got here first was trying to outrun this massive fire that just blew up. And then he jumped into a river to swim away from it, sank to the bottom, touched the bottom of it, and then was sent to level 11 after. Now just imagine for a second, if you will, walking along a tile floor level and then falling. And not just, you know, getting back up and walking away, falling through the floor into this desolate apocalyptic level and then seeing a place just like Earth burning to a crisp with giant tripod entities walking around. I don't know though, sounds like just another day in the backrooms to me. So the pool rooms is a level from the fandom, actually, and it's level 37. It's split up into a couple different zones, which I'll get into later, and they all vary depending on how safe they are or how dangerous they are. The first zone I want to talk about is called the safe zone, shocker, and it's classified as a class zero difficulty and is devoid of anything that could possibly hurt you, unless you like hate water or something, then I don't know what to tell you. This zone looks like a maze of white tiled walls and rooms that are filled at varying depths of room temperature water. The water itself is clean and could theoretically be consumed, but uh, I don't know if I would want to try that, to be honest with you. The entire level has no actual light source, no light fixtures in the ceilings, and the only light that comes into the level 
is from some random windows that just shine bright light into the halls and then from there it reflects off into the water. This level's day-night cycle has it day for 16 hours and night for 8 hours, and during those day hours, the windows will appear perfectly white, so you won't be able to see outside of them, you'll just be able to see like a white sheet of light, and at nighttime, they'll turn completely black. The deeper you go into this level, the deeper the water itself gets and the less light gets there. A weird thing about the safe zone's walls is that they actually damper and dampen any sound from entering or moving around. And the only sound you'll be able to hear is the water splashing from your legs or feet or, you know, if you're swimming, you'll hear that water. Earlier, I said that this part of the level was completely safe and devoid of entities, which is mostly true, except there's been some reports of wanderers hearing weird noises from an unknown source, and sometimes they've even said that something was watching them from the shadows? That's uh, pretty creepy. The main theory is that people have been hearing sounds coming from the danger zone, since the walls in the danger zone actually amplify sound unlike the walls of the safe zone, which dampen sound. The tiles here in the safe zone actually have another weird quirk, where they reflect light from the windows into different colors, like neon colors, which then can be reflected into the water, and thereby changes the color of the water to your eyes. Pretty trippy. The last thing about this zone is that there's actually almond water that drips down from the ceiling, which leads some people to believe that there's a huge store of almond water above this part of the level, which would be pretty cool, but again, it's just a theory. The next part of the level is actually called the Main Center, which, as its name suggests, is just the exact center location of the level, and it looks like a huge room with water on the floor, just like the safe zone, except this time, there's actually platforms that are above the water that people can stand on, which is nice if you're tired of getting wet. This area typically is like a landmark to wanderers and a good place to meet up or a good place to rest. There's even food and other supplies here too, and these supplies will actually refill themselves if they're all taken every hour or so. But the most important thing about this zone is that it has the ability to restore your sanity, which if you know anything about the back rooms, sanity is very important. The last zone for the pool rooms is called the Danger Zone, and, well, it's dangerous. It's classified as a Class 4 difficulty, and it's very unsafe and very unsecure, and it's pretty much exactly like the safe zone, except the walls are dark blue and black, and not white, and they're more cramped and claustrophobic. It's also extremely dark here, and in some cases, it's actually pitch black, and like I said earlier, the tiles amplify every sound, so it's really disorienting, because everything echoes really loudly. The water here is also worse than before, because earlier you could theoretically drink the water, but if you drink the water here, you'll get severe stomach aches. On top of all that, this section actually makes your sanity drop really quickly, which obviously isn't good. But yeah, that's it for the danger zone. It's like the first safe zone, but dangerous. There are actually three colonies that call this level home. The first one is called the Lifeguards, which pretty much is a group of around 90 members who live in that main area where the platforms are. They refuse to trade with outsiders, but they will save anyone's life who's drowning or seems to be struggling in any way. The next group is called the Swimmers, and they have around 60 members, and literally they just teach people how to swim around the level. Like, that's it. The last group is called the Republic, and they live in the danger zone. They're armed, but they're friendly, and they'll protect you from any hostile entities that might be attacking. Speaking of entities, the entities here are the typical ones, like smilers, skin stealers, and wretches, but there's one more called the Glitchton, which is a really rare entity, but it's also very dangerous. They look like a humanoid skeleton, but they have neon bones, and also they have a metal arm. They're very aggressive when attacking, and their main threat that they cause is that they can hear very well, so if you're splashing around or whatever, they'll probably come to you. And they wear clothing that's been dipped in liquid silence, so you can't hear them, which is terrifyingly creepy. Like, imagine just being there, and turning around, 
and seeing a skeleton with a metal arm just standing right behind you. Creepy. To enter this level, you can noclip into level negative 33, or you can noclip into the bottom of an empty pool from level 823 if you want to come here. And to exit, you can find a cylinder stairway and walk up those stairs to be sent to level negative 33, or you can just noclip into any wall that you can in the safe zone area to be sent to level 7. Easy peasy. Alright, now that I've talked about the level itself, I want to show you this pool rooms found footage that was inspired by this level entry. The footage comes from a YouTuber named Jared Pike. It's a cool name because, you know, my name's Jared too. This footage is actually really cool and I recommend you go check it out for yourself if you want to watch the entire thing. But in the video, we can see the safe zone area with the white tiles and shallowish water. And we can also see the main room area with the platforms. We don't get any footage inside of the danger zone, but we can see the entrances to the danger zone where it starts to get dark. And you can tell that this footage was based off of the pictures from the Phantom's entry, which is always pretty cool. And uh, I think it's really dope. And you should definitely go check out Jared's channel because this found footage is really cool. And I don't know, it's something about this water liminal space in the back rooms that just seems cool. And seeing it, you know, brought to life in found footage form is just pretty dope. Backrooms level negative zero is classified as class pending, which pretty much means everything is unsecured and undetermined. It's thought to be the first negative level in the backrooms, and it looks like the regular level zero, except it's really glitchy and colorful. It pretty much has the same layout as the normal level zero. The colors on this level can be anything from bright pink to purple to black to complete white out areas where you can't even see anything because it's so white to completely glitched out areas. It really just depends on where you are. There aren't any documented entities here, and there are not any bases or outposts either. That's just like normal level zero. The only way to enter this glitchy level is by trying to noclip to the normal level zero from another level, and it'll put you here. But this only works on rare occasions, so don't go trying it. To exit the level, it says there isn't one, so good luck on that. Next up is Backrooms level negative 1, which is classified as class 2, so it's unsafe, but it has a low entity count. The level looks like an infinite white hallway with black doors on each side. Each of these doors leads to either level negative 2, level 0, the whiteouts, or level 2. When you're inside of level negative 1, you won't hear that annoying buzz from level 0. You'll actually hear a quiet piano music playing in the background. And no one knows where the sound comes from, and the sound never gets closer or farther away, no matter how deep you walk into the level. The biggest change you'll notice while walking deeper into the level is that your vision itself will start to glitch out, and it'll become staticky at random times. While this is happening, you'll start to hear random advertisements playing inside of your head, and these advertisements are retro ads from like the 1920s and 30s. And while you're in this state of mind, you'll be able to see these humanoid entities in old business outfits walking around the level. You couldn't see them before this happened, but you can see them when you're seeing the glitchy stuff. Although you won't be able to make out any details or anything, you'll just be able to see a humanoid shape with business clothes on. Now at this point in the level when you're starting to see this weird stuff, most people freak out and turn around and run back the other way. And when they do that, they run into an entity that only goes by one name, Nutricia. Or Nutricia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There's no information on this entity, and that's the only name we have for it, so. There are no bases here, and you can enter this level by breaking a wall on level 0. And to exit the level, you can just take one of those black doors that I mentioned earlier, and you can just open up the door and look in, and if it's a level you don't like, don't go there but it's recommended to try to go to a positive level. Level negative two is classified as a class four survival difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with a medium entity count. Also, sorry, my voice is kind of weird. My nose is stopped up. What's new? The entire area of level negative two is actually split between four different sub areas, which I'll explain in a second. The whole level is considered to be dangerous all the time because there are multiple undocumented hostile entities and multiple properties that are not understood about it all. And the level itself actually emits a really weird energy that attracts wanderers to it as soon as they get close to an entrance door to the level. It sort of lures them in. No one knows how or why this happens, so that's 
pretty creepy. Now I'm gonna get into the four different areas of the level. The first part is called the pool. This area is a huge flooded unfinished basement with wood pillars and support beams placed all around. There's also a bunch of pipes and vents on the walls and ceilings, and there's actually uncovered electrical wires that run across the walls as well. That's a recipe for disaster. The only light source in the area are these orange light bulbs on the roof that kind of emit a really calming glow. The water that's flooded this basement is actually almond water, but it's not even safe to drink because it's really high in dirt and iron content, and apparently there's like a harmful bacteria that lives in the water as well, so that's no fun. One of the weird things that happens in this section of the level is that sometimes you can get teleported from one spot in the water to another spot. Like you could just randomly be walking and then be teleported to a completely different hallway. Other than the teleporting though, and the other stuff I mentioned, nothing else has really been discovered about this area. And the only really weird thing, minus the flooded floors of course, is that all the hallways in this zone take only right turns, 90 degree angle turns to be exact. There's never a rounded turn or a hallway, and some of the halls themselves are so short and so skinny that you could get claustrophobia from it. So if you get claustrophobia, don't come here, and if you have hydrophobia and claustrophobia, definitely don't come here. How deep the water is literally changes all the time, so it's advised to be extremely cautious when you're walking around the level. The safest spots in this zone are always where those orange lights are glowing, because when you get there you can see and it's less dangerous, and when you escape that light area and it's all dark, wanderers have reported extreme paranoia. The water itself has had some weird occurrences too, like one time it apparently moved on its own and tried to talk to someone by spouting up water in the air, so the water might be sentient, we don't know. To get to the next zone that I'm about to talk about, you have to walk through the halls of the flooded zone and eventually they'll change into the next level and become less flooded gradually. However, in these halls, there's actually an entity called the Screamers that live here. They're tall humanoids that have no face except a huge mouth and literally all they do, their only purpose, is that they scream at the top of their lungs at wanderers and paralyze them with fear. The screams can only be heard by the wanderer that's being attacked though, so if you get screamed at, no one's gonna come to help you because they can't hear it. Okay. So if you make it past the screamers and the flooded claustrophobic hallways, the next part of the level is called the Hall of Dull Flames. And this is a huge expanse of baby blue concreted walls and ceilings with white carpet on the floor. This entire zone has these blue lanterns that emit this really weird blue light that basks the walls and the ceiling. Speaking of the walls, the walls themselves look like they're kind of vintage from the Victorian era specifically, and there's paintings on the walls from the 1600s. There's been a bunch of reports in this area actually about some weird sounds that happen, like a distorted piano playing Beethoven or the sounds of screaming. The main entities in these blue halls are actually skin stealers and screamers, of course. Not too bad. But in very rare cases, the blue lights here will turn red, which actually means that you should stop moving instantly until they turn blue again. Because if you keep walking when they're red, you'll literally and physically fade from existence. The next zone is called the Abyss. I wonder if it'll be scary or not. This area is a huge void type zone where everything surrounding you is pitch black except what's right in front of you. There are some weird structures in this zone too. Like there's entire pieces of furniture and kitchen appliances that are literally made from forks and knives and stuff like that, just kitchen utensils. And there's also this really faint ticking noise that can be heard wherever you are in the Abyss. And I guess I was wrong about this zone being scary, because it says right here on the wiki dot that the zone is actually safe. You love to see it. Most wanderers end up finding the exit to the entire level here in the abyss. So the areas past this zone are mostly undocumented, except for one, which I'll talk about now. The last zone is called the Kafkaski Maze. Kafkaski Maze? I think that's how you say it. This zone is a huge maze made out of big bushes with purple leaves. And there's actually a sky here, and it's bright blue with clouds, and the grass on the ground is also purple, just like the bushes. And there's these random statues of clocks around, but other than this, everything else about this zone is pretty much not known. And there's sometimes these random empty pedestals with no statues on top, and each of these pedestals has a bronze card on it that says the Shavik. No clue what that means, but 
I mean, it sounds pretty weird and creepy. I guess this zone is just a big area with purple bushes and grass and random statues of clocks. Pretty weird. So that's it for the documented zones of level negative two, and there aren't any bases in any of them, but apparently Meg is trying to set up a base in the abyss. To enter level negative two, you can enter any of the doors from level negative one, or you can noclip through a yellow wall on level 13 to be sent here. To exits, you can find a set of out of place stairs randomly around the level, and they'll take you to level 14, or you can just find the entrance to level negative three, which doesn't exist somehow, on any of the zones except for the pool. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative four, which is classified as a class undetermined because of some really weird and creepy mysterious properties that I'll get into in a second. Physically, it looks like a huge dark forest with literally no signs of human or animal life. Just a massive untamed forest, pretty much. Everyone who enters this level always enters from the exact same spot, which just so happens to be inside of a barn that's been randomly placed in the middle of the woods. And this is actually the only structure on this level. Now, other than what I just said, this level is pretty much undocumented, and it's kind of hard to travel in because the compasses you have and the flashlights you could use, they'll randomly break or stop working when you're out in the woods. So it's kind of like the level doesn't want to be explored. There aren't any outposts here, but there's been a bunch of attempts by Meg to start one up, and all of them have failed. These are pretty creepy, so watch out. The first attempt was called Outpost Charity, and it was founded a year after level negative four was discovered. It was located right next to that barn you spawn in at, and the group that made this outpost was five Meg volunteers, which were given two months of supplies up front. They were supposed to distribute these supplies evenly among each other, but when the second supply crate got there and was dropped off, the five members never came to get it, so Meg sent out a search team to find them. They found the members in a circle around the original rations crate, and they were all holding hands, and they were all unalived due to malnutrition. None of the rations inside of the supply crate were even touched. It was completely full, but for some reason they were all holding hands standing around it and weren't even alive. That's terrifying. The next failed outpost was called Outpost Burns, and this was created four months after that first incident. This one had three members who lived without issue for three months, but when the fourth month came along, all three people vanished from the camp area. The only evidence left behind was actually a picture taken by one of the members while they were still at camp, and on the back of the picture it was written in scribbly handwriting, going north, don't follow. None of the three people were ever found again. The third failed outpost is kind of lame. Pretty much it was four people who burned down their rations. Not gonna lie, that's kind of lame. Now the last failed outpost I'm going to talk about was called Outpost Red Forest. This actually was started by 13 people in a collaboration between Meg and the followers of Jerry. It was made right at the barn's entrance and it lasted a full 8 months before it fell. Out of all 13 members, only 3 survived and the ones that did survive have severe issues in their head right now. Apparently, the 10 that didn't make it were all unalived by an undocumented being called the Grey One. And just like the first time, these people were all in a circle holding hands inside of the barn. Not cool, bro. So if I had to guess, the entity that destroyed this outpost was also the same one that destroyed the first outpost as well. Kind of reminds me of the Blair Witch, though. If you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. To enter this weird level, you can walk through one of the doors on level negative one, which will put you back in that barn, and to exit, all you have to do is wander into the woods, and you'll randomly noclip back to level negative one, or on to level negative five, which I'll talk about in the next negative levels video. Level negative five is classified as a class zero, so it's safe and secure, with no entities. Well, kinda. Let's get a round of applause for a negative level being safe. Physically, the level looks like a huge field that's been covered in snow. And apparently this level actually isn't that big because if you walk out really far in any direction, you'll just be teleported right behind where you spawned in. Somewhere in the depths of this level, there's actually a really old looking World War II era concrete structure with a door on one side and a hole in the wall on the other side. This building just seems to be randomly put here, since it's the only real building here, and it's unknown why it's there. The only real threat to you here is the cold temperatures, but even hypothermia doesn't work like it does in real life here, and it only sets in at a lower temperature, and it takes longer to get to you. So as long as you've got something on, you should be good. 
If you look into that cutout hole I just talked about inside the concrete structure, you won't be able to see anything and it's been described as complete darkness. However, if you go in that door inside the structure I just talked about, you'll notice that the area after the door is very similar to the hallways in level negative two. Link to that explanation down below. And the only difference is instead of the lights being blue, they're red. And the halls themselves have small plaques on them that say New Year's 1945. Nice. The halls are supposedly infinite, but that's not confirmed. And these plaques are not the only things on the walls, and there are other things like World War II propaganda posters, not just ones from the USA or Japan, they're from other places too, like Britain and Germany. And all of the text on these posters are in their own native language. One thing that is noted about these posters is that the people on the posters have really unsettling smiles. Like, more unsettling than the thought of war. Kinda creepy. Really far into the halls, there's been some gas masks found on the floor, and they seem to be really old, but still functional, except none of them have any filters for some reason. Every seven days on this level, the sky fills with shadows of bomber planes from the World War II era. These planes are flying fast, and they're all in different layers, and there's so many of them that just hearing all the noise from them might cause you to go temporarily deaf if you don't plug your ears. They all fly in sort of a grid pattern, and they're literally just a few feet away from each other in the air. These planes also drop quote unquote bombs every few seconds, but these bombs don't actually hit the ground because they fade away right before they do, so they literally happen for no reason. It's still not determined if these planes should actually be categorized as an entity since they don't interact with people or cause any harm, so we don't know. The only danger that they even pose at all is the downdraft from all their wings Sometimes it can cause a blizzard, but other than that, they're pretty chill. And you can enter level negative five by walking really far into level negative four, and you can exit the level by following those red lit hallways until you find the entrance to level negative six. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative six, which is classified as a class three difficulty and isn't safe, but it does have a low entity count, relatively. This level looks like a really old mine shaft with some random entities in it every so often. The level is a very new discovery, so not many people have even been here, and the only people that have are a meg team that's currently trying to set up an operation here to study it more. Scattered around this mine, there are some random flashlights and spotlights and matches on the floor right as you get into the level, which is obviously useful since it's dark. And sometimes the lighting here can change drastically, but typically, the deeper you go into the mine, the darker it gets. So eventually you can go so deep that you literally can't see anything. When you first get here, the mine shaft will be really cramped and short, but as you go further down it, it'll eventually open up into bigger rooms and caves, and then eventually after that, you'll walk into these huge caverns and quarries that are really dark. Now these huge open areas are really dangerous since you can't see anything, and the entities here will depend on how deep you go in. At the start of the mine, you can run into Reviooks, Bursters, and Wranglers, but when you get deeper and deeper into the caves, the creatures that are there are not even documented, so that's kind of spooky. And at a certain point, the mineshaft just stops, and there's only huge caverns like I said, and this area is called the Game Over area. And it's really dangerous, and the only entity there is the Scumparsa, which looks like a giant pterodactyl or a Quetzal, kinda. If you played Ark, you know what I'm talking about. They fly and hunt using echolocation, and they have this terrifying shriek when they do that. So if you're walking down the huge cavern and you hear a shriek, you're probably not gonna make it. And no one knows what's past this huge cavernous area. There are actually two bases here. One of them is the Meg Outpost Blinding Dark, which is located just 300 feet into the level, and they got about 15 members. The other outpost is a really interesting one. It's called the Prophets, and they claim to be the original people who lived here. And they're all completely blind since they've been in the dark for so long. And there's around 30 of them, and they're relatively passive, but don't push their buttons, you know? To enter this level, well, there's no really solid way the Meg team entered by just walking deep into those hallways at level negative five, so that's the only way discovered as of now. And there's no discovered exit, but it's theorized that the exit is past that game over cavernous area, but I'm not gonna be the one sent there to try to find it out. <laughs> 
So Backroom's level ASCII code is classified as Class Astral because the level involves being in space with aliens. Uh, let me explain. The level is a very rare level to get to and it's not even known if it's a level per se because you can only get to it directly from reality. So instead of no clipping into level zero, like someone normally would when they get sent to the back rooms, you can instead be sent here. This entire level takes place on some sort of advanced alien aircraft. Now this aircraft has shiny clean hallways and huge labs and stuff like that, and big computer panels and buttons and stuff. You know the deal. The only problem is, it seems like it's not part of the backrooms and that you're not supposed to be here. And let me tell you why. So our basic understanding of the backrooms is that you can glitch out of the real world and be sent to the infinite landscape, which is the backrooms. But apparently, some other force has tapped into this no clipping ability, and that force is the greys, or more commonly known as aliens. Somehow, some way, they have figured out how to harness whatever wormhole technology teleports people normally to the back rooms and they made it so you'll get teleported to their spacecraft instead of level zero it's unknown if the aliens created the back rooms or if they simply just have a better understanding of it than we do uh, but either way they can manipulate where you're going so if you are unlucky enough to get sent here you'll be greeted with empty shiny halls large laboratories and observation rooms and thousands of pods with animals and people inside of them the people seem to be suspended in some sort of liquid, and the animals are frozen in tanks. All of the technology and languages seem to be very advanced compared to anything we have. The craft also seems unmanned and has no aliens on board. And it looks like everything's fully automated and it doesn't require a physical person to work. When you wake up from no clipping out of reality, you'll be inside of this lab. Now this lab is empty except for one robotic arm that's hovering above you. This arm seems to be studying you and taking measurements of your height and weight and so on. Now you can leave the lab and walk around the entire spacecraft with no issue, but seeing some of the humans and animals and tanks might cause you to be spooked out or even give you anxiety. Or who knows, maybe the fact that you're in space or that you just no clipped and glitched out of your reality. That might give you anxiety too. I don't know. The main room on this ship is where the biggest control panel panel is, and the biggest glass windshield of the craft is there too. This room has thousands of buttons and knobs that you can press, but there are two that stand out. One button is red and one is green, and these buttons are obvious and you can't miss them. They're also glowing. It's unknown what happens when you press the green button and no one knows where it takes you, because all contact with the person who has pressed it has been lost. But if you do press the red button, you will instantly be knocked out and fully unconscious for an unknown amount of time. When you wake up from being knocked out, you'll be in your own room in the real world. Yes, your own room. This is not a joke or prank. This is the real life. You'll be in your room. But you will feel very strange, almost like you just gained a huge amount of knowledge. And that's when it starts. Out of nowhere, you'll have the sudden urge to find a piece of paper and start writing down a series of squares and lines as well as zeros and ones. You'll write this code for two to three pages until you stop. And then you'll feel normal again, although you'll be shaken up from the experience. This is what the code looks like when you're done. Now, if you're smart, you recognize that this is the ASCII binary code, and it translates as follows, quote, Imminent threat soon upon Earth's leaders and civilizations. Expose and disband hidden knowledge to all citizens. Employ safe and controlled joint study to all minds. Progression imperative for combined survival, end quote. Now this has happened to three different people so far, and each of them has written the exact same thing in ASCII code once they wake up. No one knows what it means, no one knows the implication, it could be that the aliens are trying to contact us in some way or trying to warn us, and they thought the easiest way would be taking people from our reality and telling them to write this code down, or maybe they thought that we could do something about it, I don't know but they might be trying to warn us or it could be something else entirely. The reason this is considered a backrooms level because it is accessed by no clipping out of reality, just like the backrooms is, so it's assumed that it's tied to that somehow. Now, people that get sent to this alien level
people have no contact with Meg or any other backrooms related officials. And the only reason we know about them glitching there is because when they get back to reality, they tell the same story to military officials that they were just walking along and they glitched through the ground and ended up here, which we just so happen to know is the exact same technology that leads people to the backrooms. Like I said, as of right now, we have no idea if this is a backrooms level or something else entirely, but it is cryptic and it is crazy and you know clip there. So we're going to call it a backroom. The level is called level 922-337203-685-477-5810. Yes, that is a really long number, but the shorter name is level memories. That's the level name, and it is classified as a class undetermined due to a bunch of mysterious properties, unknown information, and undocumented entities. Now, if you remember that video that I posted eight months ago called The End, well, that level was supposed to be the very last level of the backrooms because it was the signed 64-bit integer number and it seemed like nothing could be found past it because it's an infinite staircase and no one knew what was after but this level was found recently and it pretty much proves all of that wrong level memories is some kind of a mishmash backrooms level museum it's made up of a bunch of different rooms or exhibits that all look like different parts of different backrooms levels so one room Room could look like level zero and the one next to it could look like level seven or level 999 it's whatever very interesting there are also rooms for levels that have been classified as negative levels or sub levels which means that every single possibility can be seen here there's also a ton of different entities here but they're all in exhibits or cages for the most part you know kind of like cavemen from real life museums and stuff like that and because of this layout the level has also been nicknamed like I said earlier the back rooms museum. Not all the entities are in cages, and every once in a while you'll run into an entity that's just wandering around, and these are very dangerous because they're the most dangerous versions of that entity. So if you see a wretch or something just walking around, we'll run away because they'll chase you until they get you. The rooms or exhibits that are made up of different levels also have entities that are common in those levels. So if there's a level 7 room, then there's going to be the thing on level 7 entity there or if there's a level 5 room there's going to be the beast of level 5 on the paintings in there this level is also hypothesized to be the actual back rooms exit to the front rooms or real life and there's actually an exhibit room with a floating earth in the very center of it and around the earth is stuff that's from real life like beaches and birds and that kind of stuff it's like an earth exhibit and supposedly if you touch that floating earth in the center of the room then you'll wake up in real life and all of the stuff that you experience in the back rooms will just feel like a dream. Now, the hard part is actually finding the earth exhibit room because there's literally rooms for each level of the back rooms and since no one knows how big the back rooms is or if there's even a cap on how big it can be, no one knows where the front rooms will fall in this. But if you do manage to find it, I guess congrats on escaping. Also, since this is the hypothetical real back rooms exit, maybe the other back rooms exits that I've talked about have not been real exits exits and have been fake exits. Who knows? I mean, this also might be a fake exit. No one knows. Let's be real. There's not even a real exit. You're trapped here forever. As far as groups or colonies goes, there is a small one here called the Guiders, and they try to help people make it to that Earthroom exhibit to exit, and they'll show you around the level to the different exhibits if you want to go to a certain level. To enter this giant Backrooms Museum level, you have to be on the level before this and face your biggest fear that's behind the door at the end of the hallway on that level. If you you can make it through that fear and are mentally and physically intact then you'll wake up here in the backrooms museum and so far that is the only way possible to enter this level to leave you can no clip into the corner of any of the level exhibits that you want to go to you know if you roll past level 450 you just walk into the exhibit and no clip in there and you'll be sent there or you can walk around until you find the reality room with the floating earth in the middle and touch it and you'll be sent to real life which honestly i think is a pretty cool exit you know, it's hard to get to, it's rare, and it might lead to reality. But who knows? It might be fake. And it might send you somewhere else. No one will ever know. So yeah, that was the backroom.
backrooms level memories or the backrooms museum. I think it was a pretty cool concept to have a place where you can see all of the backrooms levels kind of like their displays at a museum or exhibits at a museum. I think it's pretty neat. And I also like the fact that there might be an exit here. I think it makes it even cooler. Backrooms level the barrier is classified as a class undetermined because, to be honest with you, not much is known about it. It seems safe, but it almost has no information about it at all. When or if you go to this level, you will wake up in a grass field outside of a tree line. The field is full of rolling little hills and lush grass, and these hills and grasses lead into a big, thick, dense population of woods. This wooded area has lakes and abandoned cabins and all sorts of different types of trees in it. It kind of gives you a sense of nostalgia because it feels almost like the woods from reality, our earth. The liquid in the lakes doesn't seem to be water, which is weird, but it is drinkable, and there's even been fish seen swimming in it. So I guess you can get in it if you want to. Also, it's pretty weird that fish are in lakes here because normally bodies of water in the back rooms are empty. So that might mean this is somehow aligned with earth. The cabins I mentioned earlier are abandoned, but as far as we know, they're safe to go into. Inside of the cabins, you'll notice that they're just like Earth's. Most of them have a small kitchen area and a bedroom slash living area together as well. Sometimes though, people have been seen walking into the cabins and never coming out. It's thought that when this happens, the person is likely sent to level negative 188, so watch out for that. But again, inside of the cabins feels like home. It feels like you're in an earth cabin. And to add to that feeling, every once in a while, you'll see a wild animal running through the woods. And these animals aren't just any backrooms creature though, they're animals from from real life, like completely normal ones. Deer, bear, moose, literally like real creatures, real creatures from Earth. Except these creatures aren't aggressive, they're more docile and friendly. But between the relaxing feelings of the woods and the home feeling of the cabins and the exact animals from real life, you might get the sense that this level is connected to Earth somehow some way because so far it feels like you're just there already now there are some other weird things that happen in the barrier level as well like sometimes it'll just completely downpour the rain here and the rain itself will cause the sky and the air to turn different colors and to swirl together the rain also changes the barriers temperature drastically which is pretty weird because it doesn't happen to that extent in real life there are some other weird things that happen here as well. One of those weird things is actually how you get to this level. If you notice at the beginning, I didn't say when you get here, I said if you get here, because barely anybody can. To get to this level, it is done by following a glint in the sky for weeks on end. Now, a glint is like a light or a shining, blinking thing. The glint can appear in any level, and it can be seen when traversing or going between different levels as well. It sort of calls you to it and draws you in, and you know you're supposed to be following it. You just know you have that feeling. However, this glint does not appear to everyone, and evidently, only a few people can even see it. And even out of those few people who can see it, almost none of them make the full journey to the barrier level and they end up giving up or perishing along the way. Sometimes a person could have followed the glint in the sky for weeks and then randomly lost it and they were forced to stop. But for the very few who have made it to the barrier, they saw the level I just described. Rolling fields leading into woods dotted with cabins. Now this is where it gets tricky. It's thought that if you go deep into the woods, there is supposedly a massive tower placed there. It's been nicknamed the viewing point, and there is no known purpose for it other than just to be weird. But it's somewhere past that tower where there's supposed to be a location to get back to Earth. 
Now, the exact possible location for this quote-unquote portal to reality has not been found. Like I said earlier, no one knows if it actually exists or if it's just folklore or made up or whatever, but people have been seen going into the woods and have never been heard from, seen, smelt, or anything again. So they have to go somewhere, right? I mean, they're not just walking off the face of the earth, or are they? People think since this level is so similar to how reality looks that it itself is some kind of gateway, like the woods itself itself will eventually transition over to the woods from earth i mean the wilderness the cabins the animals they're all like the ones on earth and even the air feels the same what do you think do you get back to reality by wandering deeply into the woods or do you end up like the nameless people who have walked in and have never walked out there's thought to be one colony outpost in the barrier, but the people who are a part of it, uh, they don't talk, <laughs> and they don't even open their mouths at all. No one knows why, but they could be hiding some kind of secret. To enter this level, you have to be one of the lucky few to have seen the light in the sky and then follow it until you get here. Now, if you truly see the light, then it'll only take you to the levels that take place outside for an unknown amount of time until you make it to the barrier. To exit the barrier, you can walk into the woods for a very, very, very low chance of being sent to reality, if that's even how it works. <laughs> we still don't know. It's just heavily speculated that that's how it would work. Or you can walk into a cabin and be sent to level negative 188. Or you can just sometimes randomly get sent wherever the level chooses. It almost seems like the level has some sort of brain or consciousness because it chooses who gets led here and it chooses who gets sent out or not. What do you think? Do you think the woods of the level eventually fade into a forest from Earth? And if you walk deep enough into them, will you just walk into a national park or a forest? Or do you think that it's not a real exit and the back rooms or something or someone lures people deep into this level for evil reasons? Let me know in the comments down below. The Promised Land is classified as a Class Zero and is extremely safe and secure, and it actually used to be considered a level only in legends or tales because no one actually knew if it existed or not. But now it's been pretty much explored extensively, so most of the level is documented. The level itself is a huge building with exactly 300 floors and around 1,000 rooms that are spread throughout. And each floor has these pink glowing lights in the ceilings, which would drive me crazy to be honest, but whatever. These lights have been known to randomly turn on or off, so just be aware of that. And all the floors have windows that look out to the outside area, and when it turns daylight outside, the curtains and the windows will disappear, and a floor made out of clouds will appear directly outside the window. Kind of like the floor of level Zenith. This cloud floor actually has these trees that grows in the ground and they produce a weird fruit, which you can actually eat. The day night cycle here is pretty much the same as real life. So the windows disappear during the day, but they'll reappear at nighttime. I mentioned earlier that there are over 1000 room types. So here are some of them. There are bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bathrooms, infirmaries, lounges, shops, an outside area, nightclub area, the business area, and the promised land resort. Each of these areas are pretty much exactly how their name sounds, so I'm not going to describe them. Like, the bedrooms, the bedrooms, the dining rooms, the dining rooms, it's pretty simple. Now a common question asked is, well, where did the promised land come from, or how did it get figured out? Well, according to the fandom, the level's first ever mention was found on a note in level zero near a ripped partygoer's mask. The note said, quote, the last of us are here, and there was a picture of the promised land level next to it. Now, nearby that note, there was a book called the promised land that pretty much had all of the level's explanation inside of it. Obviously, the level is really chill, and as soon as the book was read, rumors of this sanctuary level spread quickly throughout the back rooms. So lots of people tried to get there, but very few did. There are only two entities here, and those are the cloud trees, which I mentioned earlier, and storks, which are pretty much storks from real life, except they're more intelligent and tameable. As far as bases here, there are actually a few. 
The first one is the Backrooms Colonists, which is just a conglomerate of colonies that are loosely linked together. Then there are the Forgiven FOJs, which is a group of the followers of Jerry that somehow got to the level. And as always, they're nice unless you talk trash about Jerry. Lastly, there is the Reliquay Outpost, not sure if that's how you pronounce it, which is just an outpost of soldiers that fought in a war that actually happened on this level a long time ago called the Summer War. To enter this level, you can dive through a painting on level 384, but just like all of the entrances I'm about to say, it's extremely rare for them to work. And there's also a rumor that no clipping into a pink light on level negative 150 will work, but again, just a rumor. It's thought that you can also fall down stairs on that big long numbered level that I went over a few months ago to get here. But as always, you just gotta get lucky. To exit this level, you'll actually be exiting the back rooms, so you just gotta find a door labeled exit, and when you walk through that door, you'll be at the same place where you entered the back rooms from. Pretty cool. This might be one of my favorite theorized exits because it's literally so rare. I feel like it's kind of a myth in a way, you know? Pretty cool. Now, unlike most other levels I've covered, there's actually been some documented expeditions to try to find how to get here. There are six expeditions, and the first one was made by four members of the Republic back in 2004. They were sent back to level zero after making it to level 1051. Now, the second and third expeditions were not documented, but the fourth one was. This one was made by seven people from the Backrooms Colonist Group. It happened last year in 2021, and this is marked as the first conclusive successful mission to get to the Promised Land. Because when the group made it to level 384, where that painting is, which by the way is an extremely safe level, a member of the group disappeared. And it's thought that they went through the painting and made it to the Promised Land, and feasibly out of the back rooms. The fifth expedition had five more explorers, no clip into the painting on level 384, and they haven't been heard from since. So it's just thought they either made it, or they're somewhere else. The last expedition had 17 explorers, and it's officially known that four of them are currently in the Promised Land and have not escaped the backrooms. So Backrooms level 710, or Ring and Ruin, is a newly found level. It's classified as a class undetermined since it's pretty new and because several of the properties here are extremely mysterious and not really understood at all. The level entry starts with a quote from a wanderer named Amy. Quote, I opened my eyes to see a hound, so close that I could taste its hot breath. Foul saliva drips from those deadly fangs. A hunting knife materializes in my right hand. I know this place keeps the hounds from hurting me. It is as terrified as I am, poor thing. It disappears, and the knife becomes a chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, off the bat, this level is already showing some weird properties. Level Description The level is made up of two distinct areas. The first is a silvery ring that's floating in the sky. The second is the ground under this ring with some ruins and an archway. And you'll want to hear what those things are all about in a second. So the silver ring floats horizontally in the sky, directly above those ruins on the ground. It never moves position and never goes up or down, but it's absolutely massive and is around 400 feet in diameter, which is the distance from one side of the ring to the other, and 400 feet is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty, so that kind of gives you a gauge on how big this thing is. There's no visible propulsion system or way that it's holding itself up there in the sky, so it's a complete mystery how it floats, although it might be a supernatural intelligence that keeps it up there. The ring interacts with one person at a time on the level, and that person is seemingly chosen from any other backrooms level to be sent to the ring randomly. Like they could just be walking on any level and get no clipped to this ring inside of it. And that person will be stuck inside the ring anywhere from 3 days to 23 days before they returned. So the inside of the ring is just a large hallway, and that Amy person from earlier was sent here for 20 days and was able to remember some of what it was like. She says the ring has no doors from the inside, only four distinct windows on each cardinal point. So like north, south, east, west, like a compass. 
Each of these four windows has a little room next to it with different purposes. The room by the north window has a desk and a chair in it with paper and pencil. The east window has almond water and food there. The south window is a bedroom. And the west window has a room next to it with a very small box inside that each person has to put a personal item in as sort of a sacrifice, apparently. When you're here, you're motivated to do certain things from this gut feeling that the level gives you. The ring itself seems to be alive in some way because it communicates with people on an intellectual level. It doesn't use language or signals, it just gives these people the feelings or the instincts to go do things. So for example, it could give a person the instinct to go to the south room or the north room. The ring itself seems to be like some kind of observation and evaluation structure that literally has the sole goal of studying humans to see how they interact with certain stimuli like those four different rooms. It's also thought that the ring was put here by maybe a higher power or an artificial intelligence because of how futuristic the technology is. Summary of the ring. So pretty much to summarize what I just said, the ring is a circular hallway with four rooms and each room has different things in it. The ring itself interacts with each person that goes there through instinctual brain waves. And it's almost as if it's observing how humans respond to stimulus. Sometimes this ring intelligence will even put entities or pictures of different backrooms levels in the hallways to see how people will react to them. Even though nothing will actually hurt you, they're just put there to see how you interact and change based off of what it shows you. It's kind of like a science experiment, and the humans are the test subjects. You know, you've seen those things with the rats in the mazes. That's kind of like what this is. But who's the scientist and who's studying us? No one knows. The ruins. On the ground under this ring is a circle of earth with no vegetation. This circle is 1,320 feet in diameter. And in the middle of it, there's this huge archway called the Harbinger Arch, along with some other stones standing up beside it. No one knows how this got here, who built it, or what it actually means, but it's thought that this archway is a portal to different realms. And maybe even, just maybe, a true exit to the back rooms. Sometimes, if you look through the arch, you can actually see into different realities, even outside of the back rooms or the front rooms. These are completely different universes. And sometimes you can look through and see the real Earth. People have been witnessed walking under the arch and into it, and never walking out on the other side, so it definitely does lead somewhere, but no one knows where or if it's trustworthy to go into. The arch and the ruins are kind of treated as some kind of spiritual thing in the back rooms, and you get the vibe that they're sacred. After these ruins were discovered, other things that had been discovered previously in the back rooms kind of started to make more sense. Like there's these small carvings in wood and stone circulating through the back rooms in the shape of arches or rinks. Or there's whispers floating about of a so-called pilgrim's path being talked about in notes on the walls and in carvings. Either way, the ring and its intelligence and the archway and the ruins with their supernatural and interdimensional powers are some of the most unique things in all of the back rooms it seems. So level 922-337-203-685-4775-807 is the signed 64-bit integer limit on a computer in real life. And that same number just so happens to be the supposed highest backrooms level and the most dangerous level in existence. Lots of people think that the backrooms go on for an eternity, but people who know about this level know that they do not go on forever. The entities that have been able to get to this level have not been able to get any further for thousands of years. And this level is not only extremely dangerous, but it's also extremely hard to enter. I don't know why you'd want to, but we'll talk about that later. The only description available of this level is that it's a simple, cold, brutal staircase that goes on for seemingly an infinite amount, up and down. The color of the staircase is said to be indescribable either a black-white color, which yes, that's a juxtaposition, yet at the same time, it's devoid of color. And if you look at the stairs for too long, 
It'll make your eyes teary because of the lack of color and your brain can't comprehend it. You can't even feel your weight on this level, which allows you to walk up the stairs for an infinite amount of time. There is no known level above this level and the stairs continue for what is theorized as billions of miles in each direction. And as far as entrances and exits go, there are only two possible ways to get into this level. Both of these are just hypothesized, they're not for sure. The first one is that there is another level called the end, and it's that library room I talked about in my Liminal Spaces Iceberg video. And that level is a fake end, and it's actually a decoy for this level. And some think that there is a secret entrance among all the books to the real end, this level. The other entrance is theorized to be on level, oh, another big long number, 344-1684-1123-1509-8764-90285. It said that there is an extremely rare chance of that level leading to this level. And as far as exits, there are only theorized ones as well. For example, some think if you climb 5,000 stairs exactly and then jump over the rail into the middle, this will send you back to reality. And some people think if you climb just 85 stairs and then jump off into the middle, this will take you to level question mark, question mark, question mark. This is an unknown level full of skin stealers, hounds, and as well as insanities. And level question mark, question mark, question mark has no known escapes, so don't even try to go there. Your best bet is to try to climb 5,000 stairs to get back to reality, but no one even knows if that works or not. There's another level that is numbered the exact same as this one, except it's negative 922337203685477807. And this is theorized by some to be the furthest down you can go in the back rooms. While the positive version of this number is the highest you can go, the negative is the furthest down you can go. This negative version is known to be an infinite void of glitches. The walls, the ceilings, the floors, the air, everything is glitched and lines of code fly through the air and roll on the walls around everything. If you for some reason go to this level, you will cease to exist as you know it because your brain won't be able to comprehend the glitches. You're left alone with all your memories and the constant buzzing and glitching noises and this will drive you to insanity. Unlike the positive version of this number, there is no known way to get into the negative version. So how about don't even try? So to do a quick recap. The supposed highest level of the back rooms is level 922337203685477587807 and is apparently an infinite staircase that goes up and down with only two theorized exits. And the supposed lowest level of the back rooms is the exact same number but negative and it's an infinite void of glitches and lines of code. Both sound pretty fun to me. So in the fandom universe, the way out is widely accepted as the backroom's exit. The physical way out will appear to each person differently, but no matter what form it takes, it will always be surrounded with this intense yellow light. Nice. The way out typically appears randomly on any level of the backrooms and is extremely rare, obviously, pretty much to the point where it's almost impossible to appear. So far, only one confirmed person has even escaped through this exit. Reddit user Enigmatic Eva. That's according to the fandom, not me. It's also important to note that the way out leads to a random place in reality. So you'll have no idea where you are, unless you just know geography, I guess. There is one small issue with this exit though, and that's when you go through it, you'll temporarily be in this weird position where you're not in actual reality, but you're kind of in reality. For example, the person that I mentioned earlier, Enigmatic Eva, that has supposedly exited the back rooms, says that there were some anomalies when they went through the exit. To start with, there was an insane amount of security cameras everywhere Eva exited, or that they still heard the buzzing noise from the back rooms in her head, and there wasn't any life in this reality. There was no people, no cars, no animals, nothing like that. Enigmatic Enigmatic Eva did continuously mention a weird creature that she only referred to as, quote, them in their Reddit thread, and that it was hostile and creepy. So that's really weird. When Eva went through the way out, she ended up in London, but she lived before she went to the backrooms in the United States. So that made Eva think that the backrooms is somehow connected and intertwined with our reality. So like you can physically travel around the world to different places, but you just don't know it. Nice. Soon after Eva recounted those weird things in her Reddit posts, her replies started to not make any sense but her Reddit history did seem like she's living a normal life, so it really seems like when the person exits the backrooms through the way out, the real world and the backrooms sort of overlap temporarily and blend together until it slowly fixes itself and puts you back in your real world. 
Nice. So to summarize, the fandom posits that the way out is an exit that can appear on any level of the back rooms. It can appear in any form, but in this case, it was a staircase. See what I did there? And every time it appears, it's got a bright yellow light that is flashing and strobing inside of it. If you go through the gateway, you'll be in some sort of in-between state between reality and the back rooms until eventually reality will go back to normal and you'll be back to how your old life was. Nice. It's got a survival difficulty of zero, and it looks like an infinite arcade. This arcade looks like it's from real life, but it's obviously not, it's in the back rooms. The outside of the place looks normal. You can see cars and trees and streetlights, just basic outside stuff. Only problem is you can't get out there until you've done a few things, which we'll talk about later. The arcade games here are not like retro arcade games like you're probably thinking. They're actually games from real life, like Minecraft, Terraria, Roblox, you know, that kind of stuff. Call of Duty even. And the machines are known to induce this really relaxing effect on you. And this effect can actually increase your sanity if you've lost any, so nice. nice. They also induce feelings of normalcy, obviously, because they're from real life. And anything from real life in the back rooms will induce comfort and normalcy. The only downside to playing these games is if you have rage issues, because if you hit the machines or if you break something, you'll instantly faint. And every time you do that, again, you'll faint over and over again. So don't do that. There's hardly ever anyone here though, except in the colonies that I'll talk about later. That aspect alone can make people kind of uneasy about this level because it's just a huge, infinite, empty arcade. Sometimes though, these weird meteorites fall from the ceiling inside of the building, but they don't do any damage to the machines or the floors, the ceilings or anything, which leads people to believe that they're just an illusion caused by the lights on the level, which is kind of weird, but... What in the back rooms isn't weird. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can indeed get back to the front rooms or reality from this level. But to do so, you kind of have to complete a checklist, kind of like the 13 tasks Hercules had before he could, you know, become what he was. These things can last anywhere from four minutes to 12 years. And the longevity of the task depends on how hard it is. They can be anything from slaying an entity or a creature to eating a certain amount of food or drinking a certain amount of water. It really just depends. If you don't complete the tasks that you've been given, you'll either be unalived or you'll be condemned to stay in the back rooms forever and never escape. Nice. To get one of these checklists, you have to walk towards the sunset on this level, which I guess you can see through the glass panes in the windows, for an unknown amount of time. And then you'll be given a checklist in an unknown way. I really like the details here. But yeah, after you walk towards the sunset and get your checklist, you'll have it, and then you'll have to start completing your task. There doesn't seem to be a correlation on why these tasks are given to certain people, or why some of them are a lot harder than other ones, but it is what it is. If you do complete your tasks, the glass doors to the level will be opened up, and you can walk out, and you can go back to reality through those doors. There are actually a couple colonies here, like the Backrooms Colonist and Cafe Studio 521. Now these areas are just kind of chill, relaxing, eatery kind of areas that are on the level, and these are really the only people that are here at one time. Other than that, there aren't really many wanderers here because they're out completing their tasks that they've been given by the level. The next colony is the waiters. These are the people who help you learn how to use the arcades and stuff like that. The last colony is called the Front Rooms Organization, and this is a really weird, mysterious outpost that not really many people know about. They lead people to glass doors to escape the back rooms, but again, it's unknown how that works. But it is known that they're there. Now I'm sure you've all been waiting on how to enter this level, and you can enter this level by running trueend.exe on the computer from the end level. Or you can even get here by glitching through a purple glitchy wall on level 11, which that would be really easy. You'd have to be really lucky to get that one. There's also like nine other ways to enter, but these ones are the coolest ones. There are other ways to enter the level, <laughs> but the level 11 one is pretty much the easiest, and the running the trueend.exe file is also easiest. To exit, you can complete your given tasks and be freed from the back rooms by walking out the glass doors on the level, or you can fail your given tasks and be condemned to wander the back rooms for an eternity. There are other ways to exit the specific level of level 3099, but who cares about those? We're talking about how to leave the back rooms here. First up for the video is level vibe from the wiki dot. Level vibe is classified as a class vibe and is chillin', daydreaming, and what the kids would call 
a mood. <laughs> the level itself is simply the coolest level to ever exist. It physically looks like a world of daydreams, and every daydream that's ever been thought of appears here. Anything can happen. If you want to be a cat and ride a paper airplane through the mountains, uh, sure, go for it. Do you want to live here? No, kind of, yeah. People who get sent to the vibe rooms will be able to explore this beautiful holographic terrain and can ride the ocean waves on the mood beach. And they can explore mountains as well, which just so happen to be erupting with pure nostalgia. <laughs> Dude, like, what? Pretty much this level is a huge, crazy trip where you can just chill out, vibe, relax, and anything can happen. And there won't be a wretch chasing you. There is one base here, and it's for all those who want to chill. And to enter this level, you gotta look into your own mind, and you might find it. Thanks for these specific instructions, dude. I really appreciate it. And to exit, you have to refuse the vibe. That's it. But why would you want to refuse it? Next for the video is from you underscore on Discord, and the level is called the Moai Rooms. This level has a survival difficulty of class dead zone, and you probably shouldn't come here at all unless you want to unalive. The Moya rooms look very similar to level 0, but instead of an empty yellow wasteland, the whole thing is filled up with Moyai statues. These statues can see every move you make, and if you make any specific sudden or quick movements, you're gonna not make it out of here. Because if you do that, these statues will surround you. Like, every single statue in this level will make this huge circle around you, and they'll repeatedly then dive on top of you until you're flat as a pancake. Cool. Then you'll be turned into one of these statues yourself and join the army. And the only way to safely make it through the level without being absolutely obliterated is to either crawl or rub your entire body in vanilla perfume. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is nice though. If you're wearing a hat when you get attacked and turned into a statue, then your statue will also have a hat. How thoughtful. To enter this level, you have to find a chocolate Moyai statue and eat it. Because I'm sure those are totally common, you know, in the back rooms. And you have to do the same thing to exit. Because apparently, there's going to be a few randomly scattered in this level. But personally, my advice is to avoid this place unless you like getting pummeled by giant statues. Next for the video is the level from the Wikidot called The Back Room. This level has a survival difficulty of 1 and is back room. <laughs> My humor is broken. There are many rooms. Out of all rooms, this is one of them. <laughs> Thanks for that, dude. I appreciate it. As far as the level description, the room itself looks like a large white room with a window, chair, and a fan, as well as a door. Oh, so it's just a normal room. Cool. For bases and outposts, many people have entered the room, and we don't know where they are. There's also an interview section here, and it reads as follows. The interviewer asks, is this a room? And the room man says, yes. And that's, that's it. That's literally it. The entrance to this level is door. And the exit to this level is also door. How does this level have 118 upvotes, dude? What? Lastly, for this incredible masterpiece of a video that is probably the best video I've ever uploaded, is from Dank on Discord, and it's called Level Banana. This level has a survival difficulty of gentle minions. Of course it does. And it's friendly, grulicious, and bellow, which is how minions say hello. The level looks like a huge infinite scape of yellow halls and floors. Much like level zero, except even more yellow somehow. And there's a constant smell of bananas wafting throughout the halls. On top of that, there's actual bananas on the floor in some places. The only entities here, of course, are minions. Except they look slightly different and more gross. They're not cute or nice either. Because if you get seen with a banana in your hand, these things will swarm you and like attack you until you give it back. Fun times. And the only outpost here is of course the gentle minions. And to enter, you have to hold a banana on any level and say bellow in a minion's voice three times and you'll just be sitting here. But honestly, I'm trying to avoid an army of these things swarming me, so I think I'm gonna pass on this level. 
Level 69 looks like a dark and empty, infinite highway that has fog rolling at all times. Each side of the highway has massive concrete walls that seem to be infinite in height. And there's literally nothing else here. Like, that's it. The level is apparently so dangerous that you have to stay in the car when you spawn in. When you spawn in on this level, you'll spawn in in the car that you passed out in, in level 3 to get here. That's the entrance to this level, more on that later. But if you stay in this car, you'll pretty much be safe. But if you leave the car, it's dangerous. Level 69 has a very low visibility because of the fog and the darkness that's on the level since it's constantly nighttime. In order to see anything at all, you have to use either the headlights from the car or a flashlight or something. This level is pretty unique because there are specific ways that you need to navigate it. And the start of the level is pretty much the same for everyone across the board because you wake up in the car that you passed out in from level 3. Even if you somehow get here without passing out in a car on level 3, you'll still wake up up inside of a random car whenever you enter the level but whatever you do like i said do not leave the car since you know it's dangerous and stuff the fog and the entities that live here seem to be kind of scared of cars except for one entity so it's pretty much a good way to scare off things if you just stay in your car and keep driving now your car itself might have broken glass or broken ac or something like that it's really just depending on the look of the person there so if you have bad luck, then you might have car problems, and if you have good luck, you won't. Driving this car physically is pretty much just like driving a car from real life, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You also don't have to worry about running out of gas, because these cars don't even have fuel tanks. Nice! So you can go full speed for as long as you want, since there's really nothing in the road, and you can just fly down the road at max speed. But there is always a risk of crashing into an entity or something like that. So pretty much you can either drive slow and waste a bunch of time, or you can drive really fast with a chance of perishing. So pick your poison. There are also hardly any supplies on this level, so the goal is to leave as soon as possible so you don't starve. The main normal entities here are smilers and wretches, which are extremely hostile on this level because they don't have anything else to eat. So when they see you, they, you know, they start drooling and get really aggressive. Wretches are considered to be extremely dangerous here because they can break into your car if you're parked or something like that, or if you crash into one, it could cause your car to fly out the road into the concrete wall. Just try to avoid them. Like imagine sitting in your car and trying to take a nap and then you wake up and see one of these things. Nice. Now this level also has a level exclusive entity called the Beans from Above. These are very mysterious and dangerous and they're pretty much one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that you should not get out of your car. Their exact body description isn't known, but their legs, or arms, look like spider legs or crab legs. You can't see them from the ground, obviously, because you'll be in a car. But if you were to get out of your car, a leg might fly down from above and spear right through you, and then pick you up and carry you up into the darkness. It's kind of like that thing from King Kong, if you've seen that movie. There's only been a handful of survivors from an attack, and they say that the legs feel cold, slick, and completely solid. Oh yeah, and these entities literally cannot be taken down at all. People have tried bullets, explosions, knives, nothing works on them, so. This level also has a weird phenomena that happens called the Whispers. Now this might be an entity or just a weird occurrence that happens here, but pretty much there are these negative thoughts that go through your brain while you're on the level and they try to break down your mental health. So watch out for that, I guess. The easiest and most common way to enter this level is to pass out in a car on level 3 and you'll just wake up here. To exit the level, it's pretty simple. You just have to drive really far on the road and eventually you'll run across a tunnel that's carved into one of the sides of the concrete walls. Now you want to make sure you're either on the right or left side of the road because if you're in the middle, there's a chance you might miss this tunnel and you don't want to do that, trust me. So once you find the tunnel, just drive through it and you can only drive there for exactly 17 hours because then and at that point, your car will break down and stop working. After it stops working, you just have to get out and you have to walk through the rest of the length of the tunnel. But don't worry though, the tunnel is safe, there's no fog or no entities or anything like that. Just a normal tunnel. And this tunnel will lead to level 11, so it's pretty much worth it. There's also one unconfirmed exit as well. Some people have said that if you pass out while being attacked by a being from above, that you'll wake up in level 0. But I'm not gonna stick around and try to test that theory. 
So yeah, you got an infinite highway with huge concrete walls on each side and giant spider legs that come down from the sky to attack you. Love to see it. So the sublevel that I want to go over today is a brand new one to the Backrooms Wikidot. I just read over it, it was on the new page list, and it's level 8.1, which, obviously, is a sub-level of level 8. This entry starts with a notice, directly from Meg themselves, that reads as follows. This page has been partially expunged due to an unexpected, unsystematic, total collapse and destruction of level 8.1 because of an inadvertent fusion of this sublayer and level 8 whose effect was firstly witnessed on February 12th 2013 a separate document is to be shown to the general public that overviews the potential hazards that the collision has consequently caused these environmental hazards in level 8 are only prone to occur near the initial entrance of level 8.1 before it was destroyed the meg team now since I've read that really fun message, let's get into the level explanation. But be warned, because level 8.1 is a very weird conglomeration, sub-level type thing. It's described by Wanderers as a really complex system of claustrophobic hallways that kinda look like caves, but they're really tiny and you can barely fit through them. This 8.1 area is different than other sub-areas because it doesn't actually seem to be related to level 8 at all, like not in the physical sense at least. Instead, the thought is that they barely are fused together somehow, since on rare occasions you can see a connecting hallway from level 8 to 8.1, but I'll get into that later, it's really unstable, and it's really bad. This partial fusion of level 8 and 8.1 also cause very weird auditory hallucinations and visual hallucinations and distortions. These distortions happen on levels 8 and 8.1 near where the 8.1 entrance is, so Meg advises everyone to avoid any exploration of these distortion areas because they're pretty dangerous. And it doesn't really sound that fun to me. Now, as I said earlier, level 8.1 itself is a mixed jumble of winding hallways that end in dead ends or they loop around and go around each other. The rock that these halls are carved through seems to be made out of a bedrock which is unnaturally durable and hard to break. The bedrock leaks almond water in certain spots, but it doesn't just leak almond water, it leaks a really weird red liquid that smells terrible that's been described as sulfuric. So it smells like sulfur. Nasty. The almond water that leaks through the rocks sometimes makes sinkholes happen or ceilings to collapse because, you know, it breaks down the rock over time. And these things happen frequently, which makes mapping out a safe path in this area almost impossible. The rock hallways also cause those auditory and visual hallucination distortion things that I talked about earlier. Sometimes these things sound like crashing rocks. Sometimes they sound like shrill whimpering. And this whimpering is so distorted and so loud that it causes some people to instantly pass out on hearing it. The frequencies have also broken ceramic objects and can even cause you to have complete derealization after just 10 minutes of exposure. No one knows the source of these sounds, but it's assumed that it has something to do with the fusion of level 8.1 and level 8 together and some kind of disimbalance thing. The hallways also have a really weird physical anomaly in some areas and will cause pretty gross things to happen. Be warned. Like if you touch a wall, you could get sucked into the rocks and instantly just be encased in rock and instantly unalive. Grody. There is another part of this sublevel, as if it couldn't get any more dangerous, and the area is called Layer 2. This refers to the actual space between the intersection of level 8 and 8.1, like I mentioned earlier. So this layer 2 is where the two different levels connect together. Those distortions from earlier, specifically the auditory ones, are way more noticeable here, way louder. And it's unknown why it's so much louder here, but it can be assumed that wherever the source is, it's here. Layer 2 actually has longer, skinnier hallways than the rest of level 8.1, or even level 8, and there's no light source here, which is the opposite of 8.1, the main area, because there's just this some kind of light source through the whole level there. But this area, Layer 2, is dark. Like, real dark. 
The nasty red sulfur stuff from earlier also leaks way more in this level, and it causes pretty deep puddles to form on the floor. The echoing off the walls and the auditory distortions make it impossible to document what kind of entities are here or how many of them there are, and there's no info on them literally at all. There's nothing. So who knows what lurks in the shadows? Gotcha. Maybe the creepiest part of level 8.1 and layer 2 is that there's been no documented instances of people escaping. So for all we know, people could get trapped there for an eternity in the winding, claustrophobic halls. Creepy to think about. Now the way this article's information was apparently gathered was by, quote, a method of analog communication via the use of certain devices. Okay then, I like how specific you are. Kinda goofy, but we're vibing. The main theory on there not being any documented escapes is that there's actually another layer called Layer 3 outside of the bedrock walls that perhaps has an exit, maybe? Or maybe there isn't this area and people are just doomed to wander the small hallways for an eternity. Nice! Also, there are no bases, entities, entrances, or exits documented. Just letting you know that I did not forget to add them to the video, they just don't exist. Level 4000, aka the final frontier, is extremely unsecure and unsafe for the most part. Except in one part, which I'll talk about later. And the level is split up into two distinct sections, which I'll be explaining in depth, of course. But the two sections are called Thalassophobia and the Near Shore Area. The Thalassophobia area is unsafe and unsecure and has undocumented entities around as well as a extremely dangerous documented one. But this part of the level induces a deep sense of Thalassophobia to you the second you're in it. Even if you don't have that to begin with, it still gives it to you. Which is just terrifying, man. Also, if you don't know what it is, thalassophobia is the fear of underneath of water, the things underneath of it. This area has another weird effect on you where it drains your sanity constantly and you can't even help it. It just happens. This section also has extremely deep, dark water and the sky is always gray with no sun and the water is always rough and choppy. The only confirmed entity here is called the Death Whale which pretty much sounds exactly like the name suggests and is exactly like the name suggests, but I'll explain it in detail in the entity section of the video, so be patient. But yeah, that's it for the thalassophobia section of the level. It's dangerous, it's deep, it's a dark ocean. What else is there to say? The next section is called the Near Shore Area, and this area is actually pretty safe and moderately secure, which is way better than the death whale infested water. Since its name is literally near shore, I'm sure you can guess that this section is near a shoreline, quote unquote, but don't get your hopes up because there is no actual shoreline. It's just an infinite section of an area that looks like it's gonna be a shoreline, but you can never get close to it. Kinda sucks. Apparently two Meg members traveled 26 miles towards the shore that they thought was a shore and they didn't get any closer. This area has these black rock island formation things that stick out of the water and there's lots of other sea life here as well, like birds and lizards and that kind of stuff, as well as seagulls and mackerels and other fish and, you know, just the typical ocean stuff. And a really creepy entity also lives here called La Camiloa which I'm gonna talk about in depth in the entity section, so you'll see it there. Every four hours in this area, a random mist will start to roll over the water, and off in the distance, you'll see a lighthouse light and the tower very faintly, but it's impossible to get to this lighthouse because it seems to change directions, and after about five hours of this mist in this lighthouse, it'll all disappear and it'll all be gone. And that was the last part of the le- Wait, there's a secret part, what? The secret part of level 4000 is called the Silver Waters and is safe, secure, with no entities. This section of the level has only been seen by two people ever and the entrance to it is unconfirmed and obviously unsafe. 
The water in this section of the level is kind of metallic. It has this weird thick texture to it. And it's also been tested and is actually made of a very similar compound to liquid silver. So like melted silver, but an ocean. Interesting, very interesting. So for the long-awaited entity section, there are two main ones that I want to talk about, and those are the Death Whales and then the La Kamiloa. We'll get into the Death Whales first. These things look like normal humpback whales, which if you didn't know, are already one of the largest things on planet Earth, so that's terrifying. But instead of the peaceful giants from real life, Death Whales are anything but that. They are dangerous. They can detect you from miles away when you're in the water and they can swim straight up towards you and like a reverse torpedo, they will open their mouth and shoot right up at you and try to swallow you. The only chance of survival you have is to swim away just in time to dodge them. They also sometimes just come out of the water and just sit there with their mouth open for a little bit, almost like they're drinking oxygen. I don't know. It's different from real life whales because obviously real life whales have air through a blowhole so maybe these things don't have a blowhole and they just breathe through their mouth so far there's been a total of 56 victims of these death whales and the number will probably keep going up as more and more people go to this level the next entity is the la kamiloa entity which is just terrifying to look at i mean just look this creature is very mysterious and is rarely seen but it's really unknown how it's supposed to act because Sometimes it's aggressive, but most of the time it's not. It looks like a large humanoid that's made out of stone, and it's supposed to be around 100 feet tall, but that's just how tall it is when it stands out of the water. Like, imagine how tall it actually is with its feet touching the bottom of the ocean. It's gotta be like 20 miles tall. The creature has only actually unalived two humans total by accidentally dragging them down underwater, but apparently it's kind of friendly to humans and doesn't actually seek out to attack them like someone else we know. But yeah, a four mile tall stone humanoid creature is still terrifying. There are actually two colonies on this level. Those are the Ocean Explorers and the Noki Noki. The Ocean Explorers, well, they're Ocean Explorers, and they're the only official group stationed here. They live on a huge inflatable raft on the water, and they guide wanderers to the exit of the level. Kinda wholesome. And they also like to swim, which is also wholesome. Now the Noki Noki tribe is a tribe of 50 people who live on one of those rock outcropping island things. And they seem to be like a hunter gatherer society that just hunts animals in the near shore area. They're moderately hostile to outsiders, but can be bargained with if you don't get really aggressive. To enter this level, the only reliable way is to noclip through a wet spot in the carpet in level 0. The rest of them are unreliable and are kind of finicky. Now to exit this level, you can find a specific circle of rock formations and then just wait on top of them to be teleported to the hub, or in extremely rare occasions, you can see the shore that I was talking about earlier, but the shore has a city on it when you see it, and then you can swim towards it, and then you'll be in level 1976. But that's extremely rare. The other two exits almost never happen or never work, so don't even try. Backrooms level 266 is classified as a class 3E environmental danger and is unsafe and unsecure and its main danger is not from entities but the environment itself. The level actually looks like a giant floating mass of roots and sticks and trees. The trees are really thin and they don't have any leaves on them or anything like that and the forest area is actually the center of the level. And as you wander further down from that forest, the steeper and more declined the landscape gets. Kind of like if you were standing on top of a giant ball and started to walk down the sides. It gets so steep eventually that it just drops off to 90 degree angles. The forest is also always covered in this fog and it's really hot and humid and it stays around 36 degrees Celsius or 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hot. Since it is so hot, it is recommended that if you do come here, bring almond water so you don't go insane. However, you probably shouldn't come here and you'll figure out why very soon. 
This level is actually a pretty important connector level because it connects level 166 to level 11. So you could technically be on level 11 and then skip 155 levels, you know, which is pretty cool. It's only problem is that it's hard to get here successfully and you shouldn't come here because of the dangers of this environment. If you walk down the slopes of the forest as far as you can, you'll eventually get to the edge where you can see a bunch of roots hanging down into the void below. And these roots have some pretty weird things about them. First off, they are way bigger than the trees that they come from, which is pretty strange. But the real weirdness is that they can move and contort themselves in the ground. This movement can cause huge holes to just open up in the ground, which is one of the biggest dangers here because you could fall in them. And if you do find a hole, you can actually look down into it and see all the roots moving around and constantly shifting in the ground like massive snakes. Grody. The roots are actually dangerous for another reason too, and it's because if you put an object near or in one of those holes that opens up, the roots will then grab it and close themselves around it, and then eventually, whatever you put down on the ground will be sucked into the ground by the roots themselves. Like the roots will literally grab something and pull it through the ground into underneath it. Almost like they're eating it or something. And probably the grossest thing about looking down at the roots into the ground through a hole is that you can see objects flowing through the roots that got sucked from the surface. Like the people who are no longer alive, or entities that have been trapped and pulled under, or objects and stuff like that. You can see all those things being wriggled and writhed through the tunnels that these roots create, being covered and wrapped around by other roots. That's terrifying. Some of the items in the roots have actually been pulled out, but sometimes people try to rescue something or someone else and they get sucked in themselves and end up not making it. So don't do that. There's also been some pretty weird things and objects that have been found on the surface of this level. Like, really cryptic and weird things. Because in a pretty new area of this level that recently got discovered and was nicknamed the Outer Ring, there has been some really strange things on the actual ground. Not sucked under yet, on the ground. For instance, this golden locket and this old shear tool. The tool had the word Topiria stamped into the handle, and that evidently is some kind of bush looking thing. But why would that be stamped onto a pair of shears? I don't know. And who would leave a pair of shears there? And that golden locket is actually the really cryptic thing on this level. Specifically, the things inside of that golden locket. Like these two pictures of random people. One of them is not blacked out, and the other one looks like somebody marked the face out. Then there's this picture of a front porch of a house with flowers hanging up and the lights on. Then a really weird looking row of orange trees that are glowing, which I believe might be from level 166. Then a random blurry picture that doesn't even seem to be of anything. Just a blur, unless I'm missing something. Then the last three pictures that are on this locket seem to be from level 266 itself. But the very last picture is extremely unsettling looking because of how blurry it is. I can't quite tell what it is, but it kind of looks like someone being grabbed by roots. Because whoever took this picture, they must have been shaking when they did because it's blurry. So I don't know. No one has any idea who took the pictures or why they did it or what was the purpose in it. But it is very, very mysterious to say the least. Are the pictures of those two people, the family of the wanderer? Who knows? Is the picture of their house, their childhood home? Is the blurry picture an undiscovered backrooms level? Tons of questions and not any answers. Nice. Now Meg actually says not to explore this level at all because of how dangerous it is and no one should come here voluntarily. And if they accidentally come here, they need to leave as soon as possible. And honestly, I do not blame Meg for saying that because I don't want to get sucked underground by roots. To enter this level, you have to walk down the path of glowing trees on level 166, and you'll be forcefully no-clipped here to level 266. So yeah, I guess that wanderer did take the picture of how they got here. And to exit, you can stay in the woods until you find a random elevator sticking out of the ground, get in it, and then you'll be no-clipped to level 11. Or, sometimes you can find a rusty mirror leaning against a random tree, and then no-clip through that to be sent to level 148. But yeah. What do y'all think about these pictures? What do they mean, and why were they in the locket? Let me know your theories down below in the comments. 
So Backrooms Level 60 is classified as a Class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and very dangerous due to its environment and other things, which I'll explain in a few minutes. The level physically takes place next to the ocean, and it's made up of different segments of a pathway. That's why it's named the Baywalk. Now, the pathway itself is well kept in some spots and broken and destroyed in other spots, and it's all slightly lit up by dim street lights. Some of the lights are broken, and some of them are just off or collapsed, so there's not much light here, so don't expect to be able to see much. On top of this, the level is always dark. It's always nighttime, and the sun has never been seen here. Which means that this is a perfect place for smiler entities to be. And trust me, they're here. <laughs> but more on that in the entity portion of the video. The pathway along the water gives off a very relaxing feeling to anyone walking on it. And overall, it makes anyone who comes here pretty calm even though it's very dangerous. There's a light sea breeze blowing and the sounds of waves crashing probably helps with you feeling relaxed. Although this relaxed feeling isn't good because it's the level trying to make you let your guard down. If you're chill and not stressing about anything on this level, then it leaves you more open to entity attacks, which apparently is what the level wants. Now, as I said earlier, the level is split up into a couple different segments. The first segment is called the upper area, and this place is the main part of level 60. The pathway here looks pretty new and well kept. The floor is concrete and it doesn't have any cracks or any breaks or anything. And most of the lights here don't work. There are huge swaths of complete darkness. And this upper area is also the most dangerous part of the level due to those big parts of darkness. And it's in those dark areas where the level tries to make you feel calm by having a nice breeze and a nice calming sensation from the water. And that effect has been nicknamed the painless death. And since there's less lighting, there's more smilers. So good luck! The next area is called Segment 2, or the Lower Area. Now this is where most people who get sent to the level spawn. This pathway is made out of dirt and is physically located below the upper area. In this section, everything is unfinished looking and kind of grimy. This part also is way closer to the water, so if you aren't careful, you could fall into it. In some rare cases, you'll be able to find a staircase that leads up to the upper area. But these aren't common, so yeah. And even if you do find a staircase, you should not go up them because of the smilers and the darkness up there. The good news about the lower area is that there aren't any creatures down here hiding in the shadows. It's pretty safe. But you do have to stay on the lookout when you're walking so you don't trip over something and fall into the ocean below. Speaking of the ocean, it's got some pretty strange behaviors to say the least. Now the ocean for the most part is like the ones from real life, but instead of it being, you know, miles deep like the ones we have, it's only four feet deep. Which doesn't seem bad at first, but trust me, it's bad. Because this ocean area is pitch black, like literally no light comes down from the lamppost here. Which means, of course, that Smilers have infested this shallow ocean. So if you fall in, you're pretty much falling into a Smiler pit. The ocean also seems to be able to be no clipped through sometimes, because people have been seen falling off of the lower level into the ocean and then just disappearing. So that's pretty cool. But this no clipping effect doesn't always happen. On top of this, sometimes this ocean will randomly and unexplainably disappear, and the only thing that will be there is the black sand at the bottom where the ocean used to be. To enter this level, you have to get into any body of water and drown. That's right, drown. And you'll have a chance of being sent here, although I don't think I would come here and risk literally doing that just to be here because I like living and to exit you can either jump into the ocean and hope it's in a no clipping phase where you can be sent out or you might be able to no clip through the upper level to be sent to the next level which is 61 but both of those exits are not 100% real or 100% proven because no one truly knows what happens to people who fall into the sea who knows not me So yeah, this is a level of a nice liminal boardwalk next to the beach. Some spots more dangerous, some spots less dangerous. But overall, 
I think it gives off pretty good vibes and I enjoyed it. It's levels like these that are actually my favorite kind of levels in the back rooms because of the juxtaposition between the level looking safe, you know, this level takes place on a boardwalk next to a relaxing beach and ocean, but it's actually not safe because, you know, the factors of the ocean teleporting you away or there being smilers in the shadows. Those are the things that makes the back rooms great to me. How it's so unpredictable and how you can't ever see what's about to happen. Even though you might think you're safe, you're probably not safe. In fact, you're not safe. But levels like these are the ones that I do enjoy a lot. And I hope you do too. Backrooms level 990 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure and has a small but dangerous entity count. The level itself is nicknamed the Soundless Subterranean, which is such a cool name by the way, that's, that's cool. And it's physically a pretty cool description. The level appears to be a large cave network that has winding curvy hallways, big open caverns, and rooms that are intercut with some old mine shafts. All over the walls and the ceilings and the floor, there are cobwebs and moss and different kinds of algae growing, and some parts of the cave caverns are flooded, but they are not just flooded with normal water, they're flooded with liquid pain. Liquid pain is a red liquid in the back rooms that normally hurts you, if you didn't know. Except this liquid pain here is pretty safe to the touch, just don't stay in it for long. The caves that are flooded with it can be anywhere from 10 to 20 meters, or 32 to 65 feet deep. But some of them are even deeper than that, which is really crazy. The caves are not very safe to walk through because they can go from just being a normal cave to being a huge cavern instantly. Or they can go from being just a normal cave to a really claustrophobic tight tunnel instantly. None of it has any reasoning, it just happens like that. And on top of all the stuff I just talked about, there are random mine shafts that intersect into tunnels and caverns here. These shafts are made out of regular wood, but it's all really decayed and really cracked. In fact, the mine shafts are so old and broken that they can just randomly collapse at any time with just the slightest touch, which would be pretty bad if you were walking near or walking under one. The shafts sometimes have railways on them that go over into the actual cave themselves and there's even some mine carts that have been seen there as well that are full of coal and other types of ore but it doesn't make any sense that the carts are here because there's no way that humans got here with those carts since some of the things are so claustrophobic you couldn't have even fit the cart through them so who knows just like some of the other levels of the back rooms this level has some non-euclidean effects that just make it dangerous however these effects aren't really noticeable until a few miles back in the cave but once you get back there you'll notice the pathways changing and glitching and folding on top of themselves and you'll sometimes even be going around in circles even though you're going straight this level is almost fully unexplored because of how many passages and caverns it has and there's no way to say for sure how big it is however some of it has been mapped out but this could be just a small chunk who knows but what is known is that it gets pitch black in the caverns of this level and some spots are literally so dark that the flashlights you have don't even help like they don't even light anything at all up these pitch black areas are the most enigmatic and weird parts of the level radio waves and gps stuff only partially work here but if you do use a gps to see your location it will actually say that you're in slovenia which is weird because why would a backrooms level say that i'm in europe strange compasses aren't even useful here either because the needle never points the right way so you never truly know what direction you're going in pretty much nothing works as it should here which is one of the reasons it's truly dangerous now level 990 is actually really cold and sometimes there's a fog that will roll through the tunnels and caverns the ambient noise of the level is a relaxing water trickle with a slight echo but sometimes that peaceful, relaxing background can be interrupted by really strange disturbances. These disturbances are audio hallucinations and an entity that I'll talk about later. But these audio hallucinations are thought to come from entities deep inside the level. A weird thing that's been seen far into the caves are a few random windows. 
These windows are dusty and old looking, and they're actually in the side of the rock walls of the cave, like they're shoved into them. But you can see through them, and it looks like there's hills and flowers and a sunset behind the windows. These are not full-grown window entities that we know of, because they don't try to eat you. It literally just looks like there's the world, the earth, on the other side of this glass window. No matter how much the glass is broken on one of these things, the image of the hills and flowers never changes. Which means it's gotta be some kind of entity, right? I mean, whew. Speaking of entities, there are a few confirmed ones, like facelings, that have been seen wearing old explorer uniforms and hats with flashlights. There's also been a few death moths that have been seen in the huge caverns. But the level exclusive entity is called a Ravager Ape. Now these things are found deep into the caverns and caves of this level and they need to be avoided at all cost. I repeat, they need to be avoided. So a Ravager Ape is kind of like a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot from real life, just way more aggressive. These apes hunt humans, and they're very dangerous because they can seemingly no-clip through walls and floors anytime they want to. So one could literally be in a passageway over to the left of you, sense you, and then jump through the wall to get you. Cool. The good news is, since they're pretty big, they can't get into small parts of the cave, so you could probably just run into a tiny hole and escape them. There are currently no colonies in this level, except there was one that tried to build one, but different events, like falling into liquid pain or falling into a deep cavern and never being seen again, made the group lose too many members, so now there's no one. To enter this level, you can find a hole to jump in in level 100 to be sent here, or you can noclip into a red substance found on level 15 to be sent here. Most of the entrances listed involve nature or the woods in some kind of way, which I find pretty interesting. And to exit the level, you have to find a ladder on a mineshaft in this level and start climbing up it to presumably be sent back to the level you came from. But no one knows for sure because the people just disappear when they're climbing the ladder. So yeah, a huge cave system with random caverns, drop-offs, flooded corridors, and a home to giant apes who hunt humans for food. Sounds great to me. So Backroom's level you cheated is classified as a class dead zone and is very unsafe. And I mean very unsafe. The level also has the presence of lethal entities and on top of that, the properties of the level are constantly changing so it's hard to map how dangerous it is. But as you can tell, it's not going to be safe at all. Now the level physically looks like an old server closet. You know what I'm talking about, you know, those rooms with old server towers and boxes and wires, dust and old computers and that kind of stuff everywhere. This level is pretty much a prison for people who try to cheat their way through the backrooms levels. And I'll tell you what that means in the exit portion of the video. But this level is so dangerous because if you move or mess with any of the clutter here, you will instantly fall over unalived. Like you will literally just fall over and not be alive. On the spot, no questions asked. And if you think you're gonna be smart and try to no clip through a wall or a floor, well then you'll instantly be sent to the void level if you do that. And that isn't even close to the worst part of what can happen here. Within just five minutes of being here, the cheater, or you, because the person in this level is always referred to as the cheater, will start to notice the level itself changing a bit. Parts of the ceiling will start to collapse on top of you, and entities will start to pour in the room from the roof. As the time passes even more to 10 minutes, even more of the ceiling will fall open, and it opens up more opportunities for entities to jump right on top of you. If you somehow make it to the 20 minute mark, you'll see the electronics start to literally explode. Computers, monitors, servers, wires, all of it is just blowing up and causing fire to spread throughout the entire area. At this point, the level has fire, entities, a collapsing ceiling, and you will pass away if you touch or move anything. Cool. After around the 30 minute mark of being in the level, the power will completely go out and it'll be pitch black besides the light that the fire brings. At this point, a set of doors will also be opened up randomly, which you better run to those doors before it gets worse because if you don't, the room's gonna combust and blow up. So, and that room that is about to blow up that you're hopefully running out of was called the main room. 
But now that you left this main room, you will be entered into a maze of winding and turning hallways. These hallways are very claustrophobic and they have arcade systems throughout them. And while you're making your way through these hallways and walls and everything, these entities and that fire from the main room will follow you out and chase you. After an hour of being in this terrible level, if you're still alive, you'll need to run around the hallways until you find a quarter laying somewhere on the ground. And when you find that quarter, you have to run and find the nearest arcade machine to put the quarter inside of. Once you do that, you'll be given the ability to leave the level and go back to where you entered from as sort of a retry at the back rooms. But if you don't put the quarter in, well then a Smiler is probably gonna eat you. Speaking of entities like Smilers, the main ones here are Smilers and Skin Stealers, but there are also some other entities that are unique to the level, like the server boxes themselves. Now they aren't just technology servers like from real life, they're some kind of sentient entity. There's also other unidentified entities that chase you around that aren't like any other ones. Even if they were though, it would be kind of hard to see what they were because you're running around for your life through a maze of hallways. I think the last thing you're going to be worried about is looking what entities are following you. Now this level calls you a cheater for a reason, because it's like a sick form of punishment for people who try to cut corners in the back rooms or cheat their way through it. For instance, one reason you might get sent to this level is because you tried to no clip back to reality within the first five levels of the back rooms. So let's say you're on level one and you're like, well, let me just try to glitch back to the real world. Well, that's considered cheating to the backrooms, I guess. And if that happens, you'll be sent here to level you cheated. Or if you cheat on an arcade game in level 3999, which is a backrooms exit level, you'll be sent here as well. So don't cheat. And there's other things like that as well. There are other things that can send you here, like trying to open up locked doors or trying to no clip past levels that you don't want to go to. If you're trying to avoid level exclamation mark or something, that'll get you sent here as well. Or at least that's the leading theory, because only a few people have survived this level to tell the story. This level honestly probably deserves to be in the top 5 scariest levels in all of the back rooms, simply for the fact that you can be sent here without even knowing you're going to be. Like imagine just glitching out of reality, falling into the back rooms and learning how to no clip, and then thinking to yourself, you know what, I think it'll be fine if I just try to get back home. All for that to just send you to this level where you have to run around for hours on end avoiding entities and fire just to escape that level and be sent back to the back rooms where you came from. I mean, that's literally one of the worst fates imaginable in all of the back rooms. Let me know what you think down below. Is this level worse than level exclamation mark or is it the same or is it better? Because to be honest with you, I think it might be worse. Level exclamation mark has a straight hallway to run through while this one has curving hallways, fire and more entities. And to get to this level, it's literally just completely random. So I don't know. It's a toss up. To exit the level, you have to survive an hour, then find the quarter I mentioned to put into the nearest arcade machine, and you'll be sent out where you came from. And then hopefully you learned to not cheat in the back rooms, because the back rooms as a whole doesn't like cheaters, apparently. So I was scrolling through the Wikidots when this video idea hit me right in the head to find the oldest level, and after a while of looking, I found a couple of them for the episode, and those levels are levels 499 and level 199. Level 499, aka the Terrestrial Paradise, Wow, that's a cool name, bro. Is classified as a class 1 difficulty, and is SSMEC, or SMEC which is short for saying safe, secure, and minimal entity count. This level's physical layout and description is pretty unique because it's described as a complex maze of different settings or habitats or natural places that have kind of crashed into each other and mended together. Specifically, the different settings are jungles, caves, rivers, waterfalls, adobe houses, stuff like that. And they're all glitching into each other and no clipping constantly. Inside of these structures, the hallways will just randomly end and turn into forests, and rivers will flow right through rooms. Like, there's no problem with it at all, it just happens. The only thing that isn't quote-unquote weird on this level is that there's a ton of vines and leaves and trees just hanging out, and it kind of seems like a forest when you're outside of these temples. 
Also, gravity as we know it doesn't really seem to obey our physics for natural things because there's streams that will float straight upside down and waterfalls that will literally just go in the opposite direction. But sadly, wanderers still do obey normal gravity for some reason, so you're stuck on the ground which kind of sucks. There's no visible sun here, and the only light source comes from something called ghost lights, which are just giant floating spheres that float in the sky. And these ghost lights populate the structures and the outside areas, but sometimes they aren't in some areas, and those specific places are really dangerous because there's no lights, and you might get lost in the structure, or you might get lost in the outside because you can't see anything. This level is also extremely massive and it expands vertically and horizontally. So it pretty much just goes out in all directions. To me, it seems like it's been there for an extremely long time since like the ancient ruins time area. Obviously that's not a real time period, but you get what I'm saying. There's also an ancient religious group that lives here called Amor Incrementum, which doesn't have any info on it, but I'm pretty sure Amor means love. So, I don't know. It just sounds old. You can enter this level by going down hallways in level 4 that eventually transform into foresty tunnels, and you can exit by finding a random merge point of levels, like for example, this level, level 499, merging with the forests of level 62, and you can just walk over that threshold and be in level 62. But yeah, this one seems pretty ancient. What do you think? The next level I want to talk about is level 199, or as it's called, the Wonoric Forest or the Honoric Forest, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This level is really weird and extremely old. It has a survival difficulty of NA or non-applicable, and is non-existent, devoid of matter, and unfit for life? Okay then. But the first sentence of this description says that the forest has been a major part of the backroom's folklore for a long time, so it's definitely old. The level is more of a mindset dream world and is said to only be able to be accessed through your dreams. It looks like a huge expanse of rivers, valleys, lakes, mountain ranges, and thick forests spread out over a huge vast expanse of land. The plants here are supposedly so crazy that the human brain can't even comprehend them, so I would love to see that. This level is also dotted with ancient ruins from what seems to be sentient humanoids, but it looks like they've been gone for a long time. There's square structures, pyramids, and other old world looking things that are all overgrown and forgotten about. Now the time on this level works in very weird ways because minutes can feel like hours or hours can feel like minutes. It just depends on where you're at on the level. Now there's a specific hidden area in the level that's called the Twisted Garden that can be accessed by wandering extremely deep into the level. This is the area where most of those structures are, and some of them are shaped weirdly and entangled around each other. Think of buildings that grow like plants and twist and turn around each other. Now this garden area is also full of voids and dead ends and canals, which seem to just drop off into nothingness. But the canals also point to the fact that there were humans here at one point, since why else would you need working waterways, I mean, you know? There's also signs of an unknown language that's carved into stones and onto streets on this level, which pretty much solidifies the fact that there was at one point an ancient group of sentient beings living here. Now the main theory is that at one time this city was huge and populated and teeming with life, but some kind of huge cataclysmic event blew it all up or messed it up somehow, which is pretty cool. There's only one quote-unquote entity that lives here, and it's called Orbs. And they kind of just float like orbs, and they guide people around the Twisted Garden area. And they kind of look like the biblical description of angels, which is pretty neat and creepy. There aren't any bases here, since it's like a dream world. And no one has ever seen anyone else here, because this level can only be accessed through dreaming. So you're pretty much alone to the entire level. To enter this area, you have to be dreaming obviously, but it does help to be dreaming in a place where there's lots of forests. Like the Crimson Forest, or something like that. And to exit, <laughs> well you just gotta wake up. But yeah, I do think this one was older than the first level I went over. And it's pretty cool and unique at the same time. It's got good vibes. So first up for today's video is a level from Big Convoy called My Leg! 
this level is a survival difficulty of painful and is funny ouch and has a low entity count okay this level is literally just fred the fish from spongebob repeatedly saying my leg over and over and over again now sometimes he does say my face but it's mostly just my leg and that is literally it for the entire level itself like I said, the only entity here is obviously Fred, and to enter this magnificent, well-written level, you have to unalive due to a starfish on level 11,234, and to exit, you have to get beaten up by Fred himself to be sent back to level 0. This is the shortest one today, so I wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way, but I'd say we're off to a pretty strong start. Next up is a level from Silently called The Bin Rooms. This level has a survival difficulty of class contested, non-human, and there's an entity superiority as well as unsafe conditions for humanity. That sounds pretty fun, right? The Bin Rooms looks like level zero, but the only thing there is Bin. You've all seen Ben, you know Ben. He's the only entity here and literally is the only thing here besides like the walls and floors and stuff. Ben is very dangerous though because he can make anyone go insane very quickly because he just repeats words over and over again like yes and no and that stupid laugh thing that he does all the time. You know what I'm talking about. If you listen to him say this stuff for more than a couple minutes at a time, you will literally go insane. To enter this level, you have to call I show speed in real life and say the following code to him. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, no. And then you'll wake up in the bin rooms. <laughs> the good news is that you can actually exit, but uh, it's pretty much impossible. So I don't know why I said that. Because to leave, you have to stay here in the bin rooms for this amount of years. I'm not even gonna try to say it without going insane in order to be sent out. As far as bases and outposts go, the entry says that everyone went mentally insane. L-M-F-A-O-O-O-O-O rip bozo. And that's it. <laughs> oh man. This might be the best level that I've ever covered or received in a joke levels video. I'm not even kidding. Well done, sir. Well done. Next up is a fantastic level from Hissy Gamer called Level Go Outside. This level has a survival difficulty of too hard for you. Oh, come on, man. And it's unsafe, but only for Genshin Impact players, or however you pronounce it, I don't even know. The level itself looks like a quote, nice place where you should touch some dang grass and look at the nice, nice nature. I literally could not have said that better myself, man. I appreciate the way you spoke that. When you get to this level, and and especially if you play Genshin Impact, you'll be forced to touch grass in the fields there, and if you don't do that, then Hissy Gamer themselves, the author of this level, will make you touch grass. The only group here is your mom, Expedition Group, and the only entities here are Hissy Gamer and the outside world. <laughs> and the only way you can enter is if you download Genshin Impact, and if you do that, you'll be sent here. If you want to exit, all you have to do is take a shower, then go outside and touch grass, and then uninstall the game. And you'll be fine. Sounds like a win-win to me. You know, I take back what I said about the Ben Rooms being the best entry I've ever gotten, because this, by far, is the new best entry I've ever covered. So these last two entries will actually be joke entities, because they're just hilarious and one of them i promised my discord i would go over but that'll be the last one but the first one up is entity 1874 aka skippy and was submitted by skippy over on the discord server skippy is apparently seven foot one inches tall and weighs 20 pounds and his behavior has been described as quote goofy by other wanderers skippy actually has his own level cluster called the skippy rooms but it's not recommended to travel into the Skippy Rooms because if you do, you'll apparently meet a fate worse than unaliving itself. Although Skippy does have his own level cluster, he's mainly found on level 188 and is always saying things like sussy to anyone he sees. <sighs> Skippy has also been seen trying to drag people back to the Skippy Rooms with some of his weird appendages, arms type things that he has. And he has apparently a 12 foot wingspan, so you can't really run away from him. 
The only image we have of Skippy is this POV shot of him devouring a bowl of ramen. Which you can literally see how fierce this entity is, just based off of the way that he grabs the bowl. Truly scary stuff, ladies and gents. But yeah, that is literally it for this entry. I have at least 50,000 less brain cells now, but uh, we're still vibing. <sighs> and lastly, for the video today, is a joke submission that I promised my Discord that I would go over in this video. And it's submitted by Darth Cheese. The level, it is slightly vulgar though, so I'm going to censor the words out so Susan doesn't get angry at me. But the submission is called At Smilers. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. At Smilers. These Smilers are, in some kind of way, a Smiler subspecies that only live on level 8008 inside of people's ass and in toilets. <laughs> what am I? Literally, what am I reading, bro? Now, it's completely unknown how they get there, but the basic thought is that they can teleport. These smilers are said to be really painful and can cause someone to unalive almost 100% of the time if they choose so. Now, they do let you leave, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. They are, quote, unstoppable, they are inevitable. So good luck trying to avoid them if you're stuck in this level. They mainly live inside of toilets, however, on the level, and they actually will let you leave if your poop is big enough. I literally cannot make this up, like I'm having to type this out and then record it and then like edit it. <sighs> if these smilers like your poop enough, then they'll send you to a specific level based on how much they like it. Thank goodness this is over, I mean literally like sorry that you had to endure that as a listener. <laughs> Guesty called level flat. Oh gosh. This level has a survival difficulty of class flatty and is quote swaggy and real flat but it's also costa rica what does that even mean level flat is a huge grass field where you finally touch grass like the internet tells you to do and here's a direct quote from the entry this level is so flat and big that it's like your mom very poetic guesty for colonies and outposts, there's actually two of them, the Joes and the Mamas. And Joe, 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 I live inside of your walls. <laughs> what even is this, bro? You can't enter here or exit here because of a skill issue that you have. And yeah, that's literally it for the submission. Looks like the video was starting off pretty strong. Next up in this wonderful video, we have Foxy's level called Level Let's Go. This level has a difficulty of zero, and the only thing here is James and Chelsea's wedding, which James A. Janice is the host of Dead Meat, if you didn't know. Let me know down in the comments below if you also love the Dead Meat channel, because I do. That's why I included this joke submission, but uh, I think it's pretty funny that one of you literally submitted an entire level that's literally just James's wedding. Cool. Next is a very interesting level to say the least from our scene called a level criticize yourself for having no girlfriend lol lol <laughs> this level difficulty is your single l and has a three mental hazard warning on it pretty much when sent to this level you spawn in a huge white room with papers on the walls and floors that insult your existence for not having a girlfriend if you stay here for more than three minutes, you go insane, and you start to say, I want a girlfriend, over and over again. If you say it for more than three hours, you won't live, and if you somehow stop saying it and do end up living, an entity called Balls will stab you with artificial balls. Lovely. To enter this level, all you have to do is stay in the back rooms for 18 years and make sure you don't get a girlfriend in that time. And to exit, all you have to do, it's pretty simple, you have to admit how cringy you are. And you'll be sent out of the level. I gotta be honest with you, this level is, uh, canon now, so. The next level in this monstrosity of a video is, I stole your NFT by Reich. I think that's how you say it, not sure. The difficulty is 1 trillion for NFT owners, and is unsecure for NFT owners as well. The only entity on this level is Reich themselves, and this entity is very dangerous because he'll literally just steal your NFT. 
pretty much if someone buys an NFT in real life, then they're sent to this level and then stalked by Reich himself. And once he finds you, he'll screenshot your NFT and he'll take it away from you. I fully support this. All the homies hate NFTs. Next up is level potato. <laughs> Submitted by some. The survival difficulty is class potassium and the level is safe and secure. The level is completely made out of potatoes because the walls and the floors and the ceilings and even your existence is all potato. This is who you are now. There is no escape. You and everything around you is a potato. Points for creativity, I guess. The second to last submission for this video comes from Very Smarto and it's called Level Twitter. Oh gosh. The level has a survival difficulty of you're dead plus ratio plus no one asked. And physically, this level is a place in the back rooms where you're forced to use Twitter, which in turn turns you into a Twitter user, aka the worst fate imaginable. The entities here are other Twitter users, and the only base here is called Base Cancel Culture. <laughs> the listed entrance is, and I quote, for your sake, no. And finally, wrapping up this video is a level from Smilebird called Level Don't Go in the Backrooms at 3 a.m. Gone Wrong. Almost died. This level puts you in a cringy 3 a.m. video, specifically a video made by none other than morgues themselves. There's no way to escape this level, and you'll just die of a cringe attack. To enter the level, for whatever weird reasons you have, you have to yell, morgues is cringe, at exactly 3 a.m., and you can't even exit the level because the morgue's entity will stop you. I gotta be honest with you, this one's probably more scary than it is funny, but, uh, oh well. <laughs> is a Mr. Raccoon's level called Level Goldfish. This level has a survival difficulty of 5, and the description goes like this. A goldfish that wants to break your back and children's backs, too, and watch you unalive slow. Okay, we're off to a good start. There's one entity here called the Goldfish God, and you can enter this level just by eating a goldfish. I mean, that's pretty easy, right? You can't exit it, though, and you'll be chased around by a giant goldfish for eternity. Truly a masterpiece. Truly. Next up is a level from Pew Blaster called Level Credit Card, which is classified as a class money, and on this level, your mom is here, and you took her credit card. Run before she catches you. Specifically, you took your mom's credit card to buy Robux and other stuff. <laughs> There's actually two entities here. One of them is your mom, and the other one is the IRS. <laughs> okay. To enter this level, you have to find your mom's house in the back room somehow, and to exit, you have to evade your mom's capture until the IRS catches her first. Nice! The next level is called Level 13 Days of Brugmas from Trojan Prometheus. This level has a difficulty of Bruglic, meaning it's Brug safe, Brug secure, but is Brugly bunch infested. <laughs> Oh no, that can be good. The level description goes like this. Brugly on crack. Nice. The level is basically level 1, but with the Brugly face reveal faces all over it. And if you're not careful, you will see Brugly grab you from the floor and you will disappear for an eternity. I can't make it up, that's what it says. The entities here are Big Brugly, which of course is me, and then the Brugly bunch which is described as, quote, a funny group of degenerates. It's honestly not too far off from the real thing, to be honest with you. On this level, there's actually a base called the Hall of the Brugly Bunch, where people worship Brugly, <laughs> and Brugmas is always being celebrated. Cool. To get to this awesome sounding level, you have to watch your Brugly video. Simple as that. And to exit, well, to be honest with you, I don't think you need to. The next entry is from Massimo, and it's called The Bathrooms. It's classified as a class fard level, and has poop smell. And quote, I forgot how to fard. Massimo is truly poetic with his words. 
The level looks like level zero, but it's a massive bathroom instead, and it smells terrible, and surviving here will be impossible. And here is a quote from Massimo himself that describes the true danger of this level. If you hear a fard, may God save you, end quote. <laughs> Like, what is this? What is this? There are two entities here. One is called the Crapper, and the other one is called the Pea Slime. You can pretty much guess what those are. To enter this very clean and sanitary level, you have to, quote, fard on level zero. And to exit, all you have to do is poop yourself. This is what I have to go through, people. Next is a level from Andrew Nersh called Level a backroomus. Oh gosh, I think I know where this might be going. The survival difficulty is... Sussy. The entire level is that you were spinning on an Among Us character. Like, that's the level, that's the entire thing. To enter, you have to get a Steam gift, and to exit, you have to prove that you're sus. <laughs> so this is what it's really come to, wow. The next level comes from Michael Jackson, and is called Level Meatloaf. The level has a difficulty of, quote, choking hazard, and it looks like a huge table with a chair in the middle. On this level, you will be force-fed meatloaf for the rest of your life. Okay. To enter, you have to eat meatloaf on level 69, and to exit, you have to not choke on meatloaf. Man, these just keep getting better and better, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm joking, they're getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> Lastly for today's video is from the cool kid, and it's called Level 4 Million, aka Assassinate the Large Soviet Pig. This level has a survival difficulty of Piggy, and the level looks like an old Soviet era town with a huge crowd of people surrounding this giant pig. No seriously, a giant pig. Your only goal on this level is to kill the giant pig. However, this isn't as easy as it seems because, well, first off, there's hundreds of people surrounding the pig, and second of all, you have to be a good shot with a sniper because that's all you spawn in the level with. And it's important that you hit the shots on the pig because if the pig notices you, it will, quote, fart so hard that your sense of smell will cease to exist. My tears grow every day. And if this somehow doesn't make you want to get out of there, then the pig will quote, fart again, but even louder, to the point of your ears bursting and unaliving yourself. Nice. The people in the crowd aren't even affected by this stuff. Also, apparently you can actually survive that second fart attack, but if you do, then the pig will chase you down and trample you and then eat you. So pretty much what I'm saying is, you just gotta hit your shots. To enter this level, for whatever demented reasons you have, you need to break a comically large piggy bank on any level. And to exit, just successfully shoot the pig. And then you'll have access to a car that will take you to level 69. Honestly, this level should be canon, and I'm not even kidding. The next level in today's lovely, lovely video comes from Alito One, and it's called Level Godzilla Flying Dropkick. Oh boy. This level has a survival difficulty of funny, and is a bad comedy, crappy, and there's a two kaiju to one robot ratio for entities. Nice to know, I guess. The level is described by Elita One as, quote, It was a funny bruh moment, for Godzilla just did a flying dropkick to beat up a Megalon, which apparently is this thing. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But that is the entire description of the level. Like, that's, that's all. The only entrance to this level is by going to a theater in real life and watching an old Godzilla movie, and the only way to exit is to quote, run out of here. You know what, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to remember that when I'm being chased by Godzilla flying towards me feet first. I can't believe I just read that entire entry, bro. Next up is an entry from Shadow Knight 620 called The Cage Rooms. This is a very dangerous level and is classified as a class 4 survival difficulty. The description of the level says it looks like a typical house, but it has pictures and cutouts of Nicolas Cage faces on everything. Everything. And Nicolas Cage himself is also an entity here. And you're gonna need to quote, run from Nicolas Cage 
he will find you. And that's it. That's all they wrote. That's the entire entry. Cool. To enter the level, you gotta hold a picture of Nicolas Cage on level 69. <laughs> and to exit, you gotta give Nicolas Cage a picture of himself, and he'll send you back to level zero. There's also a Meg base here called Outpost Cage. Pretty nice. Next is an entry from Cool Kid Balls called 19 Eyed Brugs. This description says, Do not be afraid. He has come. Do not resist. And that's it. Like, that's the entire text box. Honestly, I'd be pretty scared too if I randomly glitched into the back rooms while walking to my nearest gas station and the first thing I saw was this. I mean, that's terrifying, right? Lastly for this video is an entry from Mr. Tide Pod called Level Mug. And it's a class 3 mug difficulty. Quote, mug, mug, mug. <laughs> the level is described as a room full of mug cans. And to enter this room of mug, all you have to do is, quote, love mug for life. End quote. That's pretty easy, right? To exit, you just have to, quote, stop loving mug for life. End quote. I don't know, it's gonna be pretty hard. The only entity here is the Mug Dog, which is always watching you from the cans. So if you like Mug, if you like root beer, if you like the back rooms, this is the spot for you, man. Also, I think I'm gonna slap an honorable mention here at the end of the video called The Lean Rooms. Yeah, you heard that right. The Lean Rooms, which is literally just the pool rooms, but with purple water. Okay, that's it. Level, yes. And it's classified as yes. The level looks like a very yes area, but the entities are not yes, though. <laughs> the level is a giant Chuck E. Cheese with an arcade and pizza and stuff everywhere, and there's even a game where you can catch a yes. If you win the game, you can cash in a yes for more yeses. And there is even a yes outpost and a yes colony here. And Rob Lee says they're both pretty yes. So, that's good. As far as the entities go, there are not yeses, which are party poopers who constantly complain. The next entity is called a very yes, which is pretty much just a party goer. And then there's the yes prize machine, which gives out yeses for yes. The last entity is an animatronic pizza that walks around giving out pizzas to everyone. Nice. The main people on this level are the most yes people from the Discord, okay? Which is myself, Rob Lee, and Meg. Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. Yes. So for this next submission, if you somehow find the word nuts, offensive or whatever, I say it like 25,000 times in this entry, so just be warned, I guess. So this level was submitted by a legend over there on the Discord server called Baller. His level is called Level Nuts, and its survival difficulty is a class 5 because is quote, itchy and cringe. I like the uh, descriptive words there, buddy. He says that level nuts consist of a ton of interconnecting hallways with the walls, the floor, and the ceilings being made out of a really thick, itchy carpet material. The second you enter this level, you'll start to itch all over, but especially, well, you're nuts. <laughs> what? The deeper you walk into this level, the more the itchiness will become unbearable. And at around the five mile mark, most people just give up and pass out, which will cause them to no clip through the floor and end up on a random level. To enter this level, you simply must say, my nuts itch. <laughs> on any level, and you'll be sit here. Nice. And like I said earlier, to exit, you just have to walk five miles until you pass out. Typical baller stuff though. Next up is EERP's level, called level monkeys. The survival difficulty is, well, monkey. And if you come here, you'll just instantly become a monkey. After you become a monkey, you'll notice this huge jungle where there's a bunch of other little huts and you and your monkey brethren will live here forever. There are no entities, only monkeys. And there are no colonies, only monkeys. Okay, nice. Next up is Bluesy Cobra's level, called level f -z? I think he meant fish, but this is how he spelled it, people. I can't make this up. The survival difficulty is a dead zone, nice. And the level looks like an ocean with deadly fish everywhere. And all of them look like this. Nice. That's literally all I got. But to make up for that level, Bluesy Cobra submitted another level called Level Brugly. The survival difficulty is a mental hazard, and the level looks like a tiny room where you're forced to watch, and I quote, Brahogli only owns videos for the rest of your life, and you never fall asleep. <laughs> what? 
Next is Inverted Jack's level, called Level Brugly as well. This level is a class 4, and it looks like an empty field of really tall purple grass. There are also rolling hills and fog in some of the areas as well. If you venture far enough into this level, you'll see something in a robe and in a really weird mask. The second you see that thing, you'll suddenly get the urge to follow it, and it'll lead you to a library that's full of books about the back rooms. At the desk, there's an entity just sitting there and reading. You can't take any of the books off the shelves because there's some kind of force field stopping you and there's no available food or water and there's no day or night cycle either so it's really easy to lose track of time really quickly here the entities on this level are called the cult members and these are the entities that were in the robes and the masks and you follow that one here and you'll actually get a headache if you look at one of them for too long if you speak to one of them they'll only say one word bread if you know you know the last entity is called wise man brugley this is the entity that was at the desk that has read every book on the back rooms possible brugley looks like a human but is really tall and skinny with a huge forehead and a ton of eyes yeah so pretty much me in real life the entity has a vast amount of knowledge about the back rooms and the front rooms so he will answer your questions if you ask nicely if you wait here for too long though the cult members will be told to eat you okay <laughs> to enter this level you can open up any book about the back rooms that you find on any other levels and to exit you have to ask wise man brugley how do i leave nice the next level is submitted by another patron named assassinators his level is called yoinky sploinky <laughs> what the survival difficulty is as follows bread crust ice White bread is better. PB and J. Nice. That yoinky sploinky consists of. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Yo mama taking up the whole room. <laughs> Her sheer weight is enough to break the fabric of reality itself. She only eats the crusts of bread in order to stay healthy. That doesn't seem to be working. Yo mama is the only entity here. And if you're not careful, she'll engulf you at will. There's actually an outpost here called the Yo Papas, and he's the exact opposite. He's tall and skinny and has a tin pack. Like a Brugly. Yup! Yo Papa makes you remember how you would eat your candy like a filthy rat. What is this, bro? To enter this level, you have to gain over a thousand pounds on level 6.1, and to exit, you have to go back 50 pounds by joining the Papas. <laughs> Next up is a pretty simple level from Sonic Blaster called Level Cheese, and the survival difficulty is, well, cheese. It's cheese safe and cheese secure, and too much cheese is everywhere. The only entity here is the Cheese Man, which, as you can tell, is a man made out of cheese, and the only colony here is the Cheese Factory. You know, I wonder if this guy likes cheese. <laughs> Next up is a Mugs level called Level 69. The survival difficulty is nice, and you can't stop saying nice. Nice. And lastly, for this pilot episode of the fan-made joke levels, we have a level from Meg called Level Among Us. Nice. Nice isn't the part of the name, I just said nice because, well, whatever. Among Us is class 5, and is unsafe and unsecure, and it's infested with entities. This level probably is one of the worst levels here, and the sound that's being constantly played will make you go insane if you listen to it for long. So whatever you do, please don't no clip here. That's a quote from Meg. The entities are the Among Us, which will end you instantly if you see one. And then there's the sounds, which are entities that literally emit a noise that makes you go insane at lightning speed. And there's no data on how to enter or exit. Nice. Backrooms level 148, aka the living level, is classified as a class 5B, which means it's unsafe, unsecure, and has environmental dangers. Really bad environmental dangers. So just based off of its name, you can tell that this level feels almost like it's alive, because it has this very weird ability to change itself in shape, size, and even change all objects inside of itself. And this level makes those changes happen whenever it senses movement. Even movement as small as your footsteps can make the level warp and change itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, what does this mean? Well, why does the level change itself? Well, no one really knows, of course, but the main theory is that this level is some sort of intelligent entity. And not only does the level have intelligence, it uses that intelligence to manipulate and actively do things with malicious or bad intentions. So it uses 100% of its intelligence to try to hurt wanderers that get sent here. One person even claimed that the level talked to them with an actual voice, but who knows if that's true, because people could just go insane in the back rooms and start hearing stuff. 
but I think it is true. You're about to hear why. So there are two different states that this level can be in. The first is called the basic state, and the second is called the alarm state. In this basic state, the level looks like a bunch of randomly put together halls and open rooms and corridors that are made out of concrete or concrete blocks and some concrete staircases, as well as some random voids that are out of the walls, but pretty much it's just a labyrinth of claustrophobic concrete hallways. And an interesting note is that even in this basic state, things like Smiler repellent and other useful substances have no effect here. They don't even work. It's like the level suppresses them. The next state is the alarm state, and during this alarm state, the level is at its most dangerous part. This is when the entire thing is awake and is causing the most chaos. If you remember when I said earlier that the level might be an entity with intelligence, yeah, this alarm state is when the entity wakes up. If you're running around the level or you're walking loudly, the entity will be able to sense your vibrations and will change the room or hallway or staircase into something dangerous and even deadly to try to trap you or unalive you. On top of this level being angry towards you and actively trying to unalive you during the alarm stage, the lights are also turned off. So that's just fun. And it gets even worse. Just wait till the traps section of this video. The best thing to do during this alarm stage is to just sit down somewhere in the smallest and most enclosed space you can find. That way the level can't hear your vibrations or your footsteps or anything, and then you can just wait it out. Both the basic state and the alarm state can last anywhere from a few hours to several days. So it's advised that no one should come to the level without proper supplies or, you know, just don't come to the level at all and you won't have to worry about it. As I said earlier, the level is called the living level and it's for more reasons than what I just told you. Yes, the level can do even more than hunt you and try to change itself to hurt you even more. And I'm gonna explain why right now. It can also feel things and communicate with you in weird ways. One documented way is that the level can write on its own walls in English to the wanderer. When this happened, it was at its basic state and it wasn't attacking the wanderer, so it's unknown why it tried to contact that person. But yeah. In another sick and twisted example of this level just being plain mean, it also manifests fake exits in its walls in the form of the mimic entity, which is just a fake door that can lead to a high fall or to a void where you're doomed to be there forever. And these doors are random and they're unmarked, and if you go in them, the mimic entity will consume you, uh, so I just recommend not opening any doors here. The level has no actual vision or eyes or anything like that, and it seems to only be able to find people and objects through vibrations. So your best bet is to move slowly and carefully and to make as little noise as possible to get out of here alive. Now is the trap section of the video, and I'm going to be going over the specific level traps that this entity and intelligent thing tries to put you in. The first one is called the flood, and it happens in random hallways and random rooms and corridors, but the level pretty much floods that hall or room with freezing cold water all the way to the ceiling with hopes of getting you stuck in it and drowning. So if you hear a rumble or see a rush of water coming, run the opposite way and get as high up as possible. The second trap is called the squeeze and it's like those rooms that squeeze together slowly except on this level the walls and the ceilings and the floor all close in on each other to try to crush you. This crush can happen in hallways and rooms so if it starts happening try to get out of there before you become a pancake. The next trap is the swivel, which is where the room or hallway you're in bends and curves like kind of a wringing out of a washcloth. Everything is distorted and curved, and it can hurt you pretty bad if you're not careful. Next is another dangerous trap where the level introduces mental issues by trying to control your brain and talking to you. Ugh. And then there's the fire trap where a huge section or the entire hallway you're in is set on fire. <laughs> so yeah, not fun at all but this might be the most innately dangerous level. There's one person of interest who's stuck on this level named Knox, and he's the one who discovered it in the first place. Now, he's not involved with any backrooms organization like Meg. He's just a guy who was unfortunate enough to get sent here and get stuck. Even though other people have been here and escaped, Knox can't. And since the escape is random, you have no choice over it. Interestingly enough, this level actually seems to talk to Knox more than any other person who's been here, which means the level is smart enough to develop a relationship, which is kind of cool, I guess. There is one base here called the Dome, and it's where Knox lives. 
Now the dome is accessed by tiny crawl spaces, which all lead to this small dome shaped ceiling room. And like I said, this is where Nox stays and if you can get there, you should be pretty safe. To enter this level, first off, you shouldn't. But if you can't help it, you have to go, you can no clip through any floor of a basement type area and be sent here. And to exit, you have to accidentally be no clipped out. You have no choice, it just randomly happens or it doesn't. And only a few people have been able to do it. So good luck. The promised land is classified as a class zero and is extremely safe and secure. And it actually used to be considered a level only in legends or tales because no one actually knew if it existed or not. But now it's been pretty much explored extensively, so most of the level is documented. The level itself is a huge building with exactly 300 floors and around 1000 rooms that are spread throughout. And each floor has these pink glowing lights in the ceilings, which would drive me crazy to be honest, but whatever. These lights have been known to randomly turn on or off, so just be aware of that. And all the floors have windows that look out to the outside area, and when it turns daylight outside, the curtains and the windows will disappear, and a floor made out of clouds will appear directly outside the window. Kind of like the floor of level Zenith. This cloud floor actually has these trees that grows in the ground, and they produce a weird fruit, which you can actually eat. The day-night cycle here is pretty much the same as real life, so the windows disappear during the day, but they'll reappear at nighttime. I mentioned earlier that there are over 1,000 room types, so here are some of them. There are bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bathrooms, infirmaries, lounges, shops, an outside area, nightclub area, the business area, and the promised land resort. Each of these areas are pretty much exactly how their name sounds, so I'm not going to describe them. Like, the bedrooms, the bedrooms, the dining rooms, the dining rooms, it's pretty simple. Now a common question asked is, well, where did the promised land come from, or how did it get figured out? Well, according to the fandom, the level's first ever mention was found on a note in level zero near a ripped partygoer's mask. The note said, quote, the last of us are here, and there was a picture of the promised land level next to it. Now nearby that note, there was a book called the promised land that pretty much had all of the level's explanation inside of it. Obviously the level is really chill, and as soon as the book was read, rumors of this sanctuary level spread quickly throughout the back rooms. So lots of people tried to get there, but very few did. There are only two entities here, and those are the cloud trees, which I mentioned earlier, and storks. Which are pretty much storks from real life, except they're more intelligent and tameable. As far as bases here, there are actually a few. The first one is the Backrooms Colonists, which is just a conglomerate of colonies that are loosely linked together. Then there are the Forgiven FOJs, which is a group of the followers of Jerry that somehow got to the level. And as always, they're nice unless you talk trash about Jerry. Lastly, there is the Reliquay Outpost, not sure if that's how you pronounce it, which is just an outpost of soldiers that fought in a war that actually happened on this level a long time ago called the Summer War. To enter this level, you can dive through a painting on level 384, but just like all of the entrances I'm about to say, it's extremely rare for them to work. And there's also a rumor that no clipping into a pink light on level negative 150 will work, but again, just a rumor. It's thought that you can also fall down stairs on that big long numbered level that I went over a few months ago to get here. But as always, you just gotta get lucky. To exit this level, you'll actually be exiting the back rooms, so you just gotta find a door labeled exit, and when you walk through that door, you'll be at the same place where you entered the back rooms from. Pretty cool. This might be one of my favorite theorized exits because it's literally so rare. I feel like it's kind of a myth in a way, you know? Pretty cool. Now unlike most other levels I've covered, there's actually been some documented expeditions to try to find how to get here. There are six expeditions, and the first one was made by four members of the Republic back in 2004. They were sent back to level zero after making it to level 1051. Now the second and third expeditions were not documented, but the fourth one was. This one was made by seven people from the Backrooms Colonist Group. 
It happened last year in 2021, and this is marked as the first conclusive successful mission to get to the promised land. Because when the group made it to level 384, where that painting is, which by the way is an extremely safe level, a member of the group disappeared. And it's thought that they went through the painting and made it to the promised land and feasibly out of the back rooms. The fifth expedition had five more explorers no clip into the painting on level 384 and they haven't been heard from since. So it's just thought they either made it or they're somewhere else. The last expedition had 17 explorers and it's officially known that four of them are currently in the promised land and have not escaped the back rooms. Cool. Backrooms level origin is classified as a class dead zone and is unsuitable for life, exceedingly unstable, and there is one really powerful entity here. Now, as I said in the intro, this level might not actually exist physically in the bounds of the backrooms per se, because the connections to it are very wishy-washy and tumultuous at best, and they don't often work. This level is very similar to the void level in that it's an apparent infinite empty space that has almost no light at all. There's also no gravity and no physical objects and you'll just be floating around a black void. Oh, and there's also no oxygen and I'll explain more on that stuff in a second. This level is what's called a true vacuum, which means there's legitimately no particles of anything in here besides, you know, if there's a person or something. This also means there is no oxygen or air, so unless you can hold your breath or have oxygen tanks with you for some reason, you might meet your end due to suffocation. So, you actually get to this level, level origin, from the void level by staying in there longer than it's recommended for an hour or so, which in turn means that level origin is a very dangerous and unpredictable level due to the fact that a large amount of objects can randomly be no clipped in and out constantly from the void and since the void is so big and expansive there could be thousands and millions of objects in there they can just teleport into the level of origin so theoretically you could just be floating around level origin and a rogue entity that got stuck in the void could be no clipped right next to you and then eat your feet off or something i don't know this is why level origin is indeed considered one of the most dangerous levels of all time plus there are also random rips in the space time continuum you know nothing too crazy however However, it's actually thought that no clipping into one of these rips might send you to reality, but more on that later. Other than the constant stream of things glitching in and out of this area, there's thought to be one single very smart entity that looks over the level and controls it all in some way. And this entity seemingly changes how time itself works. So five seconds in level origin could actually be days outside of the level. Since there isn't a physical shape to the level that can be seen, like it is in a big square in a big rectangle room or something, it's thought that the shape might be a four-dimensional shape. This would mean objects and stuff will seem to stay in one spot, no matter how far away or how close you get to them. Spooky stuff. On top of that weird stuff, you also won't be able to see any other people that are sent here as well. Even though you'll be able to see almond water bottles, other objects, and entities that get sent here, you won't be able to see actual people, which is is a weird common phenomenon in the back rooms. So, so far this level is a vacuum void with no oxygen and objects constantly clipping and no clipping in and out that could hurt you. And there's no way to perceive time or space because the level is 4D and controlled by a crazy entity. Now I'm sure you're asking, well how can that get worse? But oh wait, it can. There is a certain anomaly hidden in this level called the doorway, which is an extremely bright rectangle that leaks perfectly white light from inside of it. Now, the structure doesn't seemingly have any depth or dimension to it, it's just a 2D glowing rectangle, but that could also be wrong since the entirety of level origin is 4D and you can't perceive shapes, but this rectangle emits some kind of electromagnetic radiation in bursts. No one knows what's inside the rectangle or what's past it, but but it can be assumed that the entity that I've been hinting at lives behind it. And that entity is called the unknown. And now I'm going to explain it.
Unknown is a very powerful entity that has the ability to control reality inside of Level Origin, and possibly even further out into other levels as well. It has mild telepathy and can seemingly choose objects to fly in and out of the void and also choose where they go. Unknown can also alter time and space however it wants, and it can make hours last seconds and vice versa. And these powers I just said are thought to be just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the full reach of powers the entity might have. It could have a lot more. It's also thought that the entity is tied to some deeper roots in the back rooms and maybe even the creation of it. But all that's just speculation right now, and no one knows for sure. There's a log on this level entry page where some wanderer got sent here and unknown said he had to unalive the wanderer due to a promise. So whatever that means. Creepy stuff. Why did this entity promise he would unalive wanderers? I don't know, man. There are no outposts here, of course, and to enter, you have to be in the void for a long time and get chosen to be sent here by unknown, and to exit, there's probably no true way. But it's thought that you might be able to get sent to real life if you no-clip into one of those random space-time continuum vacuums that I talked about. Just a theory, though. It could be totally wrong. Or it could be another fake exit, which the backrooms loves to tease us with. My suggestion is to not go to that white rectangle because I don't believe it's a real exit, but who knows? So Backroom Civil 941, aka Holiday Spirit, is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe, secure, and as a small entity count. The level physically looks like a house that's been decorated for Christmas. There's Christmas trees, fireplaces, wreaths, lights, garland, and literally every type of Christmas decoration that you would see in a big fancy house. Now the house itself is way bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside, and it has a ton of rooms. But the main thing about this level is the calming feeling that it gives everyone who comes here. Just a relaxing Christmas type of vibe. I mean, how can it get any better? In every room, there is a radio system that plays old Christmas music. And when that's turned on, it just adds to the chillness of the level. Now alongside there being living rooms, there's also kitchens connected to them. These kitchens are full of food, specifically food that you'd find at a traditional American Christmas dinner. Ham, gravy, turkey, mashed potatoes, apple cider, jello, that type of thing. There's also desserts, if anyone's wondering. The food is always fresh and it's always safe to eat, and this level is just getting better and better to me. Now, if you walk out of the kitchen, you'll be in a living room. One of them, at least. They're all massive, and they all have huge Christmas trees in them. All the trees have presents under them, and everything's just fully decorated and maxed out. It's like Christmas threw up all over these rooms. There's actually a few spots in the level where you can find a staircase that goes up. These staircases, of course, are also decorated with garland and lights, but if you walk up the stairs, you'll see some bedrooms and bathrooms, which also are decorated for Christmas. And that's all fun and dandy inside, but you can actually go outside of the house if you want to, and if you do, you'll see a yard that's covered in snow. The level stays around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 6 Celsius, and it's pretty chilly, so you probably should wear a coat. Now, the house itself is actually alone, and it's in the middle of a forest, and there are no other buildings close to you. It's just one normal-looking house that's way bigger on the inside than on the outside, sitting out in the middle of the forest with decorations everywhere. If you do wander into the forest, it doesn't matter how far you do, you'll eventually no-clip back to the front of the house. But you might think the holiday joy stops there. Well, you'd be wrong. If you walk down the dirt path that leads to and from the house, you'll eventually walk to a town. Now, you can only do this by finding where the dirt road is, because if you don't go and you just go out into the middle of the woods, you'll get sent back to the house. The dirt road will be covered in snow, but you have to fight it to get to the town. The town itself is a very festive and populated town, and it's populated with faceling entities. Of course, you guessed it, the town is decorated for Christmas. There are shops and buildings, and it looks like a nice older town. The buildings are inside and out decorated, but there are a few specific buildings that I will mention. A food market, a skating rink, and a Christmas tree store. There's even a candy store. But yeah, it's pretty much like a Christmas town. How can you go wrong with a Christmas town? Let's be real. Now, you might think that the holiday joy ends there too, maybe. But again, you'd be wrong. 
Because if you walk to the end of the road through the town, you'll find a mine. Yes, a mine. And this mine is more like a cave, but inside of it, you'll see a Christmas decoration heaven as well. Hanging lights, presents, garland, everything like that in this mine is just amazing. It's just a Christmas mine. I mean, what else can I say? Inside the mine, there are actually gems that smell like peppermint. That's pretty much it. It's just like Christmas vomited inside of a mine. If you want to go back to the original house from the town or from the mine, all you have to do is walk off the road, back to the woods, and you'll be teleported back to the house, and then you can just chill there as long as you want to. That's where I'd be staying, because I love Christmas, and I couldn't get enough of it. But whatever you do, listen to what I'm about to say. Do not go to this last part of the level, because this spot is dangerous. The last part is the basement, and it can randomly be accessed if a set of downward stairs appears. They're pretty rare, but if they do, do not walk down there because nobody has a clue what's down there. It could be entities, could be nothing but darkness. All we know is that we can't see all the way down. It's just dark. Stay upstairs where it's chill and colorful. I mean, why would you want to leave? But yeah, how can you not love an entire level dedicated to Christmas? If you don't like it, there's a good chance that you're a Scrooge, for real. And who wants to be a Scrooge? Backrooms level negative 69, or the Roads to Abyss, is classified as a class 1A obstructive, which means that it's safe, has no creatures or entities, but has a very strange abstract environment that could be potentially dangerous. The level also has another nickname, which is the Foggy Avenue, because it looks like a huge, expansive landscape of nothing but metropolitan roads, bridges, overpasses, that kind of stuff, with fog everywhere. So, the Foggy Avenue. The level is kind of laid out similarly to a huge dystopian city, but without the buildings. And it's like this because of how many roads there are that overlap each other, go into the ground, come out of the ground. It just seems so awe-inspiringly big. And that thick layer of fog never leaves the level, and it's really just everywhere at all times. It makes it impossible to see to the sky, so no one knows it's up there. And it also makes it really hard to see far in front of you. I mean, you can hardly even see 10 feet in front of you. And the fog itself can be any color, but the main common colors are orangish or bluish. And sometimes it makes it both. The actual architecture here is pretty weird too, because the roads and the bridges are made out of normal concrete and that kind of stuff from real life, but it's all stiff and foreign looking to humans. It looks almost like a blank slate for something that's not done yet, and there's nothing except roads, signs, stoplights and stop signs and stuff like that, and just this unfinished, unrefined look. On top of all that weird stuff, some of the bridges and overpasses have these really weird geometric patterns carved into the sides of them, which leads some people to speculate that this level wasn't created by humans, that it was created by another race of something, like aliens. Some places look like there should be skyscrapers there or some kind of building, but there's nothing, just a huge concrete slab. And there's no buildings at all on this level. There also aren't any vehicles either. Though the entire level is made up out of roads, there's no cars to be on them, which is cool and weird. Most of the actual roads don't have any visible starting point or stopping point, but there are some that pop out of the ground in random places and go straight up or sideways or right back into the ground. It, uh, it's weird. There are also traffic lights, stop signs, yield signs, intersection signs, and stuff like that placed in extremely random locations as well. And some of the lights aren't even at street corners or intersections. And they're just placed in the middle of the road randomly where there wouldn't even need to be a stop sign or stop light. So it makes us all question, what are the purposes of these lights? And why are they randomly placed? Some of the roads are looping and twirling. They almost look like roller coasters, which just adds to the confusion of trying to map out this level. But because unlike in normal real life cities, where the roads are laid out in grid patterns or similarly recognizable patterns, this level has no pattern. There is no method to this level. It's completely random and you can't even map it out or understand it because there's no usable geometry to do it with. Some think that in the past there might have been a group of people that lived here but fled for some reason, which leaves the level with this sort of post-apocalyptic feel. 
But that might not be true because there's not any graffiti or anything like that here, or marks in general. In fact, there's not even any chips in the concrete, no potholes, no chunks missing, no weathering of any kind. It doesn't exist here. And since nothing is broken or chipped, and none of the concrete looks sunbaked or broken whatsoever, the level is thought to be maybe invincible to time. Time might not affect stuff here. And the level is also constantly nighttime, so that'll help with not fading things away. The level also has some other anomalous features, which I'm about to get into. The first one is that it is impossible for two people to be sent to the same spot here at the same time. So if you and a friend no clip from a different level to try to get here, you will not end up in the same spot. Even if you no clipped from the same spot, you'll be sent to opposite sides of this level, and this level is infinite, so there's no point in finding them. The next anomalous feature is that fog that I talked about. It's the main anomaly here, well, because it's always there. And because it can change completely in color depending on where you are in the level. It could be in one section and it could be blue, and then 600 feet over, it could be orange. It all depends. The fog also induces this feeling of paranoia and anxiousness, and it makes you feel like you're being watched, because you can't really see into it or see past it, so you never know what's lurking in there looking at you. And those feelings of paranoia and stuff like that are amplified when the level starts to randomly play old music throughout its streets. Yes, that's right. The third anomaly is this random music that comes out of nowhere just when the wanderer is at their most paranoid point. That's when it starts, is when you're getting real paranoid. And that just pushes you right over the edge to insanity, I would say. And these next two anomalies that are the last ones add a really strange level of creepiness to this level. The first one is called the upside upside down, no, not Stranger Things, and the other one is called The Lights. So this upside down is an anomaly where randomly the entire level inverts itself into two halves. One half's on the ground and one is in the sky. Both versions have a gravity field and they can both be walked on if you can somehow get up there. But after a few minutes, the upside down anomaly will just disintegrate and leave anyone who is up there at the top falling into the void. Now that's really tough, isn't it? The last anomaly is the lights, and they look like these sparkling fireworks in the sky. Uh, the cause for them isn't known, and they only happen a few times a year, but uh, no one knows anything about them. So there's not much to say. There are no outposts here, and to enter this level, you can come from the regular level 69, which is just a huge straight road with concrete walls on each side, and to exit, you can get up in the upside down part at the top and fall down into the void to maybe be sent out, we don't know. Or out of nowhere, this level can send you out with no warning to level 413. No one knows how this happens or where it happens or why, it just does, and you can just be randomly sent there. That's pretty neat. So on the Backrooms Wikidot, there are two enigmatic levels called the Whiteout and the Blackout. So I decided to go ahead and cover them both in one video, and I'll start with the Whiteout. This level is classified as a Class 0 and is extremely safe with no entities. It looks like a house, but everything is perfectly white, hence the name Whiteout. This house seems like it's always having repairs done, and it's always under construction, so you might run into some construction tools or stuff like that. The level is also really bright constantly and reflects off of the white surfaces. It's so bright, in fact, that when people come here, they claim to go temporarily blind when they immediately enter. Nice. Now, since the level surfaces are all whites and the light is so bright, wow, I'm rhyming here, it's possible that you could get lost inside the level and maybe forget where you came from. So it is recommended to only stay here for a really short amount of time. It's also important to not stay here for long since the doors to leave the level, to go back to level negative one, will disappear and reappear randomly. So you need to find them as fast as possible and don't dilly dally. Like I said earlier, there's no known entities here, but that was kind of a lie because there's one really mysterious entity called the Maker that frequents this level. Although it is thought that he doesn't actually live here, but he's been seen here multiple times. Apparently the guy can talk, and he even refers to himself as the Maker, and he wears a white suit and sometimes a matching white hat too. Some witnesses say that he actually has a face, although they can't remember what the face looks like, so something weird's happening there. 
The guy can also walk right through walls with ease and is impervious to any physical contact or anything like that. It just goes right through him. But he is physically there because you can like touch him. No one knows where he gets his power from or how he got to the back rooms, which makes it even more mysterious. But to be honest with you, he sounds cool to me. There's only been one recorded conversation with him by a Meg Explorer, and the Meg Explorer asked, What are you? And the Maker answered, quote, Whatever you think I could be, end quote, and then faded out of existence. That, what? That is cool. There aren't any big bases here, since it's kind of hard to live, you know, with being blind and all. But there are some small communities that meet here, and to enter this level, you have to go through a door on level negative one, but it's not known which door it is, and to exit the level, you have to go out the door that you came in from if it hasn't disappeared yet. That's the only problem, it disappears sometimes, and it'll take you right back to level negative one. So yeah, this level is a level, completely blindingly white. Looks like a house, and there's a random guy in a white suit that appears randomly and fades away randomly. Nice. Now next up obviously is the blackout level, and it's considered to be a parallel level to the whiteout. It's classified as a class 5, so it's really dangerous, and has creatures, which completely contrast the whiteout. And it mirrors the whiteout level in its specific design and layout, but instead of it being perfectly white, it's an abandoned, nasty house covered in cobwebs and broken floorboards. Smilers and hounds are the main entities here that roam the halls, but sometimes random voices have been heard echoing down the hallways, so there might be something else down there. There's also been reports of random screaming, so uh, yeah. The windows on this level can actually be looked out of, unlike the whiteout level, where if you look out those windows, you'll just see white. Here, you'll see a field at nighttime. You can't break the window to go out there and explore, but the field is the exact same location and thing you see out of every window, so it might be a fake thing, but we don't know. Sometimes wanderers report looking out those windows and seeing tall shadows with white eyes walking around, which is scary to say the least. The level also has a level exclusive entity called the Bride. She looks like a pale ghost in a wedding gown and normally just follows people around the level. She's sometimes heard and even been seen crying in random rooms. So that's kind of sad. The maker entity from the whiteout seems to have some sort of connection to the bride because there's pictures of them together on the blackout level, but he's never been seen physically here. So like, maybe they're not able to get to each other. I don't know. There's no basis here and every group that comes here hasn't made it out to tell the tale, because it's really dangerous from the entities. And the only way to enter the level is to go really deep into the whiteout until you find a gray door that opens up to the blackout, and when you go through it, it shuts and locks itself. And there really isn't even a confirmed exit, so it looks like you're doomed to wander the smiler and hound infested halls with the ghost bride crying lady following you. Sounds fun to me. So, Backroom's level Vitrum Madness is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe and secure, but there are a couple psychological issues that might come up later, but I'll discuss those in depth in a minute. The level itself was discovered way back on April 30th, 1934, and the first known picture of this level, which is this one, was that same day, and it literally might be the first ever picture taken in the Backrooms. This picture looks way different than the level does now, which means that the level somehow changed its environment over time. Cool. The level itself is made up of linear corridors made out of greenhouses, or conservatories. These greenhouses look like they're meant to host some kind of event, because a lot of them have tables and chairs and furniture that look like people were sitting in them. The floor in these greenhouses are made out of stone, and a long stone pathway runs through each of them. But sometimes there's a wall of glass, or just the greenhouse wall ends. 
and they won't connect properly, but that's whatever. If you look outside of the glass walls to see where the level takes place, it's definitely not where you think it would be, because the level seems to be positioned inside of an empty, obscure sky. Like, there's just nothing. It's floating up in a misty void. Now, some people think there are support beams under it, and some people think it's just floating. No one can agree on what's holding it up, so just believe whatever you want to. Now, on your journey through the greenhouses, you'll eventually run into one that's filled to the brim with plants specifically flowers, and there will be bouquets and ferns and that type of thing everywhere. Most of them seem to look like flower shops from real life, and some even have welcome signs and checkout places too, even though they're all empty. Most of the signs and tags are weird though, because they're either blank or have blurred text. But yeah, who knows? It's the back rooms. What else did you expect? Now, the tables I mentioned earlier that look like people were sitting at them, most of them actually have plates of food on them, and some of the plants in the greenhouses also grow what looks to be edible food. But whatever you do, do not eat anything you see here, no matter how good or how normal it looks, because if you eat something, you'll start to develop sharp body pains that could lead to cardiac arrest. So no matter how hungry you are, do not eat anything. I repeat, do not eat anything. The weather and climate inside of this level stays pretty normal throughout the whole year and throughout most of the greenhouses. It hovers anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 59 degrees to 68 Fahrenheit, so it's a comfortable temperature. But there's something else that you might need to watch out for, and that is the rain showers. These rain showers are very common in this level, and they actually happen about every hour. Sometimes, though, a heavy storm can pop up with thunder and lightning, but it's normally just a misty rain. And this misty rain makes it extremely relaxing. It also makes the entire place smell like almond water. But no one knows if the rain is almond water, or if it's just a coincidence. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, why doesn't someone just try to break the glass and see what's outside? Well the answer is, you can't. You cannot break the glass, it's indestructible, no matter what's been tried, no one can break it. So for now, we'll go with the theory that this is just an infinite floating greenhouse. The level has a constant sound of slight drizzling and the atmosphere feels damp and cool, and to be honest, it seems like just a really relaxing place to sit in the chair and chill. But you might not want to do that because now it's time to talk about these psychological issues that I hinted at earlier. So after a short amount of time in this level, you'll start to hear music softly playing off in the distance. This music is very captivating and calming, and it's actually addictive to listen to. The source of the music is unknown, but some people have theories about it. Some posit that it's a hallucination, that you're just hearing things, but then again, there's been audio recordings of the level that show that the music is real because it's in the recording. Some people think that the music comes from an undocumented entity hiding deep in the greenhouse somewhere that tries to lure you in closer. But none of that has been confirmed. For all we know, it could just be music randomly playing. Whatever you do though, do not let the music pull you really deeply into the level because people have never been seen again once they've gone chasing after it. The next psychological issue is this thing called the Vitrum Madness, which is actually the name of the level, of course, but that's also the name of a madness or a psychological disorder that happens only on this level. This is a psychological phenomenon that literally only happens when you're on this level. It causes you to hallucinate or actually see things we don't know. Some people have reported seeing an expansive, thriving environment outside of the glass walls of the greenhouses, which like I said earlier, there's supposed to be nothing outside of these walls, it's just a white void. So this madness and this psychological phenomenon is causing people to see things that aren't there. Once they see this environment with their own eyes, they start to break down psychologically and they'll have mental breakdowns and have panic attacks and that kind of thing. They go crazy. So yeah, there's definitely some funky stuff happening in this level. Just watch out when you get here and try not to go crazy. Go check out the full article in the description if you want to know all about this madness syndrome, because there's way more stuff that I couldn't cover in this video, it's too long. But if you're interested, go check below. Getting to this level with someone or a group of people is apparently impossible, because the entrances have been tried with groups, and none of it works. So yeah, good luck with being lonely. It's also important to note that entering this level normally happens by accident because no one purposely comes here. It normally just so happens to be an accident. The same goes with leaving. It's all accidental. There's only one entity that lives here, and it's this thing. It's called the Philodosae, 
or phyllodose, I think is how you say it, and they live in the soil inside the flower pots of this level. They normally stay really chill and just look like big slug worm type deals, but if you try to cause harm or cut them or something, they'll rapidly grow larger and try to attack you. Uh, yeah, wish I was making that up, but I'm not. It's really hard to enter this level, and it's kind of like a roadblock for people who are trying to get past it to explore more of the back rooms, but there are about 10 confirmed entrances that have worked before, however, However, at any given time, none of them could be working. One is from level zero, you have to find a glass door that's just in a wall there. And there are nine other ways to enter too, you can check them out in the description. Now to exit, there's only been two confirmed ways, and one of them is if you suddenly lose consciousness and pass out, you might wake up on level 45, or you could just randomly be walking and just wake up on level 14. That's all we got. There's literally no real confirmed exit, those are just where people have gone, we think. It's hard to leave this place, so I just recommend not going. Up first for the video is a level that a ton of people over on my Discord server have sent me in the past few days. If you want to join the Discord, it'll be in the description. And I literally thought that it was a joke at first, but apparently it's real. And it's Backrooms level 756, aka, quote, On Big Island live only one cow. End quote. Yes, that's exactly what it's called. Level 756 is classified as a class 0 difficulty, so it's pretty safe and you won't really have to worry about any entities except the cow. The level is split up into 8 different islands that are apparently floating in a void of fog and mist. And there are sometimes oak trees on the islands, but mainly they're just made up of grass and dirt. The island that's in the very middle of this cluster is actually smaller than a regular city block, and the rest of the islands surround it in a circular pattern, and they're all connected by these rope bridge things that you've all seen before. The first weird thing about this level, minus its name, is that there's a distorted sound of piano music being played constantly on the level from an unknown source. And no, it's not the cow. People who have actually been here say that the music calms them down, and they actually refer to it as relaxing and melancholic. Nice. There's even an account of a wanderer saying that the level makes all of your thoughts and memories of your real life fade away, and then the level overwhelms you with the feeling that you're just a small speck in the sea of existence. That's pretty weird, if you ask me. The level has no entities, except for that one single cow that lives in the middle island. The cow only notices people, it doesn't actually interact with them, and it never even moves from the spot it's in. It just stands there, in the same position, and looks at people. Some people have actually touched the cow, and they say that when they did that, an overwhelming sense of sadness washes over them. So Brugley says, don't touch the cow. There isn't a confirmed entrance to this level, but it is known that when people come here, it's sudden and quick and random. And most of the time, people who come here have been reportedly not right in the head before they were here. So spooky. And when people get here to exit, they typically just lay on the grass and eventually fall asleep, which then makes them wake up in their bed, feeling content with life and much happier. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool level. It's pretty weird, but it's cool. But it's really weird. The next level for today's video is level 409, aka the Paper Rooms. This level has a class 1 survival difficulty, and is relatively safe. The level is a massive expanse of rooms that are changing all the time, but are completely made out of paper. Like the paper you write on. The walls are literally just two pieces of paper thick. And this means that the walls themselves can easily be broken and are really fragile, so anyone can just tear them or rip them or do whatever they want to, it's just paper. The level is said to look kinda like level zero, but with slight differences in the wallpaper design and layout, but obviously the main difference is that the walls here can just be torn down by anybody. The ceiling on this level is actually a perfectly white void, that also emits a kind of light for the level. Apparently, the light's really bright. And the floor of this level is actually made out of cardboard, which is just barely more durable than the paper walls and can easily be torn into. And actually, if you break through the cardboard, you'll be able to see down into level 410. So that's pretty cool. This cardboard is actually a resource that's harvested for the base here called Fort Origami. Yep, that's right. The Paper Rooms has a base called Fort Origami. Creative. 
Fort Origami is the only big group here on level 409, and they're set up in a huge open area that they made by tearing down paper walls to have a huge open room. There's 19 people in the whole base, but there's actually a subgroup inside of this group that's about 6 people, and those 6 people travel around to different levels, searching for supplies and food to keep the entire 19 people alive. And they apparently chose to set up shop on this level to avoid the clutter of other levels. Based? The next group on this level isn't really a group, but it's a BNTG outpost. It's called BNTG Outpost Intercia, which is just a settlement set up by the BNTG group while they finish a full base here. It's located on the outskirts of the level and it houses supplies, weaponry, food, clothing, just you know, typical stuff. But it's like a temporary base until they get their full base up and going. There's actually one entity here, believe it or not, and it's called the Folds. These things are large pieces of paper that from far away look like crumbled up jumbles of paper. But when you get closer, you can see that each fold is deliberate and that it's not one piece of paper, it's individual cards. These cards no clip through each other and end up making non-Euclidean shapes, which is supposedly mesmerizing and even hypnotic in a way to people passing by because the cards themselves will slowly rotate and fold in on themselves and create this sort of hypnosis thing. The fold entity is completely harmless and they have been seen repairing the broken walls or floors on this level. And they've even been heard singing to wanderers as they pass by. That's right, singing. And on top of this, they're actually invincible because the paper that makes them up can heal itself when it's torn. So if you like tear a piece off of a fold, it'll literally just grow back instantly. So don't try to break one. To enter this level, you can find a set piece on level 104 that's made completely out of paper and you just go into that set piece and look away from the exit door and you'll be sent here. You can exit this level by a couple ways, one of them being breaking directly through the floor and jumping into level 410. Or you can just go through a random door that'll open up to exit to level 1 or any other random level. Yeah, I think this was pretty weird. It's literally level 0 but made completely out of paper with a cardboard floor. I mean, that just seems creepy. Backrooms level 11.3, or the Red Light District, is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is very unsafe and unsecure, and it is infested with entities. But not the normal ones, I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. But it's always good when a level starts out that way, isn't it? This level is a dark and sinister and cryptic corrupt cityscape that's thought to be located somewhere near the regular level 11. The level itself looks like a huge city with a creepy red glow coming from the sky. Even the actual air itself in this level is toxic, and it can lead to visual and audio hallucinations. The middle of the city has tall skyscrapers and bridges, and the outside of the city has warehouses and apartment buildings and other private areas, all of which are abandoned. And the deeper you go into the level, the denser and more convoluted and confusing the concrete maze of buildings becomes. And this maze of buildings can be extremely confusing because, you know, the air is toxic and the streets are like a maze and entities are swarming you. All this adds up to a pretty confusing level. But trust me when I say that it gets worse. The weather and the temperature of this level can range anywhere from being sweaty and muggy to being freezing and snowing in just a few minutes. That's right, it can go from literally 100 degrees to like 20 degrees. During the snowstorms and heat waves, there is sometimes red lightning that strikes in the distance over the city. This sudden change in weather and the lightning can also be very dangerous if you stay out in it for too long. Now so far, every building that's been searched into has been completely empty and barren. Almost like it's been picked through already before, so no one knows if there was once any people living here, or if it's just been taken over by others already. But as far as we know, the level just got discovered, so. Now as I said in the beginning, this level is infested with entities, but it's mainly just one single entity called the Servants. Now, these Servants are semi-humanoid creatures 
creatures that have ashy dark skin with red colored eyes. They seem to have some kind of social class system where some are dressed better than others and some are less aggressive than others, some live in better buildings than others, but the servants are called the servants because they serve a more powerful race of entity called the ambassadors, which I'm gonna make an entire entity short on, but pretty much the ambassadors are these sentient floating alien-like cubes that are very, very old and smart and they can control things in very strange ways. Like these things go deep into the history of the back rooms and they seem to have been there since the existence of it and they control the servant entities here. Most of the servants here are not instantly aggressive when they see a person, but if you get in their way or you make them mad or something, then yeah, they're gonna get mad and they're probably gonna chase you. And when they do get angry, they will try to lure you or chase you and corner you into a dark alleyway and trap you there. And when you're stuck in this alley, way they use your fear and your paranoia to harm you into being so scared that you can't move and once you're that scared they'll then attack and they'll restrain you but they won't fully unalive you in fact they will take you somewhere alive no one knows where it is but the wiki dot entry literally says quote do not be taken alive end quote maybe they take humans and transform them into whatever they are or something like that either way it's pretty terrifying to think what they do to people who they capture. There's a recovered audio log on the entry that might give some clues onto what the servants do with people or what they even are. So go check that out if you're interested. It's pretty cool. And in the audio, there is an ambassador entity that talks to the person and it says, you have two options. You can pledge loyalty and serve or you can try to resist and be enslaved as a mindless tool for eternity. So I'm pretty sure I was right about them capturing humans. It seems like the ambassadors capture people and turn them into these servants to do their bidding for them. It's pretty creepy stuff. It's kind of like doomsday in a way. There's also been really weird books found in this level that talk about a huge thing called the red capital, which apparently is a red rot type of substance that is a curse to all upcoming civilizations. The books also talk a lot about the ancient civilizations of the back rooms and the people that have been here forever, and they show pictures of very weird architecture and people worshipping the ambassadors, just a ton of really weird, creepy, cryptic stuff. The ambassador cube entities I mentioned earlier seem to go to this one specific building deep into the maze of skyscrapers here. The building has been nicknamed the Embassy, and and it's heavily defended by servants, so no one knows what goes on inside of it. All that's known is that a weird hum comes out of it. So this is the back rooms. None of it makes sense. And that's exactly why it's amazing. To enter this level, you can come from level 11, the regular one, by walking to the outskirts of the city and no clipping into a dark alleyway. Or you can find anything that's a little more red than normal in level 11 and no clip through it. To exit, you have to run as far away from the center of the city as possible until you find some sort of bridge that goes over the water. And these bridges are said to lead back to the regular level 11, but there are tons of servants guarding them, so uh, good luck! Level 981, or False Tranquility. Level 981 is classified as a class dead zone because of a bunch of environmental dangers and an anomalous, powerful entity that lives here that I'll talk about in a second. The level itself looks pretty safe, actually, when you first get here. You'll see a nice scenic sidewalk that has cherry blossom trees on each side and fresh green grass as well. This path goes on forever in forward direction and the backwards direction, so you're just taking a nice stroll in this level right? Wrong. At the beginning, you'll think this level is safe until you start to stay here for longer. Because once you stop looking at those pretty trees, you'll notice that you can't actually leave the path to get to the grass. So you're kind of stuck on this one sidewalk and that there's an invisible barrier keeping you on this sidewalk. You'll also start to feel electricity in the air and this electric field around you. And then after about 10 minutes of feeling that stuff, those cherry blossom trees will emit a toxin into the air that's extremely dangerous. When you breathe in this toxin, which you literally will have to because you can't run away, you're stuck on the sidewalk, 
you'll start to notice a change in the level. A very dark change, you could say. It's pretty trees and grass in the sky will change to empty trees, dead grass, and a gray sky, and every alive thing from earlier will start to look decayed. The nice path you were on will turn into an old wooden plank path, and it's rotting and cracking and full of termites. After an hour of being exposed to this toxin and on this level, you'll start to get very, very paranoid about everything. The trees will start to look like they're moving around and walking and trying to grab you, and the pathway will look different too. And scariest of all, you'll start to see a figure dashing between trees on each side of the path. It's moving so fast that you really can't see what it is, but you kinda can, just not for sure. And this figure is called the Pestilence Keeper. Almost nothing is known about this entity's motives or about the entity in general, but what is known is that it's a pretty tall humanoid shape that has a huge swarm of bugs that make up the outside of its body. The entity is seemingly waiting for you to give up from all the paranoia and craziness that you're experiencing from this toxin and to just lay down and stop moving moving so it can attack you. Now once this entity starts dashing around, everything in the level is starting to go pitch black. The ground is covered in tar and the grass isn't even there anymore, and the sky is brown and black, and everything is fully decomposed. And the Pestilence Keeper is slowly walking towards you as the level decomposes around you. Nice. There is no outpost here, obviously, and to enter this level you have to fall asleep on level 39 under a cherry blossom tree, and to exit it. Well, good luck finding one. When you hop on the internet at your own house, your personal IP address is sent up into the cloud to whatever website you're on. And people or companies or spyware and whatever can literally see where you're at. They know you're there. Which is why today's sponsor, NordVPN, comes in so clutch when it comes to protecting yourself online. When you use NordVPN, your personal IP is masked and it's hidden from all these malicious ads or spyware or hackers and whatnot, you can set your IP to pretty much anywhere you can think of by just selecting a country on the list. So if I go over here and I click connect to the UK, everything online will think I'm from the UK. And the best part is NordVPN will protect you without even slowing down your internet or your gaming or your streaming services. So you can do all those things worry-free of malicious people and worry-free of lag. It's 2022, y'all. Everybody should be using a VPN. And NordVPN is a great one to use. And if you want to support my channel, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Brugly and you'll get a massive discount on the two-year plan. And you get four additional months completely free. There's also no stress because you can try Nord risk-free thanks to their 30-day money-back guarantee. So check out nordvpn.com forward slash Brugly to get protected. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to it, shall we? Next up for the video is level 145230 from Miko Zero over on Discord. This level is also known as level Railway Runout. And it's classified as a class 3 difficulty, with it being unsafe and unsecure, with a pretty high entity count, honestly. The actual level is an infinite railroad with trains that run along it constantly. This railroad cuts through scenic wilderness, streams, hills, and valleys, and overall just dense forest. However, when you get to the level, you don't actually spawn on the train, you'll be in the wilderness near it, where all the entities are. The train itself is moving decently fast, but you can manage to get onto it if you grab a handle and just jump on, and then if you do that, you'll be safe from the entity hordes in the woods. The weather here is always cold and snowy, and the sun never fully rises. It's stuck at sunrise forever. And as I mentioned just now, the wilderness around the train is covered in creatures like hounds, smilers, skin givers, and other common ones in the back rooms. But you can avoid them by getting on the train. The entire the entire level is infinite, and it seems that new wilderness keeps being made over and over again. It keeps being generated. The inside of the train looks like a cozy retro interior with tables and booths, and overall, it's pretty relaxing. It's kind of like the train from Polar Express. To enter this level, you can jump through a window on level 4, and to exit, you have to get on the train and make your way to the front to find the stopping emergency brake, and then if you pull it, you'll be sent out. 
But yeah, this one was a super liminal space type level. I really liked it, and I hope you did too. Next for the video is Level Heaven from Capitan Pavel. This level has a survival difficulty of zero and is safe and secure with no creatures. Level Heaven looks like an endless swirling maze of hallways and walls and roofs, all of them being made out of glass. The floor of the level is light gray and is the only thing that isn't actually glass. Since the walls and the ceilings are see-through, well, you can see outside, and what you'll see is a very relaxing, pretty sky. And in the sky, you'll see clouds and that kind of deal, and it's normally perfectly blue. There are not any entities in this level, it's just you and hundreds of miles of huge glass hallways looking out over an infinite sky. It's pretty chill if you ask me. To enter this level, well, this is when it gets tricky because you have to unalive. Which is actually why this place is called Heaven, because there is a small chance that you'll be sent here if you do unalive in the back rooms. Because no one really knows where a person goes if they kick the bucket in the back rooms. But it is known that being sent to this level, Heaven, is a possibility. To exit the level, you have to walk for miles and miles until you find a black door, which will just randomly appear. Once you find that black door, you have to open it up, and you'll be sent out of the level. Pretty neat, but I wouldn't try to unalive just to come here. And lastly for this video is Level Moon Beach from Izzy. Level Moon Beach is classified as a class 1 survival difficulty and is safe and secure and is pretty vibey. The level is split into a few different islands with one main one being the center of attention. And this main island is full of lush plants and sand and all of it is covered in different shades of blue. The sky in the level only has a moon in it. No stars, no clouds, just a moon. Which never moves and it never changes changes and it casts a blue glow onto everything below it. There's actually a few abandoned villages on some of the other islands that surround the main one, and the houses in those villages are made out of a stone called blue stone, which has never been found anywhere else except here. It's indestructible and it glows faintly blue, like all the other things here, and it's kind of worshipped by the entities that live here. There is one specific entity that worships them, and it's the only entity that lives here, and there is no name for this entity, but they're medium-sized humanoids that are bald and they wear rags. So, kind of like a monk or something. These creatures seem to worship the blue moon in the sky, and they have this blue moon relic stone thing in their camps that they're very protective of. They kind of worship it and pretend like it's a god or something. Very interesting. They're pretty nice if you don't ag them on, you know, you don't want to rough them up or anything, but in passing, they're pretty chill. To enter this peaceful level, you have to find some objects that are shaped like a crescent moon on any other level and touch it and you'll be sent here. But yeah, that was a pretty peaceful level if I do say so myself. However, I don't really trust the cult that much. So level Globophobia, or level Balloon, as the normies call it, is a scary expanse of hallways that are partially or fully filled with balloons. The balloons here have been reported to be any color, from red to blue to yellow to green, you get the point. They're all colors. Now the actual balloons themselves are in very strange spots on the level. I don't know if you've ever let a balloon go in your house or something, but if you do that, they'll typically just float up to the ceiling, because they're full of helium. But the ones here can literally be any Anywhere. They could be floating in the middle of hallways, on the floor, stuck to the wall, and just literally in the most random places possible, with seemingly no explanation of why they're there. And the ones that are stuck to surfaces like walls and ceilings and floors are really stuck. Like, it's gonna be extremely hard or impossible to pull them off that structure. And there's not even any tape or glue or anything holding them there. They're just naturally stuck. Weird. Now, with all that out of the way, I can finally talk about the physical level itself. And the balloons. To be honest, this level is something that you might see in a nightmare. It's a winding, snake-like structure of interconnected hallways with stucco walls, which are just 
like plaster, and then wooden floors. It seems like a place that you'd be running away from something inside of a nightmare or a dream, except you aren't dreaming here, you're actually here, so good luck. Anyways, the colors of the walls can also range from red to yellow to green to blue, just like the colors of the balloons, which actually kind of adds to that weird trippiness of the level. As far as we know, the level actually does abide by regular Euclidean geometry, which means there's no crazy things where you can walk one way and end up the other way, but that does not change the fact that you'll probably get lost while exploring this level. And this is mainly because the hallways are so twisty and turny and interconnected and unpredictable and weird structures of staircases everywhere it just makes it extremely hard to explore and map and if you're with a group you're 100 gonna get split up somehow there's also weird staircases that connect to more hallways that then connect to more doors that open to more hallways and since it's all so colorful and trippy and filled with balloons it can be very easy to find yourself lost so as you probably guessed by now the word globophobia itself means the fear of balloons which typically might make somebody have anxiety or throat tightening and such if they see balloons but that fear Fear is something that everyone here on this level will have, even if you don't have it in real life. And it's not only because the balloons are scary that it might pop, it's because the balloons might be creatures and entities themselves. We don't know. More on that in a bit though. But the main reason this is scary and you'll have this globophobia here is because the level gets so terrifying in the deeper and darker parts of it. Because there are sections of this level in the hallways with no windows. And in those sections, it'll be 100% dark. And you can only imagine how scary it would be to walk through a massive section of hallways that are completely dark with weird floating balloons all around you. It would kind of feel like that scene from Finding Nemo when they go through those cluster of jellyfish. You know what I'm talking about. So these dark zones actually have a specific name on the level and they're called Globophobia Zones. Very unique name, I know. But you should never, ever, under any circumstance, ever go to the Globophobia Zones because it's pretty much just a death wish. But if you absolutely have to go through a Globophobia Zone or if you're lost or if you find yourself in a hallway, whatever you do, don't touch anything, just walk straight and try to avoid them. It might be impossible because some of the Globophobia phobia zones actually have balloons everywhere like it's impossible to not touch one but if there's a possible way to get past them without touching you have to take that way and the reason is if a person makes contact with any balloon they will instantly be pulled into the darkness in front of them by a pair of hands that seems to be covered in paint and these hands just reach out of the darkness and grab instantly that person that touches a balloon Whatever these hands are connected to is just out of sight inside the darkness, and no one really knows what they're connected to. They could just be random hands, or they could be entity hands. My theory is that they're entity hands. Apparently, this has happened many times to pairs or groups of people who have gotten lost in this level, which is a terrifying way to lose a friend. Nobody has ever been seen again once they've gotten yanked into the darkness by those hands, and it seems that the only way to avoid getting ripped into the darkness and never seen again is to just not touch the balloons. Now, as you might expect, there are several theories about this level and why it behaves the way it does and why it attacks you. And of course, since theories are my favorite things about the back rooms, I'll be getting into them right now. So theory one is that the balloons themselves are alive. Now, there's actually pretty decent evidence to support this theory, since balloons have been used by party goers in the back rooms before to lure people towards their imminent demise. And it's also been thought that balloons themselves are carnivorous. And there's an entity called the carnivorous balloons that pretty much just lure you to them and then eat you, which is always fun, I guess. But people think that the balloons here get mad when you touch them or they trigger something when you touch them And it just triggers those hands to reach out of the darkness to grab you kind of like a reflex as I just mentioned There's also been whispers of a balloon entity that floats around and bites you when you walk past it And these things are known to have like big mouths and sharp teeth and glaring eyes when you look at them for long enough but when you just pass them regularly, you can't really see anything besides just a balloon. So who knows if that's what the balloons are here, or if it's just a coincidence. We don't know. The next theory is that the level itself is alive. So this definitely plays into that first theory that I just talked about, but it takes it a step further by saying that the entire level works together like a body or an entity to eat victims, or you, or your friend in this case. There are plenty of other levels that are sentient and alive and exist as one massive creature, so it definitely wouldn't be too crazy for that to be the case here. The hallways themselves could be the trap. You could walk into that trap and accidentally touch the balloons, which could be bait. And then when you touch the bait, it triggers the trap to close on you, which would be the hands closing on you. 
So it kind of does make sense. But let me know which theory you think is right about the level in the comments. Are the balloons carnivorous entities that eat people? Are the hands connected to the balloon somehow? Or is the entire level itself alive with one single goal? To capture and to consume poor wanderers like you who gets in here? Let me know in the comments below what your theory is on that. And also let me know if you would have your birthday party here. Because I feel like that'd be pretty fun. Just kidding, it definitely like would not be fun at all.